29 Akari MOT section 1 After the death of the two sons of Aaron, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon discussed the words spoke and said in Hashem spoke to Moses and Hashem said to Moses and we learned that they are from two levels judgment and mercy but nevertheless are from the same source that is here and Rabbi Yitzhak says that one verse says to serve Hashem in fear and another says to come before him with singing and that these two verses seem contradictory Rabbi. Shimon says that if one shows awe and reverence he will then deserve the joy and singing one should not rejoice too much over worldly matters so that he will be able to perform the precepts with gladness we are told that fear of God is the beginning of service to him we read of the several reasons that Nadab and Abihu died while giving the offering and that they were still under the authority of Aaron at the time Rabbi Shia tells how he encountered two men studying the Torah in a cleft in the mountain and of how they were discussing poems and psalms and songs and speaking about the sons of Korah who did not die they say that every time a righteous person dies it brings forgiveness for the sins of the whole generation the memory of the two sons of Aaron serves as atonement for Israel while they are in exile because Nadab and Abihu are each considered equal to the seventy members of the Sanhedrin who served before Moses one and Hashem spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons. Of Aaron and Hashem said to Moses, Vayikra 161 Rabbi Yehuda comments since the verse says, And Hashem spoke to Moses, what need is there to repeat? And Hashem said to Moses, Speak to your brother Aaron, the first statement should have sufficed. He answers, We learn that it is written, and Hashem let he call to Moses and let Hashem spoke to him. Vayikra 11 and also, and he said to Moses, Come up to Hashem, Shema 241. It has already been established that the discourse here, namely, and he called to Moses, or and he said to Moses, represents one level, namely Malchut. Afterwards, the words, and Hashem spoke to him, or come up to Hashem, represent another level, namely Zeir and here too in our text, and Hashem spoke to Moses, represents one level, namely the level of judgment referred to as speaking, and afterwards, the verse, and Hashem said to Moses, Speak to your brother Aaron, represents another level, namely the quality of mercy referred to as saying in both instances the name Yud. Hey Bob Hay is mentioned which reveals that they carry one equal scale and all are joined from one source this means that both levels judgment and mercy are of one scale from one source which is Zeir and been referred to as Yud Hey Bob Hay 2 after the death of the two sons of Aaron Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion saying serve Hashem in fear and rejoice with trembling Tehillim 211 it is also written serve Hashem with gladness come before him with singing Tehillim 1002 these verses appear to contradict one another as one says to serve in fear and trembling while the other says with gladness and singing he answers we have learned that serve Hashem in fear means that one must first show fear and on every act he wishes to perform before his master as a result of this reverence before his master he will merit to serve with joy the commandments of the Torah therefore it is written what does Hashem your Elohim require of you but to fear Devarim 1012 through fear he will Merit it all three and rejoice with trembling meaning that man must not overly rejoice in this world referring only to worldly matters but one must rejoice in the matters of Torah and the performance of precepts and as one will refrain from rejoicing in mundane matters man will find himself able to perform Torah and precepts with happiness as is written serve Hashem with gladness for Rabbi Abba said serve Hashem in fear what fear is meant here in other words what is the explanation in this context of fear he answers as we have established it is written the fear of Hashem is the beginning of knowledge Mishlei 17 and the fear of Hashem is the beginning of wisdom Tehillim 11110 so the Holy One blessed be he is referred to in this name fear of Hashem namely Malchut Rabbi Lazar said in explanation of Rabbi Abba's words serve Hashem in fear meaning he who wishes to perform the service of his master from what point should he begin and to which area should he aim his service in order to unify the name of his master he repeats his words with fear because fear which is Malchut is the start of service going from below upwards as the first sphere going from below upwards is Malchut 5 come and see it is written here after the death and later speak to Aaron your brother thus shall Aaron come Vayikra 162 to 3 what connection is there between after the death of to the verse thus live with this shall Aaron come he answers from the death of the sons of Aaron. Commences a warning to each of the priests that they must be mindful of Zot and this fem which is the fear of Hashem which is Malchut for the deaths of the sons of Aaron were as a result of their negligence in relation to Malchut 6 another explanation for after the death of the two sons of Aaron Rabbi Yussi said it should have read after the death of Nadab and Abihu so what is the reason that it says the two sons of Aaron it is obvious that they were his sons he answers we have. Learn that until that time they were not adults but still under the authority of their father consequently the verse refers to them as the sons of Aaron hence when they came near before Hashem and died Vayikra 161 they were rushing the time of offering incense during the lifetime of their father as is indicated later and there was more meaning other causes precipitated their death also because of the sin they committed when they offered a foreign fire Bimidbar 34 as we learned in one place it is written when they offered a foreign fire and for this reason they died in another place it is written when they came near before Hashem they died because they sacrificed because they rushed the time to burn incense during the lifetime of their father as mentioned above this means the combination of both matters caused their death so it is written here the two sons of Aaron to teach that they were still under the authority of Aaron as declared above it is written when they came near for the death was as a result of their approach before Hashem during the lifetime of their father seven Rabbi Shia said one day I was traveling to Rabbi Shimon to be taught by him the laws of the Pesach Passover I encountered a mountain and I saw clefts and cavities in one rock and two men were in there as I approached I heard the voices of these people who were saying a song a psalm for the sons of Korah great is Hashem and highly to be praised Tehillim 481 to 2 wherefore a song a psalm he answers thus do we learn on behalf of Rabbi Shimon the song is twofold namely a song and a psalm and since it is a better song than other songs it is named song twice similarly a psalm a poem for the Shabbat day Tehillim 921 meaning that it is more praiseworthy than other songs in the same fashion the song of songs which is Solomon's Shur Hasharim 11 indicating a song that stands above all other songs eight also here where it is written a song a psalm the song is superior to Others it is a song describing the Holy One Blessed Be He which the sons of Korah were singing about those who were dwelling in the doorway of Gehenom who were the sons of Korah they were the brothers of those residing at the gates of Gehenom as the Holy Sages comment on the verse the sons of Korah did not die Bimidbar 2611 but a place was set for them in Gehenom as a result this song was recited on Monday in the temple I approached them and said to them what are you doing in this place they replied we are merchants but twice weekly we leave our community to study Torah here because in the settlement we are disturbed each day by people and they do not allow us to study Torah I replied to them how fortunate is your lot nine furthermore they said every time that the righteous depart this world there is likewise annulled from this world all the harsh decrees and the death of the righteous brings forgiveness for the sins of the generation therefore we read the portion dealing with the sons of Aaron on Yom Kippur Day of Atonement to bring forgiveness for the sins of Israel. The Holy One blessed be he says contemplate the death of these pious ones and it will be accredited for you as if you offered sacrifice this day to attain forgiveness. We have learned that as long as Israel will be in exile and neither be able to offer offerings on this day nor will they be able to offer the two goats they will at least have the memory of the two sons of Aaron thus it will serve as atonement for them. Ten we have learned that it is written these are the names of the sons of Aaron the priests Ebed Bar 33 and also Nadab the firstborn and Abihu Elazer and Edomar Ebed 2 he questions it should read and Elazer and Edomar just like it says and Abihu so why write Elazer and Edomar why delete the connecting and Bob from Elazer he answers Abihu was equal to his two brothers the verse equates Abihu to Elazer and Edomar and Nadab is equal to all the others eleven it. Firstborn Nadab stands on his own merits and Abihu rests on his own and following them Elazer and Edomar are read as joined together to teach that each one of Nadab and Abihu are considered in the eyes of scripture as both Elazer and Edomar together but both Nadab and Abihu by themselves are each considered equal to the seventy members of the Sanhedrin who served before Moses for this reason their deaths atoned for Israel therefore it is
House of Jacob who redeemed Abraham Yishayah 2922 This verse is troublesome it should read Therefore thus says Hashem who redeemed Abraham Why does it say therefore thus says Hashem concerning the house of Jacob who redeemed Abraham 13 We have already learned that Jacob surely redeemed Abraham at the time that Abraham fell into the furnace of the Chaldeans fire His fate was being decided before the Holy One Blessed be he in what merit should this one be saved as he lacks ancestral Merits the Holy One Blessed be he said to the court on high he should be saved because of his sons as we have learned a son can bring merits for his father the others replied but Ishmael will descend from him the Holy One Blessed be he replied but Isaac will descend from him who will extend his throat for the sacrifice on the altar the others said but Esau will derive from Isaac the Holy One Blessed be he said but Jacob will descend from him who is a whole throne and all his sons are perfect before me they concurred by saying surely for this merit Abraham shall be rescued such is the meaning of who redeemed Abraham 14 it is written Jacob shall not now be ashamed neither shall his face now grow pale when he sees his children the work of my hands in the midst of him sanctifying my name Yeshayah 2922 to 23 he questions who are his children the work of my hands he answers their hand and I missile and Ezra who threw themselves into a burning fire to sanctify my name he questions Jacob shall not now be ashamed what is Jacob doing here for it is written these were among the descendants of Judah Daniel Hanani Missal and Ezariah Daniel 16 note they are referred to as signs of Judah as a result it should read Judah shall not now be ashamed why then does it state Jacob shall not now be ashamed 15 he answers we have learned at the time they bound Hanani Missal and Ezariah in order to cast them into fire each raised his voice and spoke before all the gathered nations kings and nobles Hanani said Hashem is with me I will not fear what can man do to me Hashem takes my part with those who help me therefore I shall gaze upon those who hate me it is better to take refuge in Hashem Tehillim 1186 to 8 Missal said therefore fear you not my servant Jacob says Hashem for I am with you says Hashem to help you for I will make a full end of all the nations Yirmeah 3010 to 11 at that moment when the nations and the nobles heard the name Jacob. They were disgusted and began mockingly to laugh because he put his trust in Jacob as Raya commenced to proclaim Yero Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one Devarim 6416 this is what is written one shall say I am Hashem's Yeshayah 445 one shall say I am Hashem's refers to Hanani who declared that Hashem takes my part and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob Ibid this is Missal who said fear you not O my servant Jacob and another shall subscribe with his hand to Hashem and surname himself by the name of Yisrael Ibid this is Ezra who said Yero Yisrael at that moment the Holy One blessed be he assembled his heavenly council namely the angels and said to them for which word among the words that these three uttered should I save them they replied that they may know that you alone whose name is Hashem are the most high over all the earth Tehillim 8319 meaning save them because they trusted in Hashem 17 at that hour the Holy One blessed. Be he said to the throne which is Malchut, my throne for which word among all the words they uttered should I save these righteous men and reply for the word that all the others mocked I would save them namely the merit of Jacob Jacob shall not now be ashamed neither shall his face now grow pale so they will see that they were saved in his merit just as the merit of Jacob stood fast when Abraham was cast into the fire now it will stand fast for these namely Hanani Missal and Ezariah. This is what is written thus says Hashem concerning the house of Jacob who redeemed Abraham Jacob shall not now be ashamed namely by the contempt and the mockery with which the nations and nobles ridiculed him 18 we have learned that all those who ridiculed this word namely Jacob were consumed by that fire and a spark of flame killed them who saved Hanani Missal and Ezariah. he did because they prayed before the Holy One blessed be he Hashem and unified his name properly because they Unified his name properly they were saved from that consuming fire section 3 Nadab and Abihu Rabbi Shimon says that in a way Nadab and Abihu died twice once before God when offering the sacrifice and once because they left no children as someone who does not merit children is considered as though dead we learned that Nadab and Abihu died physically but did not die spiritually because they were reincarnated in pinches the reason they were reincarnated together in one body was because they had not married and so were only considered a half body each their sin was later corrected by pinches action in slaying the foreign woman the two sons of Aaron and Zimri had essentially committed the same sin that is bringing near something that was far from holiness Rabbi Shimon talks about the covenant of peace we learned that Rabbi Yossi had said that people have their sins forgiven when they feel compassion for afflictions visited upon the just therefore during Yom. Kippur people read about the death of the two sons of Aaron and they feel distress for them so that their own sins are forgiven also they are reassured that their own children will not die during their lifetimes 19 the two sons of Aaron offered a foreign fire as they did not unify his name properly and therefore were consumed in fire Rabbi Yitzhak stated that it is written after the death and it is later written and died in the same verse if it states after the death of the two sons of Aaron Vayikra 161 wouldn't I know that they died he answers we are taught that there were two deaths one before Hashem and one because they left no children for one who does not merit children is considered dead for this reason it is written after the death and died namely after the death I has to be understood literally and and died refers to their not having children 20 Rabbi Abba said that it is written and Nadab and Abba who died before Hashem when they offered a foreign fire before Hashem in the wilderness of Sinai and they had no children and Eliezer and Edom are ministered in the priest's office. Bimidbar 34 he questions what connection does one have with the other in saying and they had no children and Eliezer and Edom are ministered in the priest's office did the latter inherit the priesthood from Nadab and Abihu because they were childless he answers this is what I have said that they died because they had no children and were considered as if dead this is definite but not like other people even though they did not marry for they died only a physical death and not a spiritual 121 from where do we know that they did not die a spiritual death for it is written and Eliezer son of Aaron took him one of the daughters of Putile to wife and she bore him pinches these are the heads of the fathers of the Levites according to their families Shema 625 he questions it says these yet pinches alone is mentioned and it says heads of the fathers of the Levites. A pinches alone this is because Nadab and Abihu were reincarnated in pinches therefore the verse reads of him these are the heads of plural expression according to this their deaths were physical not spiritual as they were reincarnated in pinches Rabbi Lazar said this is so and it is understood when it is written about him these a plural expression it is likewise inherent when it is written about him heads of plural expression 22 due to this it is written pinches the son of Lazar the son of Aaron the priest Bimidbar 257 and also it is written and pinches son of Lazar son of Aaron shoved him 2028 was a priest in those days it should simply read pinches the son of Lazar the priest why mention son of Aaron the priest he wished to tell us that whenever pinches is mentioned it is written son of Aaron the priest but with regard to Lazar it is only written Lazar the priest and no mention of son of Aaron as we find written before Lazar the priest Bimidbar 2721 or and Eliezer the priest said Bimidbar 3121 this is due to the fact that Nadab and Abihu sons of Aaron were reincarnated in pinches therefore the verse mentions son of Aaron regarding him consequently their deaths were physical but spiritually they did not die as they were reincarnated in pinches 23 we have learned from the secret of the mission that the name pinches is formed from two names which constitute a pure pin and chaz indeed pinches is spelled with a small yud peyud non caf same for the yud incorporates the two together this is a profound explanation that we have already been taught 24 Rabbi Eliezer inquired of his father behold Nadab and Abihu were two individuals why were there not two meaning why were they not reincarnated into two people but only in pinches he replied each was a half body because they did not marry and one who does not marry is considered a half person for this reason the two are incorporated in one as it is written and she bore him Pinches these are the heads 25 the yet in pinches was put in him to enjoin the letters only when he has been zealous for the Holy One blessed be he and came to straighten that which was crooked upon seeing the sign of the member of the Holy Covenant that Zimri inserted into another territory Nadab and Abihu were corrected here from their earlier deviation for Nadab and Abihu deviated in a foreign female as it is written when they offered a foreign fire
Letters together the secret of Yezid that connects Ceir Anpin with Malchut. Thus he was promised peace, which is Yezid referred to as peace as it is written. Wherefore say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace. Yezid 12, my very covenant, namely Yezid 27. He asks, What is this peace we speak of here when it says, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace? He answers, At first they sinned against the sphere Yezid by offering foreign fire as earlier mentioned. They damaged the sphere in instigating a quarrel between Ceir Anpin and Malchut. As written above, now that it is corrected, it is written, Behold, I give him my covenant of peace. My actual covenant, namely the sphere of Yezid, which goes by the name covenant, it will be at peace with him, namely the peace between Ceir Anpin and Malchut. For this reason, a small yud was added to his name, which hence at Yezid, which is of the small letters, to show that what was earlier crooked has already been corrected, meaning that Yezid, which was. Curb earlier has been straightened as was said before and now Malchut is perfected through Yezid Rabbi Laser kissed his hands and said blessed is the merciful one for allowing me to ask this thing so it should not get lost from me 28 we have learned that Rabbi Yussi said it was established to read this chapter of the sons of Aaron on this day of Yom Kippur in order to bring atonement for Israel in exile who are unable to offer sacrifices for this reason the order of sacrifices for this day Yom Kippur was established here in the portion about the sons of Aaron and reciting it comes in place of sacrifice furthermore the debts of the sons of Aaron atone for Israel 29 we also learn from here that every person who has affliction visited upon him from his master they serve as atonement for sins all who have distress for affliction brought upon the just will have their sins pass away from this world for this reason on this day Yom Kippur we read about after the death of it Two sons of Aaron, so that the congregation listens and feels distress for the pious who were lost, and thus the congregation have their sins forgiven of him who feels sorrow for the righteous who perish or sheds tears for them. The Holy One, blessed be he, announces, and your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Yeshea 67. Furthermore, he is reassured that his children will not die during his lifetime, and it is written about him, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. Yeshea 5310. Section 4. All the rivers run into the sea. Rabbi Shimon wonders how people can ignore the wishes of God for so long and says that no one lends his ear or wakens his heart. He says that in later generations people will have forgotten the Torah entirely. There will never be another generation like Rabbi Shimon's until the generation in the time of the coming of Messiah when knowledge will reawaken in the world again. We read about the river by in which the roots of the tree of life are spread. We read of the spirot that come forth from this river and the anointing oil that replenishes the garden of Eden. These streams flow down to the righteous and join together in the sea of wisdom. Malchud, when the wicked interfere, the blessings of these streams are not felt and judgment is awakened in the world instead of peace. Then people can be blessed only through the priest. 30 and Hashem said to Moses, Speak to Aaron your brother that he come not at all times into the holy place. Vayikra 162. Rabbi Shimon said, All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Kahilat 17. Rabbi Shimon said, I wonder about people that they have no eyes to see, no heart to observe. They do not know or pay attention to the wishes of their master, how asleep they are, and do not awaken before the day will come when thick darkness will cover them. The owner of the deposit will demand his due accounting from them. 31. An announcement is called out about them. Daily and their soul testifies within them day and night. The Torah raises its voice in all directions and says, How long fools will you love foolishness? Mishlei 122. Whoever is a fool, let him turn in here. As for him that lacks understanding, she says to him, Come eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mixed. Mishlei 94 to 5. No one lends his ear or wakens his heart. 32. Come and see later generations will come when Torah will be forgotten among them. The wise will gather in their own place and there won't be found anyone who can begin to explain and finalize the Torah. Woe to that generation from here on. There will not be a generation like the present one until the generation in the time of King Messiah when knowledge will awaken in the world as it is written. For they shall all know me from the lowest of them to the greatest of them. Yermeah 3133. 33. It is written and a river went out of Eden. Bereshit 210. We have learned the name of this river. We established that. Its name is Yuval, namely Bina, as it is written, and that spreads out its roots by the river Hevuval. Yermea 178 in the book of Rabbi Hamna the elder IT says that its name is life, namely Bina. Once life comes to the world, which is referred to as the life of the king, we established that it is that great and strong tree which is Ceir and that feeds all and is called the tree of life, meaning the tree that has planted its roots in that life above, namely Bina, and all is appropriate. 34 We have learned that this river gave forth deep streams which represent the three Sphirot, Chesed, Bura, and Typharet of Ceir and with the anointing oil to replenish the garden of Eden, which is Malchut, and water the trees and plants, namely the Sphirot of Malchut. Of this it is written, the trees of Hashem have their fill the cedars of Lebanon, which he has planted. Tehillim 10416 These streams, namely Chesed, Bura, and Typharet, flow and continue on and join two pillars that the Bereth is refer. To as Yashin and Boaz, namely Netzach and Hod, these names are appropriate from their Netzach and Hod come out all these streams, namely Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, and rest in a certain level referred to as righteous, namely Yezid, as is written, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation, have Yezid, Mishlei 1025, altogether they join in that level referred to as sea, that is the sea of wisdom, namely Malchut, this is the meaning of the verse, all the rivers run into the sea, Kahilat 1735, if you should say that when the streams reach the spot, namely Malchut, they stop and don't come back yet immediately following that it says to the place where the rivers flow thither, they return, let return to go, even for the river never stops its waters, they return to where do they return, he answers, they return to the two pillars, Netzach and Hod, they go to this righteous which is Yezid, to seek out blessings and joy, this is the secret of what we learn, this is the Leviathan whom you have made to play their in Tehillim 10,426 it is the righteous 36 these wait all upon you that you may give them their food in due season of 27 what is meant by in due season this is the matron namely Malchut known as the time of the righteous which is Yezid for this reason all look up to this due season all that are sustained here below they are fed from the source as the lower beings receive only from Malchut the secret meaning was established in these wait all upon you as we have established 37 come and see when this all which is Yezid known as Kol let all perfumes due season which is Malchut which joins with him all the world rejoices in blessings and peace is found among the upper and lower beings however when the wicked cause that blessings of these streams are not present namely Chesed, Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and Pen and the season receives nourishment from another side namely judgment then judgments are awakened in the world and there is no Peace when people want to be blessed they can do so only through the priest who could arouse his Pharaoh which is Jesus thus the matron who is Malchut is blessed and the blessings will prevail throughout the world section 5 that he come not at all times into the holy place we learned that God told Moses that he should speak to his brother Aaron since Aaron was given the blessings for above and below there are times when one may go before God and ask petitions. Because it is a time of goodwill there are other times when harsh decrees are aroused and blessings are not forthcoming sometimes judgments are present but impending held over the world to frighten it we learned that these cycles occur in the year in the week in the day and even in the hour Rabbi Shimon says that things are good in their due season analyzing the scripture that he come not at all times into the holy place Rabbi Shimon tells his son that God was admonishing Aaron not to make the same mistake that his sons did so that he will not damage this time that is Malchut. He also says that incense is the most praiseworthy of all sacrifices because incense in Aramaic means connecting. 38 We have learned that after the deaths of the sons of Aaron, Moses was seeking from the Holy One. Blessed be he this matter which is Jesus. Moses said to him, If people return in repentance to you, by whom will they be blessed? The Holy One, blessed be he replied, You are speaking to me, speak to Aaron your brother, for in his hands are given the blessings for above and below, for he is the chariot for Jesus, as mentioned above. 39 And Hashem said to Moses, Speak to Aaron your brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place. Vayikra 162 Rabbi Abba said, There are times before the Holy One, blessed be he when his goodwill is found, blessings are available, and one may ask petitions. There are other times when his graciousness is
Tehillim 6914 and seek Hashem while he may be found. Yeshea 556 Another verse reads, Why stand you afar off Hashem? Why hide you yourself in times of trouble? Tehillim 101 and another verse reads, From afar Hashem appeared to me. Yermea 312 At other times he is close as it is written, Hashem is near to all those who call upon him. Tehillim 14518 Due to this it is written that he will not come at all times into the holy place. 41 Rabbi Shimon said, We have ascertained that something in its due season is excellent. This is sure at this point the Holy One blessed be he came to warn Aaron not to err with the same sin with which his sons heard. This due season is well known to be malchute for this reason he must not err by joining a different time to the king. This is the meaning of the verse that he come not at all times into the holy place even when he will see that the time is given over to another, namely the other side to run the world. It should be given over to its hands in order. To enjoin and bring the world near to holiness as I and my name are one since even the other side serves only me for this reason that he come not at all times or with every time into the holy place if he wishes to know with what he should approach the answer is with Zot and this fem which is malchute of holiness with this head Zot fem shall Aaron come into the holy place Vayikra 163 this Zot is the time that holds to my name three Yod which is Yezad that is imprinted in my name and with it he may come into the holy place not at all times but he come not at all times 42 Rabbi Yossi said that it is written he has made everything beautiful in its time Kahila 311 this matter was explained by the holy luminary and it is so that we learned that he has made everything beautiful in its time assuredly everything which is Yezad named all he did in its time refers to malchute called time one with another and no other thing may come between them it is literally in its time meaning Malchut and not in another for this reason it is a warning to Aaron that he come not at all times into the holy place with what may he enter with Zot meaning Malchut called Zot as we established from the verse thus with Zot shall Aaron come into the holy place Vayikra 163 43 Rabbi Lazar was sitting before his father he said to him that it is written about the congregation of Korah and they perished from among the congregation Demidbar 1633 what is meant by and they perished it is similar to that which is written the same person will I destroy from among his people Vayikra 2330 Rabbi Shimon said that the sons of Aaron are different than the congregation of Korah because perish is not written about them as it does about the congregation of Korah where it is written and they perished from among the congregation it is also written behold we die we perish we all perish Demidbar 1727 which included the 250 people who offered the incense they surely perished However, the sons of Aaron did not perish. 44 He replies that it is written that he come not at all times into the holy place. Another verse reads, Thus head with Zot shall Aaron come into the holy place. He questions if the verse stated that he will not come at all times. Why doesn't it write at what time he may come? It should read that on the tenth of the month he shall come into the holy place, but instead it says, Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place. Yet gives no explicit time. He said to him, Elazar, we learned that it is the same word and same time for time and Zot are the same word, namely both are names of Malchut which the priest knew, but in relation to his son sinning the holy one, blessed be he wanted to admonish here, namely that he should not damage this time which is Malchut as his sons did. We have already learned this. He replied, I also thought so, but I wanted to hear this from you in order to reconcile this matter. 45 He said to him, Elazar, my son, come and see. That all sacrifices and burnt offerings bring gratification to the Holy One, blessed be he, but there is no truer gratification before him than the incense, for the incense is the most praiseworthy. This is the reason that it is offered in the innermost chambers, namely the Holy of Holies. Silently we have learned that for this reason people were not punished for other kinds of sacrifices and burnt offerings as for incense, because in the whole of the service of the Holy One, blessed be he, this is the most joint and connected. That is why it is called incense, because incense in Aramaic means connecting, so it says ointment and incense rejoice the heart. Mishlei 279, section 6. Therefore do the virgins love you. Rabbi Shimon tells how the fragrance of the incense rises and joins with the flow of the Holy Ointment, the sphere of Zerampin, they waken each other and are then good for illumination. The oil is then poured down from level to level to Malchut and thence to all the worlds the congregation of Israel is like the incense and Zer is like the ointment. 46 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying your ointments are fragrant. Sure Hasherim 13 I have closely studied this verse and this is the explanation what is meant by fragrant. It means that the fragrance of the incense is subtle and finer more interior than anything else when this fragrance rises to join with the anointing oil of the fountain streams which are the Sfirot of Zeir Anpin. They wake one another and connect together then these ointments are good for illumination as the verse says your ointments are fragrant lit good for fragrance. 47 the oil was then poured from level to level among the levels that are called the holy name which is Malchut and the verse then reads for your flowing oil you are renowned therefore do the virgins love you but what is meant by virgins have it is worlds have as we mentioned actual worlds inasmuch as the oil pours. To Malchut called name all worlds received from her. Another explanation for Alamot is as written a song to Alamot, Alam 461, meaning grades representing aspects of Shesedim that is referred to as Alamot derived from the word Yalam lit hidden. It all comes to the same thing. The word Olimot lit worlds also comes from there being concealed. 48 in the book of Rabbi Hamna Nasaba, it is written what is the meaning of worlds have Olimot. It is according to the verse she rises also while it is yet night and gives food to her household and a portion to her maidens. Mishlei 3115, this is the secret of the seven chambers of Briah which serve as Malchut and are referred to as maidens. These maidens are the virgins have Olimot love you to bless your name and to sing praises before you from there. There are blessings among all the lower beings and the upper and lower beings are blessed. 49 another explanation for the virgins have Olimot love you. It is fine to read this verse as over. Death have Almavis they love you for with this namely oil which denotes Shesedim the harsh prosecutors embalm themselves as Alamot is spelled with the same letters as Almavis for incense signifying the illumination of Chakma joins with the higher level ointment which is Shesedim and is held in high esteem before the Holy One blessed be he more than all sacrifices and burnt offerings the congregation of Israel said I am like the incense denoting Malchut as Malchut is the secret meaning of lower Chakma and you denoting Zeir and are like ointment denoting Shesedim therefore draw me we will run after you sure Hashirim 14 we will run is a plural expression as in therefore do the virgins love you that is I and all my troops who all hold onto me hence draw me as they are all dependent on me 50 the king has brought me into his chambers if it if the king will bring me into his chambers then we will be glad and rejoice in you but meaning I and all the Troops, we have learned that all the forces rejoice when the congregation of Israel is joyous and blessed, and harsh decrees do not transpire in the world. Hence, it says, Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Tehillim 9611, section 7. For I appear in the cloud upon the ark cover. Rabbi Yehuda brings up various verses where a cloud or a storm of wind are mentioned, speaking about the cloud upon the ark cover. He says that this is a place where the cherubs, Metatron and Sandal phone rested, and that a miracle occurred three times a day when the Shechina revealed herself in their wings. Rabbi Shimon tells what song the cherubs sang when the Shechina came down. 51. For I appear in the cloud upon the ark cover. Vayikra 162. Rabbi Yehuda said, Fortunate are the righteous whom the Holy One blessed be. He delights to honor. We have learned about a king of flesh and blood that if someone rides on his horse, he has committed a capital offense. However, the Holy. One blessed be he placed Elijah on his own as is written and Elijah went up by a storm of wind into heaven to Melashim 211 and it is written Hashem answer job out of the storm Myob 381 it is written here that he die not for I appear in the cloud upon the ark cover the holy one blessed be he brought Moses into the cloud as it says and Moses went into the midst of the cloud Shema 2418 meaning into the midst of the cloud denoting Malchut it is within the same cloud of which it says for I appear in the cloud upon the ark cover this is the meaning of and Hashem will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon its assemblies a cloud and smoke by day Shea 45 for the cloud of Hashem was upon the tabernacle by day Shema 4038 all these clouds hint at Malchut 52 we have learned that it is
What does the verse wish to say with the statement I appear in the cloud upon the ark cover which means that priest sees the Shechina also in the verse thus with Zachal Aaron come which is the Shechina is referred to as Zot behold the priest did not see the Shechina when he entered the Holy of Holies he answers the cloud which is the Shechina would come down and coming down it reached the covering of the ark the wings of the cherubs would stir and the cherubs would strike with their wings and sing a song from this the priest would realize that the Shechina was now appearing this is what is meant by I appear in the cloud upon the ark cover 54 he questions what song did they sing he answers for Hashem is great and greatly to be praised he is to be feared above all Elohim Tehillim 964 they said this when they raised their wings which is the aspect of the right column meaning she's a term great when they spread them they would say for all the Elohim of the nations our idols but Hashem made the heavens in 5 this is the aspect of the left column that's of this the entire other side when they covered the ark cover they would say before Hashem for he comes to judge the earth with righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity Tehillim 989 this is the aspect of the central column denoting Tiferet referred to as just a section 8 and their faces shall look one to another Rabbi Shimon says that when the priest heard the voices of the cherubs he placed the incense in the right place and had the correct intent so that the blessings should flow to all the wings of the cherubs were moving up and down singing and covering the ark we learned that the cherubs are male and female which establishes equity Rabbi Yitzhak says that whenever there are not both female and male present one is not worthy to look at the Shechina 55 when the priest heard their voices in the temple he placed the incense in its right place and meditated on something in order that the blessing should flow to all the wings of the cherubs were moving up and down singing and covering the ark then they would raise them this is the meaning of overspreading overspreading is precise where do we derive that their voices were heard namely from the verse i heard the noise of their wings yeshiskel 124 56 rabbi yussi said and the people with equity had mice harem tehillim 989 what is meant by mice harem he answers as the verse says sincerely had mice harem they love you sure hasherim 14 the shechina includes by this the two cherubs metatron and sandalphone who are assuredly called mice harem and it says about this and the people with equity had mice harem before this it is written with righteousness shall he judge the world tehillim 989 and judge refers to zeir and while righteousness denotes malchud later the verse includes also the cherubs and thus says and the people with equity 57 it is written then he heard the voice speaking to him from off the covering that was upon the ark of testimony from between the two cherubs and it spoke to him. Bimidbar 789 Rabbi Yitzhak said from here we learned that whenever there are not both male and female present one is not worthy to behold the presence of the Shechina. Therefore he heard the voice speaking only from between the two cherubs. This is the intent of the verse. The upright Hebusharim shall dwell in your presence. Tehillim 14014 meaning. The cherubs refer to as mice harem. We have learned that there is a verse just and right as he. Devarim 324 denoting male and female just refers to the male meaning is it and right refers to the female meaning malchut here. Also the cherubs are male and female as it is written of them. You have established equity had mice harem in plural. Tehillim 994 and also the people with equity had mice harem as mentioned above for this reason and their faces shall look one to another. Shema 2520. Secret of face-to-face -face union as we have established section 9 behold how good and how pleasant Rabbi Shimon talks about how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity explaining that it means male and female turn toward one another he says that righteousness and justice go together otherwise things are not well with the world the rabbis had been complaining because rain was needed and Rabbi Shimon says that is because male does not reside within the female but everything is about to return to its proper place and there will soon be rain then they talk about the interpretations of I am black but comely and the following verses returning to the title verse we hear that it refers to the friends who fear God and speak about him to one another and have peace and brotherly love 58 we have learned that Rabbi Yossi said once the world needed rain Rabbi Yes Rabbi Shishkia and other friends came before Rabbi Shimon they found him and his son going to see Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair when he saw them he said a poem of ascent of David behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity Tehillim 1331 he questions what is meant by brothers to dwell together in unity 59 he answers this is as is said and their faces shall look one to another lit men to his brother Shema 2520 brothers meaning male and female for the time that Zeir and Ben and Malchud faced each other it is written how good and how pleasant however when the male turns his face away from the female woe is to the world and it is written but sometimes ruin comes for want of justice Mishlei 1323 and assuredly without justice meaning without Zeir and Ben call justice who does not look or give abundance to the female called righteousness the verse righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne Tehillim 8915 means that one does not go without the other one justice which is Zeir and Ben moves afar from Righteousness which is Malchut woe is to the world 60 I see that you have come now because the male does not reside within the female and as a result there is no rain in the world he said if you have come to me for this reason then go back as this day I have seen that everything will return to be face to face and there will be no lack of abundance of rain in the world however if you have come here to study Torah then stay with me they replied to him we came to our master for both of them. For rainfall and for study of Torah allow one of us to report to our brethren about the salvation of rain while we and the other friends with us will remain with our master 61 as they were walking he said I am black but comely O daughters of Jerusalem sure Hashirim 15 the congregation of Israel said before the Holy One blessed be he I may be black in exile but I am comely with the commandments of the Torah even though Israel are in exile they do not forsake the precepts like the tents. Of Ketar Ibid meaning even though I am like the children of Ketar whose faces are always black still I am like the curtains of Solomon Ibid meaning like the view of heaven for purity as it is written who stretches out the heavens like a curtain Tehillim 1042 Solomon Hebshalom is the holy one blessed be he the king of peace Hebshalom 62 do not look upon me because I am black Sher Hashirim 16 meaning what is the reason you should not look upon me because I am black and therefore you cannot see me because the sun has scorched me Ibid meaning the sun did not look at me referring to Zeir and to properly shed light upon me what do Israel say to this my mother's children were angry with me Ibid who are the children of my mother these are appointed ministers who protect the other nation 63 another explanation is that the Shechina spoke literally of my mother's children referring to the Sfirat of Zeir and the children of Bina who is the mother of it. Shechina is the verse says and cast down from heaven to earth each of 21 so when Zeir and Ben threw from heaven the earth meaning the Shechina they made me the keeper of the vineyards sure Hashirim 16 referring to the nations of the world she has to pour abundance to the nations of the world so that Israel will draw sustenance from them what is the reason because my own vineyard namely Israel I have not kept it because they sinned we thus learned that the children of my mother namely the Sfirat of Zeir and Ben agreed against me to distance me meaning the earth was removed with this referring to Malchut from heaven denoting Zeir and Ben we established that it is written and his sister stood afar off Shema 24 the Shechina called the sister of Zeir and Ben stood from a distance meaning Zeir and Ben had caused her to stand at a distance 64 in contrast to what is written and his sister stood afar off it is surely said behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to Dwell together have gam in unity when Malchud which is the sister of Zeir and Ben stands not at a distance but together regarding them Zeir and Ben and Malchud we have explained also together the same way as and yet have gam for all that have Zot fembe I cross 2644 gam being the secret of Malchud called Zot similarly gam in unity refers to Malchud in truth it would have been included in the brothers sitting together and there would be no need to inscribe the word gam since gam and also is written it is meant to include all of those higher above Zeir and Ben and Malchud that is there Yisrael Saba and Tebuna for the whole reign is now in that place Yisrael Saba and Tebuna 65 another explanation for behold how good and how pleasant these are the friends when they sit together and don't sit apart from one another at first they appear as people at war with each other wanting to kill one another afterwards they return to each other in brotherly love what does the holy one Blessed be he say about them behold how good and pleasant
Kiss the Shechinah, how fortunate is my lot. He set up for them expensive bed sheets. Rabbi Shimon said the Torah does not require this. He removed the spreads and they sat down. Rabbi Pincha said, Before we eat, we will hear a discourse from the Master of Torah as all the words of Rabbi Shimon are open as a revelation. He is a man who need not be afraid from above or below appreaching them. He fears not what is above as the Holy One. Blessed be he agrees with him. He is also not fearful of those below. Just as a lion fears not the flock of sheep, Rabbi Shimon said to Rabbi Lazar, his son Lazar, stand where you are and recite a novel Torah interpretation before Rabbi Pinches and the other friends. Section 10 After the death of the two sons of Aaron, we learn from Rabbi Shimon that God wished only Aaron to deal with the sweet incense for Aaron increased peace in the world when his sons offered the incense during their father's lifetime. They made a great mistake. 68. Rabbi Lazar rose and opened the discussion, saying, And Hashem spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron. Vayikra 161. This verse needs introspection, for it appears that it is superfluous as it writes afterwards. And Hashem said to Moses, Speak to Aaron your brother. Now we should ask if at the beginning of the portion in the first verse it says, And Hashem spoke to Moses, What did he say to him, seeing that afterwards it is written? And Hashem said to Moses, 69. He answers at the time when the Holy One blessed be he gave the sweet incense to Aaron he wanted no one else to deal with this during his lifetime for what reason because Aaron increased peace in the world the Holy One blessed be he said to him since you wish to increase peace in the world peace will multiply above through you the sweet incense will be transmitted to you from now on as incense increases peace above and during your life no one else will be permitted to deal with it during their fathers. Lifetime Nadab and Abihu hastened to offer that which was not given to them and this matter caused them to make a mistake by offering a foreign fire. Seventy we have learned Moses was pondering who caused them to make this mistake of offering foreign fire and was sad it is written and Hashem spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron what did he say to him when they came near before Hashem and died Vayikra 161 it is not written offered but came near the Holy One blessed be. He said to Moses, This is what caused them this, for they hurried the hour to offer incense during the lifetime of their father. They heard in this in offering foreign fire, so the verse says, which he commanded them not. Vayikra 101, they were not commanded to offer for only Aaron did he command, so the explanation of the verse and offered foreign fire before Hashem of it is that they heard in this because he commanded them not to offer incense, but he commanded Aaron alone and if the two sons of Aaron by rushing the time during their father's lifetime brought all this on themselves. This is all the more true for me in relation to my father and Rabbi Pinches and the other friends. I am not permitted to rush the hour and say novel Torah interpretations in their stead. Rabbi Pinches came forth and kissed and blessed him. Section 1160 Valiant Men Rabbi Shimon tells us that the name Solomon Shlomo refers to Zerenpin to whom the peace shalom belongs. We read. About Malchut's aspect of harsh judgment and the fire guards and Metatron on whose side is a mighty bright sword and on whose other side are burning coals the sword is received from the place called fear and night is the time for judgment we read about the many creature aspects of the flow of Mokin about the archangels and the crocodiles and the four shapes of the faces that appear we read about large faces and small faces about the judgments named here and many other wonders in the end we learn that the priest needs to meditate on sublime matters to bring holiness to the proper place and to expel the other side if people knew the judgment that could come upon them they would pay more attention to their deeds and stop sinning we are reminded that God has a covenant with those who study the Torah 71 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying behold the bed of Solomon 60 valiant men are round about it Sure Hasherim 37 behold the bed of Solomon what is meant by his litter it refers to the throne of glory of the king namely Malchut called Bed it is written about it the heart of her husband safely trust in her Mishlei 3111 and Solomon had Shlomo refers to the king that the peace had Shalom is referring to Zeir and 60 valiant men are round about it they are attached to Malchut's aspect of harsh judgment and are connoted as 60 fire guards meaning 60 guardians from fire that youth meaning Metatron clothes himself with them 72 on the right side of Metatron is a mighty bright sword and on the left are strong burning coals that enjoin his imprints with 70,000 flames of consuming fire there are 60 mighty ones heavily armed with the mighty Gvirat of supernal Gvirat of the Holy One blessed be he namely Zeir and this is what is meant by of the mighty ones of Yisrael Sher Hashirim 37 namely Gvirat of Zeir and referred to as Yisrael 73 we have learned that this bed referring to Malchut it is written regarding it she rises. Also while it is yet night, Mishlei 3115 when she nurtures from the side of judgment meaning when Malchut rises to pour the abundance of the illumination of Chakma it is night meaning judgment since her Chakma is given only with judgments as earlier mentioned rising refers to the illumination of Chakma and gives food had tariff to her household. Ibid what is meant by tariff it is the same as in and tears down have tariff in pieces and none can deliver Mishlei 57 namely the judgments. Attached to this Chakma from which there is no saving this is what is meant by all girt with swords and expert in war. Sure Hashirim 38 they are ready to execute judgment everywhere and are called whalers and moaners 74 every man has his sword upon his thigh but it is as you say gird your sword upon your thigh almighty one Tehillim 454 the secret meaning of the sword has already been explained because of the fear by night. Sure Hashirim 38 they explained it as the fear of Gehenna. Yet because of the fear by nights is saying where they receive it from, from fear from the place called fear as the verse says and the fear of Isaac had been with me Beersheet 3142 which is Gear of Zeir and in the left column known as Isaac just as this verse reads and Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac Ibn 53 by nights refers to those times designated for judgments to be done as night is the time for judgment 75 we have learned that it is written she considers a field and buys it Mishlei 3116 this is like what is written where all the wild beasts live beasts of the field play Eo 4020 which refers to the aspect of judgment of Malchut whose secret is night as mentioned earlier and is also referred to as field the wild beasts reflects the secret of Yezid and play refers to mating and about this is written so is this great and wide seed here go the ships there are the Leviathan whom you have made to play their entail 10425 to 26 Leviathan is it. Secret of Yezid to play alludes to union as it is written and behold Isaac was sporting with his wife Beersheet 268 this is as a verse she is like the merchant ships she brings her bread from afar Mishlei 3114 from afar surely for her bread which is the secret illumination of Chakma does not shed light save from afar meaning it does so with judgments that remove the external forces far away so they would not nurture from this great light this is the secret of Hashem appear to me from afar Yermeah 312 and the secret of the union pertains to night and to the field as mentioned earlier as it brings her light from the brain inside the head namely Chakma and from that which is above the head namely the blessed endless light therefore she needs protection from external forces she brings her bread namely through the means of the righteous man denoting Yezid when they join together there is universal joy this is the meaning of the verse there are the dolphins have Leviathan who you have made to play therein the Leviathan being is it while to play refers to mating as earlier mentioned 76 we have learned that 1500 sword bearers wielding authority are linked to the side of these 60 mighty ones in the hands of the one known as the youth namely Metatron are four large keys referring to four angels Michael Gabriel Uriel and Revile they are referred to as large keys because they cause the mokin of greatness to flow to those below crocodiles namely the grades of Chakma move under the ship which is Malchut that is in Bria of the great sea bonnet from which Malchut receives her light to her four corners the one moves to the side south and the other moves to the side north and it is so with all of them also eastward and westward which are the secret of Chesed Bura Tiferet and Malchut the four shapes of the face appear in the meaning in these crocodiles and are lion ox eagle and man for they are drawn from the three columns and Malchut that receives them which is the face of a man when they are joined within the one which is Malchut it is written as for the likeness of their faces they had the face of a man yes, one hundred and ten. this means the face of all of them namely the three shapes of lion ox eagle receives a human face like Malchut when all are included in it 77 
Of Elohim saw the daughters of men bear sheet 62 they the sons and daughters of the clipper hold onto the nails of that bed namely Malchut as her nails mean the back part of the fingers of the hands and feet this is what the verse teaches us then came there two women that were harlots to the king I may 316 and came but not before and when Israel are down turning their backs on the holy one blessed be he it is written as for my people children are their oppressors and women rule over. The Mishaya 312 surely referring to the two women mentioned above 79 in the left hand meaning from the left column of Malchut 70 branches come out who are the 70 chieftains of the world nations who are raised among the fish of the sea representing the levels of the illumination of Chakma of the left referred to as fish the sea means Malchut all of them are red like a rose because of the judgments within them as the judgments of the left are red above them one branches. Extremely red that is the harshest judgment of all namely Samael it goes up and down meaning attracts Chakma from above downward it is he who wrote on the serpent and enticed Adam to draw Chakma from above downward which is the secret of the tree of knowledge of good and evil all of them are covered with hair of Malchut meaning her judgments refer to as hairs 80 when the chief slender of the serpent descends it begins to jump over the hills and skip over the mountains until there is. Prey seized by the nails which it eats then it becomes calm and its tongue speaks well meaning that its slandering talk ends and becomes good talk fortunate are Yisrael who prepare food for it and the serpent returns to its place and enters the hole of the great abyss 81 when the countless spearmen and swordsmen rise around these supernal sixty mighty men that stem from the left column who circle the bed namely Malchut and the left joins the right because of them and thousands upon thousands and tens of ten thousand stand along all sides of that supernal bed from it the bed which is Malchut they are sustained and all rise in its presence in accordance with the verse she rises also while it is yet night Mishlei 3115 82 underneath all of them meaning below all levels of holiness mentioned before many thousands and tens of thousands of Klippot come out in accordance with the secret meaning of the verse 8000 shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right and but it shall not come near you. Talim 917 they come down and wander through the world until the shofar blowers blow that is the secret of unity of the three columns, known as fire, water and air, that are included in the sound emanating from the shofar then they reassemble and hold to the scum found in the nails namely in the refuse matter of the illumination of the backside known as nails as mentioned above 83 this bed namely Malchut includes them namely all those levels. Mentioned above this bed's legs link to the four directions of the world meaning it contains in it the force fire of Chesed, Vira, Tiferet and Malchut, which is the secret of three columns and Malchut that receives them everything is counted both what there is above namely the grades of Zeir and Pen and what is below namely her own grades this is the secret of in heaven above namely Zeir and Pen and upon the earth beneath the bar 439 namely Malchut known as earth therefore it is written. Behold meaning behold the bed of Solomon what is meant by behold it means it is ready to shed light to all above and below and this bed is impressed by all it is called Adonai which means master Adonai over all marked among its armies 84 because of this the priest needs to meditate upon sublime matters to unify the holy name from that place that requires unity meaning to draw in the illumination of Chakma only to Malchut therefore we learn that it is written thus with Zachal. Aaron come into the holy place Vayakra 163 through Zot denoting Malchut he needs to bring holiness near its place and to expel the other side which desires to draw from her the illumination of Chakma from above downward from this place from Malchut man needs to fear the holy one blessed be he meaning that with the illumination of Chakma that is revealed at Malchut harsh judgments that punish the wicked and move the other side far away are also revealed as a result one fears her about this. It is written though that they were wise that they understood this heads out Devarim 3229 immediately they would consider their letter and divot this means that if people would look at the penalty and see how Zot namely Malchut is united together with her host meaning she gives light to them only from the aspect of below upwards and how all these members of the host who are attached to her to serve her were appointed before her to punish and repay the wicked who wish to draw down her life from. Above downwards immediately they will understand their letter and, and pay attention to their deeds and not sin before the holy king 85 Rabbi Shimon said further this Zot keeps everyone who merits to learn Torah and keeps Zot namely Malchut and makes another covenant with him in addition to the existing covenant that she will not part from him from his children or grandchildren eternally this is the meaning of the verse as for me this is my covenant with them Yeshayah 5921 they sat down. To eat as they were eating Rabbi Shimon said to his friends each one of you should say some new thoughts of the Torah at the table in the presence of Rabbi Pinchas section 12 the tongue of the learned Rabbi Shizkiah tells us how lucky Israel are that God chose them for his own and called them holy and that it was because they merited the Torah we read about the flow of holiness or Chakma from the highest all the way to Malchut and that when the secrets of Torah come out of her she is called the holy tongue we then learn of the flow that results in the tongue of the learned that goes out to awaken the sublime holy ones God gave this tongue to Rabbi Shimon and raised him higher and higher to the upper worlds 86 Rabbi Shizkiah opened the discussion saying Hashem Elohim has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know to sustain him that weary Yeshayah 504 how fortunate are Israel that the holy one blessed be he chose them from among all nations and called them holy as is written Israel is holy to Hashem Yirmiyah 23 he gave them a share to maintain the holy name with what right can they hold on to the holy name it is because they merited the Torah as anyone who merits Torah merits his portion in the holy one blessed be 87 we have learned before my master what is holiness it is perfection of all called the highly sublime Chakma which is the secret of supernal Abba and I am a from this place flows the holy anointing oil through known paths to the place called supernal by the secret of Israel Saba and Tabuna from their flow streams and fountains in every direction meaning both to Chakma and to Shesedim until they reach the Sot and this namely Malchud when blessed the Sot is called holiness and is called Chakma and we call her the spirit of the holiness meaning spirit namely the six ends from this holiness of higher above meaning the six extremities of Chakma when the secrets of Torah exit and stir from her she is then called the holy tongue 88 when the anointing oil flows to these two pillars referred to as students of Hashem Yeshayah 5413 and are called Seviat namely Netzach and Hadid it gathers there when it exits from there through that level called Yizit and arrives at the smaller Chakma that is Malchut known as the small Chakma because it contains only six corners of Chakma as explained earlier it is called the tongue of the learned from her it goes out to awaken the sublime holy beings at that point it is written Hashem Elohim has given me the tongue of the learned why that I should know how to sustain him that weary the holy one blessed be he gave this to the holy luminary Rabbi Shimon furthermore he raised him higher and higher to upper worlds for this reason all his words are said manifestly and are not concealed about him it is written with him I speak mouth to mouth manifestly and not in dark speeches Bar 128 Section 13 The moon in its fullness Rabbi Yesus says that during Solomon's days the moon was full and God gave wisdom and knowledge to Solomon reading that there was peace between Solomon and Hiram Rabbi Shimon says that Hiram had announced himself to be a deity until Solomon persuaded him otherwise with his wisdom we learn that all those who study the Torah at night have their images carved above before God who pays attention to the 89 Rabbi Yesus opened the discussion saying and Hashem gave Solomon wisdom as he promised him and there was peace between Hiram and Solomon I Melashim 526 and Hashem gave Solomon wisdom this is what we learned that during the days of King Solomon the moon denoting Malchut remained in its fullness then Malchut is called Chakma as mentioned and he gave it to Solomon as he promised him meaning as was said to him wisdom and knowledge are granted to you to the Rehim and 112:90 and there was peace between Hiram and Solomon he asks what is the connection between them? He answers, We have learned that Hashem gave Solomon wisdom. How did he establish this wisdom? Rabbi Yossi said, This is how he established this wisdom. Solomon caused Hiram to descend from that level where he said, I sit in the seat of Elohim. Yashis called 282. We have learned that Hiram, king of Tyre, announced himself a deity, meaning he was devoted to other Elohim who draw Shachma from above downward as mentioned and behaved like them. Afterwards, Solomon came and with his wisdom caused
forsakes the Holy One, blessed be he in the clefts of the rock. These are the Torah scholars that find no peace in this world and are hiding so to speak in the cracks of the rock from their enemies in the secret places of the cliff. These are the modest scholars who conceal their level from people among them are the pious who fear the Holy One, blessed be he from whom the Shechinah never departs. Then the Holy One, blessed be he demands from the congregation of Israel on behalf of the pious and says, Let me see your countenance, let me hear your voice, for sweet is your voice of it, for no voice is heard above except the voice of those who toil in the Torah. 93 We have learned that all those that toil in Torah at night have their images carved above before the Holy One, blessed be he, the Holy One, blessed be he enjoys himself with them all day and pays attention to them. That voice rises and penetrates all firmaments until it arises before the Holy One, blessed be he, then the verse writes, For sweet is your voice and your countenance is comely, but now the Holy One, blessed be he, has carved the image of Rabbi Shimon on high, whose voice rises higher and higher and is crowned with the Holy Crown until the Holy One, blessed be he, crowns him throughout the worlds and commends him about him. It is written and said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Yeshua 493, section 14, the souls until their descent to the world, Rabbi. Shia tells us that everything and everyone that exists now and that will exist in the future existed before the world began. Some souls are distanced from God before birth and also in this lifetime, although they may repent later and get back their saintly part. Rabbi Shia says that the two sons of Aaron were righteous and he cannot understand how God could have wished them to perish considering their own merits, their ancestral merits, and the merits of Moses. Rabbi Shimon says that God made sure their souls were not lost and pinches had already been born to house their souls. He also tells us that righteous souls are prepared above and given names before ever they come to this world. 94 Rabbi Shia said that which is already has been and that which is to be has already been. Kahila 315 That which is already has been. We have learned that before the Holy One blessed be he created this world, he created worlds and destroyed them. This is the secret of the breaking of the vessels. Until it entered the will of the Holy One, blessed be he to create this world. First he took counsel with the Torah, the secret of the central column, then he put on his adornments and was crowned with his crowns and created this world. All that is found in this world was there before him at the time of creation and was prepared before him. 95 We have learned that all leaders of every generation were present before the Holy One, blessed be he in their forms before they came to the world. Furthermore, before they came into the world, all human souls were carved before him in the heavens with the same forms literally as they are in this world. All that these souls learn in this world they already knew before coming to this world. We have learned that all this holds true with the people of true piety. 96 All of these that are not found to be just in this world, even there above before coming to the world, distance themselves from the presence of the Holy One, blessed be he to enter. The chasm of the great abyss and hurry to descend to this world and we learn that their souls are stiff-necked in this world as they were before coming to this world they throw away the saintly part that the Holy One blessed be he gave to them from the side of holiness and go wander about and become impure in that chasm of the great abyss they take their share there precipitate the hour and descend to earth if a man later gains merit and repents before his master he will receive back his own portion namely the holy portion that he threw upward as mentioned this is the meaning of the verse that which is already has been and that which is to be has already been 97 come and see that the sons of Aaron had no equal in Israel except for Moses and Aaron they were called the nobles of the children of Israel Shema 2411 and they died because they heard before the holy king he questions did the Holy One blessed be he wish that they should perish did we not learn in the secret of the mission that the Holy One blessed be he does kindness with everyone and even evildoers he does not wish to cause to perish but these most saintly ones Nadab and Abba who will enter your mind that they should perish from the world where were their merits the merits of their ancestors and also the merit of Moses how could they have perished 98 the answers we have learned from the Holy Luminary that the Holy One blessed be he concerned himself with their honor so inwardly their bodies were tinged with fire but their soul was not lost as we have already established come and see that even before the deaths of Aaron's sons it is written and Eliezer Aaron's son took of the daughters of Putile to wife and she bore him Pinches Shemot 625 he was called Pinches because he was destined to straighten that which is crooked meaning to correct the damage of Nadab and Abba who has explained earlier even though Nadab and Abba who had not yet died this is the essence of the verse and that which is to he has already been 99 we have learned that before coming to the world all the true pious people were prepared above and were given names from the day that the Holy One blessed be he created the world even Rabbi Shimon Bar-Yukai was prepared and came before the Holy One blessed be he the Holy One blessed be he called him by his name how fortunate is his lot above and below about him is addressed the verse let your father and your mother be glad Mishlei 2325 your father is the Holy One blessed be he and your mother is the congregation of Israel section 15 while the king was reclining at his board Rabbi Abba opens by saying that the title verse means that Israel emitted a wonderful fragrance when they stood at Mount Sinai to receive the Torah while Moses went up to receive the tablets Israel deserted their wonderful fragrance and turned to the golden calf Rabbi Abba explains the verses from the esoteric point of view telling us about the Flow of wisdom and understanding down from the highest realms and culminating in the union of Zir Enpin and Malchut. This brings blessings to every level 100. Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with the verse while the king was reclining at his board. My art sent forth its fragrance. Sure Hasherim 112. This verse has been explained by the friends when the Holy One blessed be he was ready and present on Mount Sinai to give Torah to Israel. My art sent forth its fragrance as Israel emitted a wonderful fragrance that has shielded them for countless generations. This was what they said then. All that Hashem has said will we do and obey Shema 247. Another explanation of while the king was reclining at his board while Moses went up to receive the Torah from the Holy One blessed be he which was engraved within the two tablets of stone Israel deserted that wonderful fragrance that crowned them and said to the golden calf these are your Elohim Israel. Shema 324 101. Now let us. Explain this verse from the standpoint of the secret of wisdom. Come and see, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Bereshit 210. This river denoting by spreads on all sides when this Eden, namely Chakma, joins with it in complete union in this path not known above or below, denoting Yezid of Chakma as in the verse. There is a path which no bird of prey knows. Eo 287. Thus Chakma and by the desire not to part from one another, then fountains and streams exit from them, denoting the Mokin of Zeir and crown the Holy Son Zeir and the son of Yudhe with all these crowns, denoting Mokin. It is then written with the crown with which his mother crowned him. Sure Hashirim 311, denoting Mokin, also known as crown at that time. That son Zeir and will inherit the inheritance of his father and mother, namely the Mokin that exudes from the union of Chakma and by that are referred to as Abba and Iamma. Then he will delight in pleasures and delight 102. We have. Learned that when the supernal king namely Zeir Anpin with delicacies fit for king sits crowned it is written while the king was reclining at his board Minard sent forth its fragrance Minard refers to Yezid that emits blessings so that the holy king Zeir Anpin joins with the queen namely Malchut then blessings are given to the worlds and those in the upper and lower worlds are blessed now the holy luminary is crowned by this level meaning the Mokin of Zeir Anpin from Abba and Ima also known as crowns he and the friends lift up the praise from below upward namely from Mayim Lukban female waters and Malchut crowns herself with these praises as she joins with Zeir Anpin now there are blessings to pour from above downward to all friends of this mentioned level Rabbi Lazar his son should now say some of the praiseworthy words he heard from his father section 16 and behold a well in the field Rabbi Lazar talks about the well that the princes dug out saying that the well is filled with blessings from Netzach and Yezid the well sustains everyone above and below the great stone that was rolled over the well's mouth refers to harsh judgment that is removed when the blessings flow through the Sfirat in a similar way God poured blessings on the generation of Rabbi Shimon 103 Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion saying and he looked and behold a well in the field and there were all the flocks gathered Bereshit 292 to 3 these verses need to be examined as they contain the secret of wisdom that I learned from my father so I learned and
and Yezid, which all assemble and draw blessings from the head of the king, namely from the three first Tarot of Zeir and Ben known as head, they pour into it, and when they all merge together and feed into it, it is written, and they roll the stone from the well's mouth of it, three meaning they roll away the harsh judgment known as a stone and remove it, one hundred and five, and water the sheep of it, meaning they pour out blessings from this well to the higher and lower levels, afterwards they put the stone. Back upon the well's mouth of it, meaning the judgment returns to its position, it is because it is needed in order to bring fragrance and correction to the world. Now the Holy One, blessed be he, has poured upon you blessings from the springs of the fountain stream, and from you are blessed all the members of your generation. How fortunate is your share in this world and in the world to come about you, it is written, and all your children shall be taught of Hashem, and great shall be the peace of your children. Yeshua 5413, section 17, the 12th, and this Rabbi Shimon tells how the Torah is crowned with the 13 attributes of mercy, and the knot of faith is tied with those 13 attributes. Jacob blessed his sons in the name of the faith according to the blessing of each attribute. Rabbi Shimon says that Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair binds the highest knot, the knot of holiness, the knot of faith. 106, Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion, saying, Let the pious be. Joyful in glory, let them sing aloud upon their beds. Tehillim 1495. We have learned that the knot of faith, namely Melchut, is tied with the 13 attributes of mercy so that blessings are to be available for all the entire faith of the Holy One. Blessed be he is enclosed in three, namely three columns, the secret of 13 as they enlighten each of four Sfirot, Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, and Melchut within it. Now three times four equals twelve, and together with Melchut that contains them, there are 13. Consequently, the Torah is crowned with the 13 attributes as we have established in the Beritha of Rabbi Yishmiel, namely using the arguments of an inference from minor to major and comparison by analogy. We have explained this several times. The holy name, namely Melchut, is crowned with this 107. Come and see that when Jacob wished his sons to be blessed in the name of the faith, it is written, All these are the twelve tribes of Israel and this Hebzot Femias that which there. Father spoke to them, Bereshi 4928 12 and Zot are 13 since the Sheshana called Zot participated with them and the blessings were fulfilled. This is the meaning of the verse, everyone according to his blessing he blessed them, but what is meant by according to his blessing meaning according to the resemblance to that which is above the 13 attributes of mercy, namely according to the blessing of each attribute 108. We have learned that all these attributes of Malchut rise and become crowned and rest in the head of Zeir and there is crowned the head of the king he that is called by the highest level of piety, namely Zeir and whose Jesus converts to Chakma the pious ones that cling to Zeir and inherit all that glory of above which is Malchut with her 13 attributes as is written, let the pious be joyful in glory, namely in this world denoting Malchut, let them sing aloud upon their beds, meaning in the world to come denoting by the high praises of. L are in their mouths, Tehillim 1496, meaning they know to bind the bond of faith properly as Malchut is called L then, and a two-edged sword in their hand, but what is a two-edged sword? This is Hashem's sword, denoting Malchut from the aspect of judgment referred to as sword. Two-edged sword implies that it flames with two judgments, namely judgments of left and judgments of the curtain. For what purpose is all this? It is to execute vengeance upon the nations of 109. Behold, here is Rabbi Pinches Ben Yair, who is fear of Chesed, a supernal head of Zeir and meaning that his Chesed has become Chakma, which is head for this reason. He inherits the glory of Most High and binds the highest, not the knot of holiness, the knot of faith, meaning the unity of Zeir and with Malchut. How fortunate is his share in this world and in the world to come about this table is said. This is the table that is before Hashem Yashiskel 4122. Rabbi Pinches rose and kissed him and blessed him. He Kissed Rabbi Lazar and all the friends and blessed them. He then took the cup and said, Blessing section 18, you prepare a table before me. We read of how the scholars spent all day speaking about the Torah and rejoicing in it and in each other. 110, he opened the discussion saying, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Tehillim 235, they sat there all day long. The friends were rejoicing with words of Torah and the joy of Rabbi Shimon was great. Rabbi Pinchas took hold of Rabbi Lazar and did not leave him all that day and night and rejoiced with him. He referred to a verse about him, and you shall delight yourself in Hashem Yeshayah 5814. All this great joy and pleasure are in my portion as Rabbi Lazar was his daughter's son. Sometime in the future they will in that world announce about me. Fortunate is your lot, Rabbi Pinchas, that you have merited all this and peace be speed to you and peace to your helpers for your Elohim helps you. Ibrahim in 1219 they rose to depart. Rabbi Pinchas rose held onto Rabbi Lazar and did not let him leave. Rabbi Pinchas escorted Rabbi Shimon and blessed him and all the scholars as they were departing. Rabbi Shimon said to the friends, It is time to act for Hashem. Tehillim 119,126, section 19. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. Rabbi Abba wonders what the lots in the title verse were for Rabbi Shimon. Begins his explanation by talking about why Shimon was the brother chosen by Joseph to be taken away and bound. Shimon was from the aspect of harsh judgment and he had allied himself with Levi who was also from the side of judgment. We learn of two spirits who pursue judgment and who spy on the land every day. We are reminded how Israel is beloved of God above all other nations and that God gave them one day a year to purify themselves so that they will rule over all the prosecutors and spirits. Rabbi Shimon says that one of the goats in the title. Verse was for Hashem and one for Azazel. If both goats had been for Azazel, the world would not have been able to bear it. The goat cannot slander the children of Israel on Yom Kippur because it finds them doing good deeds, and in fact, it becomes their defender as a result of the sacrifice of the goat. Judgment no longer rules over Israel. 111. It is written, and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. Vayikra 168. Rabbi Abba came and asked, What were those lots for? Why did it require Aaron to place the lots? What is the store portion? For I have learned before my master the order of the Yom Kippur service, and also this matter I wish to know. 112. Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion, saying, and took from them Simeon and bound him before their eyes. Bereshit 4224. He questions for what reason did Joseph see fit to take Simeon with him rather than any one of the other brothers? He answers, Joseph said that Simeon always was the opening for judgment when I left my father to go to my. Brother Simeon first began the judgment as the verse says, and they said one to another, Behold, the streamer comes, come now, therefore, Bereshit 3719 later in Shechem, the two sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Bereshit 3425, all these actions pertain to judgment, therefore it is better to take this one and not allow him to arouse quarreling among all the tribes. 113, we have learned what did Simeon see in attaching himself to Levi more than to the others. Reuben was also his brother and close to him, just as Levi, so why did he not stick with Reuben? He answered, Simeon saw and realized that Levi was of the aspect of judgment, and Simeon was caught up with even harsher judgment, so he said, Let us join one with the other, and we could destroy the world. What did the Holy One bless be he do? He took Levi aside to his place and said, From this point on, let Simeon stay bound with ropes alone. 114, we have learned that from the aspect of Iamah, there are two spirits who pursue judgment attached to. The left hand we have established that they daily spy on or from the feet of the land, namely Malchut, meaning they nourish from Netzach Hadiyazid of Malchut, referred to as feet. This is the secret of two men to spy Yahashua 21 115. We have learned that Israel has a more fortunate share than the idolatrous nations as the Holy One blessed be he desired to purify them and have mercy for them as they are his portion and inheritance. It is written for Hashem's portion is his people Devarim. 329 And he made him right on the high places of the earth of 13 on the high places exactly as they joined up higher and higher with Zeir and therefore the love of the Holy One blessed be he is clinging to them as it is written I have loved you says Hashem Malachi 12 and but because Hashem loved you Devarim 78 from this excessive love he gave them one day during the year to purify them and clear them from their sins as is written for on that day they 1630 this was in order that they may be meritorious in this world and in the world to come and
kinds of worship on various levels and a variety of good practices and it cannot overcome them among them all peace reigns and the goat cannot commence to slander the meaning to instigate against them this goat is sent with the burden of all the sins of Israel 118 we have learned that numerous bands of demons already under the authority of this goat prepared to spy out the land against all those transgressing the Torah but on that day Yom Kippur it is unable to find words of slander against Israel when this goat of Azazel arrives at the mountain multiple joys burst forth from it to all even he who pursued judgment that emerged namely the supernal goat recants and speaks praise of Israel the prosecutor has become the defense attorney meaning the slanderer has now become the champion spokesman for Israel 119 come and see not only this alone but everywhere that Israel need to cleanse themselves their sin the holy one blessed be he gives them a plan to bind the accuser so they will not accuse it is also to pacify them through the means of sacrifices and burnt offerings that they offer before the holy one blessed be he from then on they are unable to cause harm and on that day Yom Kippur more than any other day just as Israel below plead everyone delight through the two goats so they all accusers all of this is as a result of the sacrifice and the service of the holy one blessed be he 120 we have learned that at that time it is written that Aaron shall take the two goats Vayikra 167 these two goats are stirred up that very day above they wish to join together as mentioned to rule and to set out into the world when the priest offers the two goats down below in the temple they are offered above and when the lots are spread in every direction the priest casts lots down below then the priest who is Jesus casts the lots on high just as one remains with the holy one blessed be he referring to the one goat allotted to Hashem below and one namely the goat of Azazel is brought out to the desert so it is on high one remains with the holy one blessed be he in the central column and one goes out and wanders in the world into the desert on high meaning the judgments that become revealed with the emergence of Shachma which are considered of the aspect of desert and foreboding wilderness the one joins with another meaning they shed light one upon the other 121 it is written and Aaron shall lay both his two hands on the head of the live goat and confess over him of the twenty-one hands it is written and Aaron shall lay both his two hands which are the secret of the right and left column so that the holy one blessed be he the central column will harmonize his hands in on the head of the live goat the live is precise as it comes to include the goat above one hundred and twenty-two and confess over him all the iniquities if it is similar to that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing lit over her vi crop fifty-five we established that over her means that the person becomes cleansed and that sin rests on her on the sheep so also here and confess over him implies that after the priest makes a confession on behalf of Israel over him all the sins will rest over him one hundred and twenty-three rabbi Abba said to him if so behold it is written and they shall no more offer their sacrifices to the demons also goats vi crop one hundred and seventy-seven so how can you say that the goat of Azazel corresponds with the goat above he answered him your things are Different as there they used to offer sacrifices to goats as it is not written and they shall no more offer their sacrifices goats but rather to the goats as they worship goats and gave them authority here only and the goat shall bear upon it all their iniquities vi 1622 and the sacrifice was made only for the holy one blessed be he come and see as a result of the sacrifice those on high and those below are perfumed and judgment neither dwells nor rules upon Israel. Section 20 and appointed man we learn that certain people are prepared for certain things so that one man is fit for achieving blessings while another is fit for curses by law was ready for evil but not prepared for good even when he blessed his blessings were not fulfilled but his curses always prevailed there was a man who was recognizably fit to be the one to take the goat to the mountain and push it off the goat is purchased with money from the whole congregation so that it owns. For everyone 124 we have learned about and shall send him away by the hand of an appointed man into the wilderness Vayikra 1621 what is meant by appointed he answers the secret of the matter is as follows whatever needs to be done the doer needs to be ready to do it there are people through whom the blessing comes true more than through others the reason is due to his preparation for the matter come and see what is written about the priest he that has a good eye shall be blessed Mishle. 229 do not reach shall be blessed but rather he shall bless as a result of his good eye he is ready so that the blessing will thus prevail through him 125 there is a man who is fit for curses to occur through him wherever he looks there would be curses and anathemas and confusions for example Bilam was called evil as he was ready for every evil but not prepared for good even when he blessed his blessing was no blessing and it was not fulfilled but when he cursed it prevailed even in one instance it would come to be therefore it is written whose eyes are open Bimidbar 243 every place his eye had seen was cursed 126 come and see what is written but he set his face toward the wilderness Ibid one for the purpose of arousing the force that rules there namely the other side so it should come slandering and denouncing Israel it is written of the priests he that has a good eye shall be blessed as he is ready for this and the blessing prevails where he aims his eyes as a result we have learned that a person should turn away even from 100 ways and avoid meeting someone who has an evil eye 127 also here and shall send him away by the hand of an appointed man meaning that he is ready for this and marked for it the priest recognized him because one eye was slightly larger than the other the skin above the eye namely the eyelids was covered by large hairs and the eye was blue colored and looked squintingly this is the person appointed for this matter to send a goat to Azazel and he is fitting for this therefore it is written by the hand of an appointed man 128 in Gushkalov there was a person that would kill wherever he struck with his hand and people would not approach him in Syria there was a person that wherever he looked even if he meant well everything would turn to bad one day there was a person going to the market and his face was aglow so that person came and stared at him and his eye burst hence in all things either good or bad there is someone fit for either the one or the other consequently the verse says he that has a good eye shall be blessed do not pronounce it shall be blessed but shall bless 129 we have learned this person would go with the goat to the desert when he arrived there with the goat he would ascend the mountains push the goat off with both hands and it would not even reach halfway through the mountain when its limbs would fall apart that man would say so may be blotted all the sins of your people through this the prosecutors would turn to defend Israel then with the Holy One blessed be he take all sins of Israel and all that is written with the verdicts on high which mention the sins of men and he would cast them out in this manner as the goat was cast off from the mountain to a place called the depths of the sea which is the secret of a place of darkness and of the judgments of the left that is beneath Malchut that is called sea this is the meaning of the verse and you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea which is 719 130 we have learned that and he shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering Vayikra 165 the verse says from the congregation this is to teach that they should buy it with everyone's money and atonement will thus come to all as all sins of Israel are impending here and all will attain atonement from this act therefore it is not enough to take money from one person from where is it taken the money is taken from the public fund boxes in the sanctuary and they bring the goats with this money which is the contributed property of everyone 131 they make from the outset a sin offering of the other goat that remained before the holy one blessed be he and we have already established to which place it is attached afterwards they are sacrificed and all things become better and Israel remain in the clear before the holy one blessed be he from all sins committed this is the essence of the verse for on that day will he forgive you vayikra 1629 section 21 the two goats we learned that the two goats were parted and one remained for the portion of god on that day the priest offered sacrifices for his own sins and then for the sins of all the people 132 rabbi shimon said and jacob said to rip his mother behold esau my brother is a hairy man and i am a smooth man Bereshi 2711 what is the statement hinting at Surely Esau was a hairy Hebsair man of him that is called Goat Hebsir, which is the other side as it comes from the same aspect, and I am a smooth Hebshalak man, meaning a man who was given Hebnikalak from what he allotted Hebshalak to the ministers of the other nations, as it is written, which Hashem your Elohim has allotted to all the nations, Devarim 419, and for Hashem's portion, HB each alike is his people, Devarim 329. Furthermore, a smooth man means the two goats were parted, and there remained one portion which the priest divided Hebshalak, one went to the portion of Jacob, and one for the Holy One, blessed be he, why, in order that the goat carry upon its shoulders all Jacob's sins as written, and the goat shall bear upon it all
Sacrifices for the sins of the people first he offered for his own sins and afterward for the sins of the people he offered burnt offerings for himself and the nation we have already established these matters section 22 a go to Azazel the goat is dispatched to Azazel so that the other side will be separated from Israel and will not testify against Israel before God we are told that every single thing in the world whether good or bad is needed even the angel of death the entire remedy depends on this not to arouse the secret of judgment on high and thus intensify this judgment to annihilate mankind that judgment is aroused through the sins of mankind rai may the faithful shepherd 134 it is commanded that the high priest should perform the service of that day as need be and should dispatch the goat to Azazel the secret is as you said in order that the other side be separated from the holy nation and not make demands for their sins before the king he should not accuse them as he has neither strength nor authority but when anger is intensified above with this gift of the goat to Azazel he is then converted to be their guardian as a result he is banished from before the king we established that this is so because he represents the end of all flesh 135 the holy nation gives to him what is needed for him namely a goat hepsir this is a secret of behold he saw my brother is a hairy hepsir man bear she 2711 as he is an aspect of the other side it contains male and female characteristics and just as in the side of holiness there is male and female so too in the side of defilement there exists a male and female a popular saying goes like this throw a bone to a dog and he will lick the dust off your feet here also we give to the other side a goat and he is converted to be a defender 136 they ask Benzoma is it permissible for us to emasculate a dog he replies neither shall you do thus in your land they I cry. 2224 The meaning is you shall not do thus to anything in your land even to a dog for as the world needs one thing it needs another meaning there is nothing in the world that is not needed therefore we learned that and behold it was very good Bereshit 131 refers to the angel of death that he should not be blotted from the world because the world needs him even though it is written about him the angel of death yet the dogs are greedy they never have enough Yeshayah 5611 it is not good that they should become extinct from the world everything is needed both good and bad 137 hence we need on this day to throw a bone to the dog meaning the goat of Azazel while he is dragging the bone people may enter the palace of the king and no one dares to stop them for the accuser is preoccupied with his gift afterwards he will still be wagging his tail meaning he will become a defender 138 it is written and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel Vayikra 1621 and the goat shall bear upon it all their iniquities. Ibid 22 When the other side sees this goat, his desire towards it is aroused to be with it, and he does not know which of the sins the goat took upon himself. He then returns to Israel and sees that they are free and clear of sins and blemishes, as all sins are upon the head of the goat. He ascends and praises them before the Holy One. Blessed be he, the Holy One. Blessed be he pays attention to the testimony of the accuser, and since his desire is to have mercy on his people, he extends mercy to Israel, even though he is aware of all that transpired. 139 The entire remedy depends upon this not to arouse the secret of the judgment on high and thus intensify this judgment to annihilate mankind. All this can come from harsh judgment. If this judgment is awakened, it is awakened by the sins of mankind, since it is aroused to ascend high up to instigate the harsh judgment only if it is as a result of the sins of mankind when a person commits a Sin it gathers and joins other thousands who assist it. They assemble there and take it so as to bring it up. May the merciful one protect us for all of this. The holy one blessed be he gave counsel to Israel to be saved in every aspect as written. Happy is the people that is in such a case. Happy is the people whose Elohim is Hashem. Tehillim 14,415 and of RAI may in the section 23 as cold water to a thirsty soul as the rabbis are praying in a field of fiery cloud. Descends and surrounds them. Rabbi Shimon tells them that Solomon gave three books to the world. Sure Hasharim, Kahilat and Mishlei and that these correspond to Chakmabana and Dead. He says every verse speaks about two subjects, the left and right columns and thus they equate to the central column. Rabbi Shimon then examines the verse. A cold water to a thirsty soul and good news from a far country. 140 as they were going they stayed in a field and prayed a fiery cloud descended and Surrounded them, Rabbi Shimon said, I believe that the wish of the Holy One, blessed be he is here, let us sit down. They sat and discussed words of Torah. He said, As cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Mishlei 2525, I examined the words of King Solomon and found that they were said with wisdom. 141, come and see that Solomon did present to the world three books of wisdom and all contain heavenly wisdom. Sure, Hasharim represents wisdom, Kahilat represents understanding. And Mishlei represents knowledge corresponding to these three, namely Chakmabana and Dea. He formulated these books. Sure, Hasharim corresponds to Chakmabana, Kahilat to Tabun and Mishlei to Dea. This is the secret of the three columns. How is this shown? He answers, All these verses appear in two styles. The beginning of the verse and the end of the verse appear as two distinct styles, meaning it speaks about two subjects and aspects of the two columns right and left when you examine the verses. You find that they are each comprised in the other that the two subjects in the verse are included one in the other for this reason it is equivalent to death the secret of the central column that includes right and left together from here we derive that all his words appear in the secret of the three columns and so his books are divided into three columns namely Chakmabana and Dead 142 he explains his words in this verse its beginning is not its end nor does its end match up with its beginning meaning they are two different ideas but when I examine them closely I see common characteristics included from one to the other both for its beginning to its end or vice versa it is written good news from a far country and as cold water to a thirsty soul in which as cold water to a thirsty soul is one concept and good news from a far country is a separate concept yet they are related one to the other as both speak of satisfaction just as the one gives satisfaction so does it. Other give satisfaction this is the central column including both concepts as we said 143 as they were sitting someone arrived and said that the wife of Rabbi Shimon was healed from her illness the friends heard a proclamation that the Holy One blessed be he forgave the sins of the generation Rabbi Shimon said now was fulfilled the verse good news from a far country which gives satisfaction as cold water to a thirsty soul he said to them let us rise and go as the Holy One blessed be he is performing for us miracles 144 he opened the discussion saying cold water to a thirsty soul is referring to Torah of all those who merit to toil in Torah and satiate their souls from it it is written good news from a far country the Holy One blessed be he announces about many favors for him in this world and in the world to come this is the meaning of good news whence do they come to be good from a far country meaning from the place in which the Holy One blessed be he was far off from him at the beginning meaning where he was in enmity with him at first as it is written and the earth shall rise up against him of 2027 from this place they welcome him with peace this is the meaning of a far country it is also written Hashem appeared to me from afar saying I have loved you with an everlasting love therefore I have remained true to you your may 312 the end of the article is missing section 24 the singers Hyman Yehudan and Asaf Rabbi Yehuda says there are thousands of singers that sing to God with the first light of day and thousands more with the first light of the moon and thousands more at twilight Rabbi Yussi elaborates on this by saying that with the first light of day judgment is still so they all say words of praise the morning is of Abraham she said Rabbi Yussi goes on to tell about what happens at twilight when Isaac judges the wicked and what happens after midnight additional information is given about the rulers who awaken above and below Hyman and Yedutun with the arrival of night everything is still in the opening and the door is not to be found after midnight Asaf is appointed above and below when morning comes Metatron arises and this is a time of goodwill when Zerampin talks with the queen and Zerampin extends a thread of blessing over her and over all who study the Torah 145 and he shall go out to the altar that is before Hashem and make atonement for it Vayikra 1618 Rabbi Yehuda Open the discussion saying Asam of Asaf El Elohim Hashem has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof Tehillim 501 we have learned that 1550 tens of thousands of singers sing to the Holy One blessed be he with the first light of day and 1548 with the first light of moon meaning night another 1590 tens of thousands sing praise at the time of twilight 146 Rabbi Yussi explains the words of Rabbi Yehuda saying
Holy One, blessed be he stirs Abraham, for he is the secret of Chesed to revive him and take pleasure in him and make him ruler over the world. This is the secret of the rule by day. How do we know that this morning is of Abraham, namely Chesed from the verse? And Abraham rose up early in the morning, Bereshit 223, 147. At twilight, all of these 1,590 tens of thousands that are drawn there are called those who lament. They sing at that time, and descent is then dominant in the world that hour is. When the Holy One, blessed be he, awakens Isaac, representing the left column of Zeir and he rises and judges the wicked that violate the words of the Torah, seven rivers of fire, corresponding to Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazid, and Maljud, are drawn out and hover over the heads of the wicked, and a flame of fiery coal stirs from above downward. Then Abraham, the secret of Chesed, returns to its position, meaning that Chesed returns to its source and disappears from the ones below as it. Verse says, and Abraham returned to his place, Bereshit 1833, the day departs, and the wicked in Gehenom cry out and say, Woe to us, for the day declines, for the shadows of the evening are lengthened. Yermea 64, at that time one should be prudent with the Minchaper 148, with the arrival of night, these 1548 tens of thousands that are then drawn are called outside of the curtain where they recite songs, then all the judgments from below, meaning the judgments of Maljud, are stirred and go. And wander through the world, these recite songs until the middle of the night, meaning one watch and a half watch after midnight, all the others come together, meaning those of the watch and a half watch following midnight, and say praise such as, and they shall proclaim the praises of Hashem. Yeshayah 606, Rabbi Yehuda said, When goodwill is present in the morning, the praise of Hashem will be recounted, but not at night. 149, Rabbi Yossi said, After the north wind is stirred at midnight, and then moves on being the secret of the illumination of Chakma of the left side called the north wind, and the praises can be proclaimed until the advent of morning when this morning is stirred, which is the light of Chesed, and joy and blessings are prevalent on the world, which are not called praises as described in the adjacent paragraph 150. We have learned that Rabbi Abba said everything that Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi said is so above them are three chiefs, he explains at that time when this. Morning is awakened and the praises are roused of all the 1,550 tens of thousands there is appointed upon them one chief by the name of Hyman who counters Hyman of below who is mentioned in Tehillim under his awful children officers are appointed over them to set up the hymns Hyman equals the letters in Yemen lit right as he draws his strength from the right 151 when the period of twilight is activated and all 1,590 tens of thousands of lamenters are singing praise there is appointed upon them one chief named Yedutan who counters Yedutan from below mentioned in Tehillim beneath him chief officials are appointed to improve that song as the verse states the song of tyrants Yeshayah 255 which refers to the destruction of the wicked as even their melodies devastate the wicked in Yedutan are the letters of Yad and Hand and Yudun and he will judge which indicates that he is from the left hand and that judgment stem from him 152 with the arrival of night all these angels who are outside of the veil, stir meaning those that are drawn from the back of Maljud and from her external part, then everything is stilled and there is no opening in the door. The judgments from below those of Maljud, the lowest of all Sfirat, are all aroused, meaning all the judgments are assigned together these over those until midnight after the assembly of all the angels that are drawn from the central column. After midnight, one minister is appointed over them, he gathers all the camps as it. Verse says, The reward have me of all camps, Bimidbar 1025, his name is Asaf, and he gathered and he corresponds to Asaf down below, who is mentioned in Tehillim. All appointed ministers and heralds of praise are under his tutelage. 153, this goes on until morning. When morning arrives, the youth rises, Metatron, who is nurtured at the breast of his mother Maljud to cleanse them, namely the angels of the night, and he comes in to serve the early morning is a period of goodwill when the queen. Talks with the king, namely Zeir, and the king extends from himself a single thread of blessings, namely Shesedim, and spreads over the queen and those allied with her, namely those that toil in Torah at midnight. 154 Rabbi Shimon said, How fortunate is the share of he who comes with the queen when she welcomes the king Zeir, and to talk with him, for he is with her at the time when the king extends his right hand, denoting the lights of Shesedim to receive the queen as it is written, If I take the wings of dawn and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, Tehillim 1399, what is uttermost parts of the sea? This is the hour of morning when she welcomes Zeir, and the uttermost parts of the sea, Maljut, the middle of the night is then her beginning as then she begins to shine, and it pertains to judgment as long as night prevails due to lack of Shesedim to clothe her chakma with the arrival of morning, it is her uttermost parts as her judgments end, and she enters beneath the wings. Of the king denoting Zeir and as if to say she is clothing herself with his chesed she and all those righteous people joined with her the verse states and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea 155 we have learned that all those toiling in Torah in the middle of the night join with the Shechina when the morning arrives and the queen namely the Shechina joins with the king Zeir and they too are with the king and the king spreads his wings over all of them this is the meaning of yet Hashem will command his steadfast love in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me Tehillim 429 156 we have learned that at that hour the arrival of morning the patriarchs namely Chesed Burit Tiferet of Zeir and meet with the queen and proceed to speak with her and join us with her the holy one blessed be he Zeir and speaks with her through them and he calls her to spread his wings upon her this is the meaning of the verse Assam of Asaf El Elohim Hashem has Spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. El refers to light of Chakma and is called Chesed, namely the right column, denoting Chesed that rises to become Chakma. Elohim denotes Bura, referring to the left column. Hashem refers to total perfection to mercy, namely the central column that brings together right to left. Therefore, the central column has spoken and called the earth, denoting Maljut, and in that it perfects Maljut. Section 25. Yudhe Bavhe with the vowelization of Elohim. Rabbi Lazar asks his father why, when Elohim always denotes judgment, Yudhe Bavhe should ever be pronounced with the vowels of Elohim. Rabbi Shimon says that he knows that there may sometimes be judgment where there is mercy and vice versa, and when the wicked convert mercy to judgment, then it is read Elohim. We are told in detail of the three grades that are called with names of judgment by Bura and Maljut. The level of Bina is called. Yudhe with the vowelization of Elohim the level of Bura is pronounced also with the lettering of Elohim and the level of Maljud is pronounced Adonai within which are the letters of judgment in 157 Rabbi Lazar was sitting before Rabbi Shimon his father he said to him we have learned that the name Elohim always denotes judgment the name Yudhe is sometimes pronounced Elohim meaning when it is with the vowels of Elohim such as Adonai Yudhe Bavhe Bershi 158 Pronounced with the punctuation of Elohim he questions why pronounce it Elohim when its letters namely why Yudhe Bavhe always denote mercy 158 he said to him that it is written in the scripture know therefore this day and consider it in your heart that Hashem he is Elohim Devarim 439 it is also written Hashem he is the Elohim I may 1839 he said to him I know that where there is judgment there can be mercy and sometimes where there is mercy there may be judgment therefore the Verse states Hashem he is Elohim he continued see that it is so Yudhe Bavhe always stands for mercy but when the wicked convert mercy to judgment the verse is written Yudhe Bavhe but it is read Elohim 159 come and analyze the secret of the matter there are three degrees yet each degree is independent even though they are one connected into one and do not separate one from the other come and see all the plants namely the Sfirat and all these candles namely the Sfirat of Maljud known as the fiery lights shine and blaze all are watered and blessed from that river that continually flows namely Bina in which everything is included as all can stem from it and the sum of everything is within it 160 this river is called the mother of the garden of Eden denoting Maljud as Bina is referred to as mother Hebem Aleph Mem as it is written if Hebem Aleph Mem you cry after Bina Mishle 23 being higher than the garden it is called mother because Eden. Denoting Chakma joins with it and does not leave it for this reason all the springs of Mokin come out draw from IT and water all
Yahidioh, this is one grade 162, the second grade from the aspect of the first grade, which is by another grade named Bureau, which is a left column of Zeir and comes out and is stirred. It is pronounced Elohim not merely in its vowels as in Bada, but with its actual letters. Its origin is Zir and meaning Chisit of Zeir and when stems Bureau that is included in it as a left column of Zeir and is included in the right column of Zeir and which is Chisit since it is included in Chisit. It is therefore written Hashem, he is the Elohim as Yahweh Bavhe, denoting Chisit, is the Elohim, denoting Bureau and Yerite does not merely have the vowels of Elohim as in Bada, but it is included in the letters of Elohim and they become one joined one with the other. This is the second grade 163, the third grade is righteousness, denoting Malchud, which is the last sphere. This becomes the court of the king of Zeir and we have learned that the name Adonai is thus spelled and Thus pronounced the congregation of Israel referring to Malchut is called by this name however the name of Zeir Anpin is written Yudhe Bavhe and is pronounced Adonai this name is completed in this place Malchut these are three levels called with names of judgment as the level of Bina is called Yudhe Bavhe with the vowelization of Elohim the level of Bira is pronounced also with the lettering of Elohim and the level of Malchut is pronounced Adonai these are the three names of judgment as we discuss here the left column which is judgment whose source is Bina therefore it is only hinted at with the vowelization of Elohim and from there it is drawn to the left column of Zeir Anpin there it is actually yet included in the right hence the secret of Elohim is also in its lettering from here it moves to Malchut which is entirely built from the left column and is therefore pronounced Adonai Alat Dalat Yud which contains the letters of judgment Dalat Yud Explicitly all join one with the other without separation as we have established section 26 Ahiyah Asher Ahiyah Rabbi Lazer does not understand the title verse that means I will ever be what I now am and his father says that the name Ahiyah comprises everything and is completely concealed Asher Ahiyah means I will draw and give birth to all, I am a slash Bina is impregnated and ready to give forth all the details and to reveal the exalted name Yudhei Bavhei God. Had explained the secret of the holy name to Moses and Rabbi Shimon found in King Solomon's book that Asher means that the chamber Bina is in connection with Eden Chakma when in the exalted not Asher is derived from happy and Ahiyah means prepared to give birth at the time of birth it is not written Asher because the heavenly peer is separated but rather Ahiyah which means that now it will produce and give birth and all will be corrected after the birth of Zir and those other. Names were forsaken and it says Yudhei Bavhei 164 he said to him if it is pleasing before my father I heard that it is written about this I will ever be what I now am Hebihaya Asher Ahiyah Shema 314 and I do not understand it namely I do not understand its explanation he replied Elazer my son the friends have established it and now it all connects to the same matter 165 the secret of the matter is this the name Ahiyah comprises everything being the supernal Abba and I am Ahuar. The three first Sfirat of Bina always in the secret of the verse he delights in mercy had she said Misha 718 and never received Chakma as when the paths are blocked and not clear and are all included in one place then they are called Ahiyah which includes all it is concealed and does not become revealed 166 after the beginnings of the revelation of Mokin emerges from it and that river which Ayas Yisrael Sab and Tebuna becomes pregnant with male and female in order to draw everything. The beginnings is called Asher Ahiyah IT means I will draw and give birth to all Ahiyah means that now I include everything the inclusion of every detail meaning each and every grade Asher Ahiyah means that I am a which is Bina is impregnated and ready to give forth all the details and to reveal the exalted name Yudhi Hei 167 afterwards Moses wanted to know the details of the matter then the Holy One blessed be he explained it to him thus shall you say to the children of Israel. Ahiyah Shema 314 this name is specific to Israel Saba and Tevuna therefore it is not written here Asher Ahiyah I have found in the book of King Solomon that Asher means the chamber Bina is in connection with Eden denoting Chakma when in the exalted not as it is written happy am I have Oshri for the daughters will call me blessed Bereshit 3013 also here Asher Ahiyah derived from happy Ahiyah means prepared to give birth 168 come and see how it came down from level to level in. Order to tell the secret of the holy name to Moses at first there was Ahiyah which comprises everything in general it is hidden and not revealed at all being supernal Abba and IMA as I have said this is understood from then I was Ahiyah by him as a nursling Mishlei 830 and man cannot know its price CO 2813 for Chakma being the secret of the supernal Abba and IMA are concealed and it is written about them man cannot know its price as Chakma is hidden within them and not known at all. Afterwards supernal Abba and IMA caused the river which is supernal IMA to emanate and it became pregnant and was about to give birth and the verse says Asher Ahiyah meaning I am prepared to give birth and correct everything following this she begins to give birth and it is not written Asher because at the time of birth the heavenly peer is separated as mentioned but Ahiyah which means that now it will produce and give birth and everything will be corrected 169 after everything had emerged and each one was established in its proper place meaning after Zeir Anpin was born and came below to its place he forsook everything meaning all the above mentioned names and said Yudhei Bavhei this is a detail meaning the specific grade of Zeir Anpin unconnected to IMA this is sustenance meaning Zeir Anpin that Mokin referred to as sustenance at that moment Moses became aware of the secret of the holy name the concealed and the revealed he became attached as no other human like him. At how fortunate is his lot Rabbi Lazer approached and kissed his hand section 27 the proper order of writing the name Yudhei Bavhei Rabbi Shimon tells his son that it is critical to write the holy name properly he reiterates the information in the previous section by reference to the individual letters of Yudhei Bavhei 170 he said to him Lazer my son be careful not to write the holy name improperly from now on for of him who does not know to write it. Holy name properly and to tie the bond of faith the bond of one and one of Zeir Anpin and Malchut according to the secret of the verse Hashem shall be one and his name one Zechariah 149 so as to unify the holy name it is written because he has despised the word of Hashem and has broken his commandment that soul shall utterly be cut off Ebed bar 1531 this is even if he causes a degradation of one level or one unity from just one letter among them 171 come and see that the Yud at the beginning of the name Yud Hei Bavhe includes it all it is concealed on all sides and no paths open within IT it encompasses male and female namely the supernal Abba and IMA as the Yud is the secret of Abba and two letters of the Yud fully spelled namely Bob and Dalit are IMA they are concealed and unopened the tip at the top of the Yud hints at not meaning Keter called so since there is no conceiving IT afterwards the Yud the secret of Eden issued from itself that river that continually Flows out namely Bina from it, he will conceive with a son and a daughter which are Bob and Dalit. Its shape hints at Zeir Anpin and Malchut as embryos within it in the shape of Dalit and Bob of its hay it is written and a river went lit goes out of Eden. Bereshit 210 it is written goes out meaning continuously flowing not went out in the past tense for this reason the hay need not part from the Yud as a result it is written by love sure hashering 41 in relation to hay which is with. Yud as two friends that never part from one another 172 you may ask why a river is written indicating one but in reality there are three namely Bina that is pregnant with Zeir Anpin and Malchut as discussed he answers this is for sure that the Yud produced three all are included in the three this Yud issued this river before it namely Bina and two offspring with which I am a and mother nurses and is impregnated and bears them afterwards the hay has this form Dalit within which there is. The Bob which is the cut leg within the hay and these Dalit and Bob are the offsprings that are below Abba and Ima with which Ima is pregnant as discussed 173 after Bina gave birth she produced a male child placed him before her namely Zeir Anpin and there is a need to write Bob which hints about the son namely Zeir Anpin after he was born and came forth to his place this one the son inherits Abba and Ima and Zeir Anpin inherits two portions one for himself and one for Malchut from him is nurtured the daughter therefore it is necessary to write afterwards Bob hey together one after another just as the first Hey is joined together with
In order to be in the congregation of Yisrael in perfection and enjoy from what places he with her he repeated out of Zion the perfection of beauty Elohim has shown forth of the two meaning from Yisit of Malchut known as Zion section 28 as is done below so is done above Rabbi Shimon explains how Jerusalem and Zion were established by God because he wanted to create the lower world similar to the upper world Rabbi Yehuda says that there is no service of worship. Above until the priest performs his service below when Yisrael stop their service below then it also stops above and thousands of hosts above that are connected to the children of Yisrael hold up their service yet for all this God does not abandon Yisrael even when they sin Rabbi Lazer deduces that perfection above and below depend on the priest who makes atonement for himself and for everyone else lastly we hear from Rabbi Yitzhak that when Yisrael are in exile it is as if God is with them. Since the Shechinah never leaves them 175 we have learned that when the Holy One blessed be he wanted to create the lower world he made it all similar to the upper he made Jerusalem the center of the entire earth and one place above it called Zion whose secret is yes it receives blessings from this place through this place of Zion the earth started to be built and through it the world was built this is what the verse says El Elohim Hashem has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof Tehillim 501 from which place out of Zion the perfection of beauty Elohim has shown forth of it two meaning Elohim did appear from Zion which is the ultimate beauty of the world come and see that Jerusalem which is Malchut was blessed only from Zion which is yes and Zion was blessed from above meaning Zeir and everything is one one bonded into one as Zeir and and Malchut the secret of one on one are joined by Zion 176 Rabbi Yehuda said that it is written and he shall go out to the altar that is before Hashem and make atonement for it Vayikra 1618 to the altar is written without further qualification hinting at the celestial altar namely the secret of Yezid of Malchut as it is done below so it is done above all is intertwined one with one through the altar that is Yezid of Malchut we have learned that just as on this day the priest procures forgiveness here below in the temple so it is above when the priest here performs his service so does the celestial priest representing Chesed of Zeir and that pours abundance to Malchut there is no service above which is the secret of Chesed pouring to Malchut until there is service of the priest below since the holiness of the supernal king starts to rise from below all worlds are in one unity before the holy one blessed be he 177 Rabbi Yehuda said if Israel knew why the holy one blessed be he visited to punish them more than all other nations they would be aware that the holy one blessed be he overlooks and forgives his own and does not punish them even one percent we have learned how many chariots and how many hosts are possessed by the holy one blessed be he and how many rulers and appointees are in his service when he designated Israel in this world he crowned them with holy crowns similar to those above and caused them to dwell in the holy land which corresponds to Malchut in order that they should worship him and he connected all the exalted beings with Israel 178 no joy enters before him and the service is not performed before him above until Israel perform below as long as they are found below in the service of their master so it is above but when Israel stop the service below it stops above also so no service is performed above or below since Israel voided the service of the holy one blessed be he when they dwelt in the land of Israel it was likewise so above and certainly later in exile 179 the holy one blessed be he said oh. Israel, if you would only know how many troops, how many hosts hold up their service because of you above, you would have realized that you do not deserve to be in this world even one instant in spite of this it is written, and yet for all that when they are in the land of their enemies I will not cast them away. Vayikra 2644 therefore in and he shall go out to the altar. The altar is written unspecified and does not necessarily indicate the lower altar in the temple also that is before. Hashem is again unqualified not necessarily in the temple yet the altar alludes to the supernal altar which is Malchut that is before Hashem's Eir and afterwards it reads and make atonement for it then offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people Vayikra 1624 he asks if the illusion is to Malchut then what is the meaning of and make atonement for it is atonement applicable above Rabbi Yossi said and make atonement for it means to awaken Shisa in the world first. 180 We have learned that it is written and he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel. If it's 16 he questions what is meant by and he shall make atonement for the holy place. However Rabbi Lazar said behold we learned that the wicked cause a defect above and awaken judgments they cause the sanctuary to become unclean and the mighty snake begins to reveal itself at that point judgments are awakened in the world on this day the priest needs to bring purification to all and to crown his holy sphere namely Jesus of Zeir and which is the head of the king as Jesus is his first sphere in order that the king come to dwell with the queen namely Malchut as the head of the king travels all move along meaning all his fire to join with the queen and instill joy and blessings in the world 181 it is apparent that perfection above and below depend on the priest if his sphere is awakened all are awakened and perfection is present. Therefore it is written and he shall make atonement for the holy place at first he shall make atonement for the holy place meaning to increase peace in the world and multiply joy in the world when there is the joy of the joining of the king and queen all courtiers of the palace and all that serve show joy all sins done before the king are atoned for as it is written that you may be clean from all your sins before Hashem of it 30 for this reason it is written and there shall be no man in the tent of meeting when he goes in to make atonement in the holy place until he comes out of it 17 this is at the time when he enters to join them at that hour when the king and queen are joined he will have made atonement for himself and for his household Ibid 182 and there shall be no man in the tent of meeting Rabbi Yitzhak said then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac Vayikra 2642 this verse has been explained come and see when Yisrael are in Exile it is as if the Holy One blessed be he is with them in exile as the Shechinah never forsakes them when Yisrael were in exile in Babylon the Shechinah resided among them and returned with them from exile in the merits of these righteous people who remained in the land she resided in the land and never left them Rabbi Yehuda said then the queen returned to the king and all returned to be in the banquet of joy of the king for this they are called the men of the great assembly the great assembly surely as Malchut called assembly returned from its diminished status during the exile to regain her prominence section 29 then will I remember my covenant with Jacob Rabbi Yehuda says that whenever the children of Israel are in exile God brings them out of exile if they are found worthy but even if they are not worthy he does not forget them we learn why Jacob is mentioned first in the title verse 183 we have learned that whenever Israel are in exile and are found worthy the Holy One blessed be he hastens his mercy for them and draws them out from exile if they are not found worthy he keeps them in exile until the time he originally decreed if that time arrives yet they are not worthy of redemption the Holy One blessed be he is mindful of the glory of his name and does not forget them in exile this is the meaning of the verse then will I remember my covenant with Jacob Vayikra 2642 for they are everyone's patriarchs referring to Chesa. Bira and Tiferet the secret of the holy name Yud Hevav he is mindful of the glory of his name 184 Rabbi Shia said what is the reason that Jacob is mentioned first in the verse as it reads then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and later Isaac and later Abraham he answers Jacob Tiferet is the principle of the fathers as Tiferet absorbs within it Chesa and Bira also known as Abraham and Isaac he is the holy tree meaning Zeir and that includes all six ends as such the Vav of the holy name Yud Hevav he holds to him so we pronounce Jacob with a Vav Rabbi Yitzhak said Vav fully spelled with all its letters has a numerical value of 13 namely the 13 attributes of mercy as Jacob being Zeir and inherits the inheritance of the 13 springs of the holy sealed spring known as Eric and from his beard are drawn 13 corrections to Zeir and called Jacob and for this reason Jacob is spelled with Vav section 30. The Vav has a silent Aleph in it. We learn the inner meaning of the Aleph in the pronunciation of Vav as Vav Aleph Vav. Similar inferences can be drawn from the pronunciation of Nun as Nun Vav Nun and from the open and closed MEM of MEM. We are reminded again of the importance of the priest in his role of awakening peace above and below. 185 Rabbi Abba said, Why does the letter Vav contain Vav Aleph Vav in this pronunciation? He
One and the Allah represents Eric and Pinkloth in Typhoret as we have explained 186 we have learned in relation to these two letters that the same thing I said about the Bob is true about the nun even though they have established this matter in another way the nun can be explained so the bent nun refers to the queen and next to it is Bob which is yes it so that Malchut attains blessing from it the straight final nun is the expansion of Typhoret so the letters are brought together and United one with the other is Typhoret, which is the straight nun, reaches out to inspire Yezid, which is Bob, and Yezid reaches out to influence Malchut, which is the bent nun. If you ask why does the Bob turn its face away from the bent nun and show its face to the straight final nun, this is done to show honor to the king who is the straight nun, meaning Typhoret is mentioned, therefore Yezid turns its face towards the king, meaning that Yezid and Typhoret are always as one as it appears in the adjacent. Paragraph 187 We have learned that the MEM does not include within it any other letter as the letter in the full spelling is also MEM, but MEM is open and final MEM is closed. The open MEM indicates Malchut when the male joins with her and it is open in order to receive the abundance. The closed MEM points to Jubilee, meaning Bina, whose ways are concealed, therefore the final MEM is also closed from all sides, and even though that Bina spreads out at times, IT is considered closed MEM sum. Learn about this matter from a garden enclosed is my sister my bride a spring shut up a fountain sealed sure hasherim 412 namely that also the closed final mem hints at malchud when it is called a sealed fountain 188 rabbi itzhak said when the holy king remembers israel for his name's sake and returns the queen to her position it is written and there shall be no man in the tent of meeting when he goes in to make atonement in the holy place vayikra 1617 at the time the priest enters to unify the holy name and makes atonement in the holy place to join the king with the queen it is then written and there shall be no man in the tent of meeting 189 we have learned that rabbi yehuda said the priest awakens peace in the world above and below we have learned that he enters the first level of malchud and washes his body he departs this level to the next of zeir and washes his body and extends peace to this one and then one zeir and and malchud he sanctifies his hands and they are blessed together in everything he needs to show action below in order to trigger its counterpart above he needs to show that the garments he wears should be in line with his actions and he should aim to organize everything as needed then the upper and lower beings will be blessed section 31 the yud with its engravings rabbi shimon explains the movement and meaning of the letters in the holy name 190 rabbi shimon taught the yud makes an opening with its engraving and the letters spread to the sides meaning each letter from the name yud hey spreads in three columns and joins up with the yud each of the columns is tied to yud denoting chakma and the right column the yud moves towards the yud that is chakma the first yud of the name yud alaf hey dalaf bab hey yud moves to malchud its last yud the yud malchud rises to the yud chakma later the yud of chakma moves to bab which is zeir and but first the light of chakma Assembles inside the Heibana which then directs to Ad is to Ad is placed between Chakma and Bina and later the Hay joins with the Bob 191 he says the upper Hay of the name Yud Hay Bob Hay namely Bina maintains its gates meaning the 50 gates of Bina in its design and arrangement meaning its orderly design and it grasps the glow of 1570 covered parlors 1000 is the secret of Chakma and the right column 500 is the secret of Bina and the left column and 70 is the secret of Ad the central column and the Hay namely Bina rises to be crowned 50 times for its 50 gates of Bina which maintain whatever is maintaining when Bina is designed with her crowns meaning her two crowns which is the secret of her dad the face of the king's EIR and glows from here the Bob spreads to 22 engravings namely the name of Ayan Ben 192 the Hay adorns the Bob with 70,500 crowns the secret of Chisit Bure Typhoret Net Sash Hot and Yezid of Chakma the Secret of 70,000 which is the right column Chisit Bure Typhoret Net Sash Hot and Yezid of Bina are the secret of 500 the left column which are adorned with one crown being the secret of that that unifies and includes them this is the essence of the verse with the crown with which his mother crowned him Sure Hashirim 311 Bina is considered the mother of Bob that is Zeir and Bina it turns out that the Bob's top is engraved with two tops namely Chakma and Bina therefore there are two tips written at the top of the Bob one tip higher hinting at Chakma and one tip lower hinting at Bina the yud, namely Chakma lowers then onto the Bob meaning that the Bob is joined with the Yud like the Hay the main impression of all the engravings meaning the central column between the two tops is the 70 faces adorned from above downwards goblets and flowers hover in it this one rises namely flowers the other descends and they are engraved one in the other 193 the Yud is tied to the hay, the hay with the bob and the bob with the hay one is tied with the other meaning that the bob which is Zeir and is connected with the hay which is Malchut just as you say in the verse but his bow boat in strength and the arms of his hands were made supple by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob Bershi 4924 in which strength is Yezid and his bow is Malchut thus Yezid of Zeir and is attached to Malchut and strong is your dwelling place and you put your nest in a rock Bimidbar 2421 whereby strong refers to Yezid and rock is Malchut they are tied together one with another and the keys are aglow with the illumination of Chakma all faces are illuminated which is the secret of 70 faces mentioned earlier then they all prostrate and tremble as a result of the judgments revealed with the illumination of Chakma and they say blessed is the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever section 32 from all your sins before Hashem that you may be clean we learned that the high priest is capable of bringing atonement on the people because he is a chariot to Zer Anpin he is the voice of Zer Anpin we read about God's forgiveness of sins we read about the high priest when he enters the holy of holies and hears the sounds of the cherub's wings as a result of his actions there is joy above and below 194 the voice namely Zeir Anpin the central column joins with the priest meaning the priest becomes a chariot to Zeir Anpin he says to them that you may be clean Vayikra 1630 being a chariot to the central column he can bring on them the illumination of Chakma that brings forgiveness of sins and cleansing neither the people nor any other priest say that you may be clean except the high priest when the voice is attached to him meaning Zeir Anpin then he is capable of bringing atonement on them and he proclaims that you may be clean 195 we have learned from all your sins before Hashem but he questions if he already wrote to cleanse you from all your sins why write before Hashem that you may be clean Rabbi Yitzhak said that you may be clean before lit in the face of Hashem meaning the illumination of the face of Hashem is the illumination of Hashem's face is the secret of the illumination of Chakma according to the secret meaning of the verse a man's wisdom makes his face to shine Kahilat 81 it atones for sins and brings cleansing 196 we have learned that from the new moon meaning Rosh Hashanah the Jewish New Year the books are opened and the judges judge the court start to judge daily until that day known as the ninth day of the month on that day all judicial decisions go up to the judge they prepare a supernal throne of mercy for the holy king on this day Israel need to rejoice in joy before their master who will on the second day be sitting on his throne of mercy for them his throne of absolution meaning forgiveness of sins 197 all these books are open before him and are recorded before him all these sins he credits them and cleanses them from all sins this is the essence of the verse from all your sins before Hashem that you may be clean before Hashem literally this refers to the illumination of the face of Hashem the secret of the illumination of Chakma which forgives all sin those that recite this verse only to this point are permitted to do so namely until before Hashem but no more as no one else is permitted to announce that you may be clean but the high priest alone who performs the service and unifies the holy name when he unifies the holy name and the blessing is in his mouth that voice namely Zeir and comes down strikes him and causes the word to glow in the mouth of the priest and he says that you may be clean he performs his service and thus the rest of the supernal beings are blessed 198 afterwards he washes his body and sanctifies his hands to enter into another holy Service then he aims to enter another most holy lofty place namely the holy of holies three rows around the high priest his colleague priest Levite and the rest of the people they represent the three columns priest and Levite represent right and left and Israel represent the secret of the central column they raise their hands towards him in prayer a knot of rope of gold hands from his leg from fear per
That point the priest realizes that goodwill prevails a time of joy for all the people know that his prayer was accepted as the verse reads Though your sins be like scarlet they shall be as white as snow Yeshua 118 the priest steps back and utters his prayer how fortunate is the share of the priest as a result of him there is joy upon joy that day on high and low concerning that hour it is written happy is the people that is in such a case happy is the people whose Elohim is Hashem. Tehillim 14,415 section 33 with my soul have I desired you in the night Rabbi Shimon tells Rabbi Shia that God is the spirit and soul of everyone so that everyone desires to cling to him we hear different explanations of the title verse 202 and this shall be a statute forever to you that in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month you shall afflict your souls Vayikra 1629 Rabbi Shia said with my soul have I desired you in the night with my spirit Within me I seek you Yeshua 269 he questions with my soul have I desired you in the night it should simply read my soul at night what does it mean with my soul have I desired you in the night also with my spirit within me I seek you should have said it seeks you he answers we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he is the spirit and soul of all so Israel are saying you are my soul and spirit for this reason I have desired you to cling to you I seek you to find your Goodwill 203 Rabbi Yossi said at the time one sleeps in his bed his soul departs a sense and testifies about him concerning that person's activities of that entire day therefore the body says to the soul my soul have I desired you in the night when you go out of me my spirit within me I seek you 204 another explanation for with my soul have I desired you in the night the congregation of Israel said before the Holy One blessed be he with my soul have I desired you in the night Meaning so long as I find myself in exile among other nations and withhold my soul from all evil that is connected with the nations with my soul have I desired you in order to return to my place with my spirit within me I seek you meaning even though they subject my children to every kind of oppression the Holy Spirit does not depart from them in order that they should seek you and perform your commandments 205 Rabbi Yitzhak said Israel said before the Holy One blessed be he so long. As my soul is within me have I desired you in the night wherefore in the night it is because the nefesh at that time needs to covet you with my spirit within me I seek you meaning when the Holy Spirit stirs within me I seek you with excitement in order to do your will for when your sentences are on the earth means at the time when justice meaning Zeir anthem comes down to earth meaning to bring fragrance to the world to melt you then the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness of it. Which means that they are capable of tolerating the judgments of righteousness and mankind should not perish as a result of it when will the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness when your sentences are on the earth. Rabbi Shizkiah said, With my soul Nefesh have I desired you in the night refers to the congregation of Israel, namely Malchut, while with my spirit Rash within me I seek you refers to the Holy One blessed be he Malchut is the secret of Nefesh and the Holy One blessed. Be he is the secret of Rash section 34 as the heart pants. Rabbi Shimon says that all those who take pleasure in the Torah need have no fear as the Torah is called delights. The righteous take great delight in God and he and them the congregation of Israel deeply desires to be watered from Elohim in this world and in the world to come and that flow is enabled by the righteous 206. Rabbi Abba was staying with Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon rose at midnight to study. Torah and Rabbi Lazer and Rabbi Abba rose with him. Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying as the heart pants after the water brook so my soul pants for you Elohim. Tehillim 422 the friends have established this verse fortunate are Israel more than all nations that the Holy One blessed be he gave them the Holy Torah and bequeathed to them saintly souls from a holy source in order that they should observe his commandments and take pleasure with the Torah all those who take pleasure in the Torah need not fear anything as it is written unless your Torah had been my delights I should have perished in my affliction. Tehillim 11992 207 what are my delights the Torah as the Torah is called delights as it is written and I was daily as delight. Mishlei 830 we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he comes to delight himself with the righteous in the garden of Eden what is meant by delight himself it means to rejoice in them as we learn fortunate are the righteous about. Whom it is written, and you shall delight yourself in Hashem Yeshua 5814, so as to take pleasure from the drink of the stream, meaning by as is written, and satisfy your soul in drought of it. 11. It is as if the Holy One blessed be He delights in them by means of that drink of the stream that the righteous take pleasure in, so He comes to have delight with the righteous. All those that toil in the Torah will merit to find delight in the righteous from that drink of the stream, meaning by 208. We have learned that as the heart have oil pants after the water brooks refers to the congregation of Israel, namely Malchut, as the verse says, O oh my strength, have ye all haste you to help me. Tehillim 2220. My strength refers to Malchut pants after the water brooks, meaning to be watered by the water of the spring, referring to Bina through the aid of the righteous, namely Yezid pants, Hatayarog, as the verse says, to the beds have of spices, Sher Hashirim 62, so my soul pants for you. Elohim meaning to be watered from you in this world and the world to come 290 questions what are the sources of the spring he answers there is one spring above namely Bina as it is written and a river went out of Eden to water the garden Bereshit 210 it flows on from there and waters the garden namely Malchut all these streams namely the Sfirat of Zeir Anpin that receive from the river flow out and join in the two springs known as Netzach and Hot of Zeir Anpin these are called water brooks and pour in that level called righteous meaning is it of Zeir Anpin from which it continues and goes out and the garden is watered namely Malchut for this reason the heart and the deer are together referring to righteousness and the righteous namely is it and Malchut that are together heart stands for Malchut and deer for is it section 35 the voice of Hashem makes the hinds to calve we hear several explanations of the title verse all having to do with the fact that Zerampin strengthens and nurtures his warriors 210 we have learned that it is written the voice of Hashem makes live frightens the Heinz Hebalyelet to Kaptailim 299 it is pronounced Ayelet yet spelled without Vav this is the gazelle Hebalyelet of Dun referring to Malchut another explanation of the wild Heinz we have learned that at midnight when the Holy One blessed be he enters the garden of Eden to delight in the righteous this voice namely Zeir Anpin goes out and strikes pain to all those Heinz that's around the holy throne of glory namely Malchut this is what is written 60 valiant men are round about it Sher Hashirim 37 another explanation makes Hebalyelet the Heinz to Kav as it says his hand slew Hebalyelet also created the slant serpent EO 2613 with Kolel meaning that he created and strengthened also Yakolel means he strengthens the Heinz that are the 60 warriors and strips the forest fair Tehillim 299 as the verse says Honeycomb lit forest of honey Ishmuel 1427 and I had eaten my honeycomb with my honey Sher Hashirim 51 meaning that Zeir Anpin which is the secret of the voice of Hashem nurtures those 60 valiant men called Heinz as a mother nurtures her children therefore it is written the voice of Hashem makes the Heinz to calve meaning it nurtures and maintains them section 36 the 70 sounds of a woman in labor the faithful shepherd Moses says that at the time before the coming of Messiah the sages of Kabbalah will have a time of hardship they will be in distress sadness and poverty like the pains of the one who has given birth to Sheshanah at that time she will open to give birth to the two Messiahs due to the pain of those people who are so good and kind and truthful who love and fear God Rai Mahim to the faithful shepherd 211 the faithful shepherd namely the soul of Moses said at that time before the coming of Messiah the Mishnah scholar sages of supernal wisdom scholars of Kabbalah scholars of the secrets in the Torah will have a time of hardship as they have nothing to support them this is the meaning of as the heart have oil pants after the water brooks Tehillim 422 as they namely the sages mentioned earlier are springs of water of Torah flowing to the Shechanah Torah is referred to as water Torah is the central pillar meaning Zeir and the central column these springs of water namely the sages mentioned earlier from which comes forth Torah meaning water are in distress in sadness and in poverty these are the pains and distresses of the one who has given birth namely the Shechanah as it is written in regard to her and let her who bore you rejoice Mishlei 2325 she will be in those labor pains meaning with their distress of the scholars of wisdom and Torah as mentioned as their ag
Shown favor those that fear sin will be despised and the wisdom of scribes will be sullied truth will be absent and the vine will give its fruit but wine will be expensive 214 from these sounds that she cries the 70 sounds equaling the 70 words in the psalm may Hashem hear you in the day of trouble Tehillim 20 her womb is opened this refers to the letter bed equals two meaning chamber of head by the womb encompassing two chambers in order to give birth from them to two messiahs. Messiah son of David and Messiah son of Joseph she brings her head between her knees her head is the central pillar meaning Z-E-I-R and her knees are two thighs net sash and hot which are the two prophets from there are born two messiahs as mentioned at that time he strips the forest fair meaning Chakma will be revealed the serpent will be removed from the world as the illumination of Chakma will do away with all Klippot and of R-A-I Mahim the section 37 Nefesh and Ruash Rabbi Shimon tells Rabbi Abba that just as the Nefesh and Ruash cling to the body who loves the man must love God and cling to him as the love of the soul and spirit men who rise every night to study the Torah will be blessed with God's love the righteous ones whose spirits and souls cling to God with the proper love will rule on the earth below and what they decree for the world will happen we learn that when the holy souls come from above and the righteous of the world draw them through. Mating there are very few that merited from the very beginning the souls of the great righteous ones have stood before God who watches them until it is time for them to come into a body they deserve to ascend to heaven while they are still alive like Elijah and Enoch the levels of the souls of the righteous are greater than the angels and they come down in every generation in the future God will renew the world with them 215 Rabbi Abba said to him with my soul Nefesh have I desired you in the night with my spirit rash within me I seek you Yeshaya 269 he questions it should simply state my Nefesh in the night meaning it should say my soul in the night with my spirit within me I seek you why right also I seek you when it should say it seeks you as it refers to his spirit he answered we have established that it resembles in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breathless rash of all mankind of 1210 meaning that my Nefesh and my rash are not his own names but are two lights, Rash and Nefesh, clad in the body as explained further 216 come and see that the Nefesh and Rash always exist jointly in the world we have learned the total service that man must serve the Holy One blessed be he is as we have learned and you shall love Hashem your Elohim Devarim 65 he needs to love the Holy One blessed be he with his very soul this is referred to as an utter love the love of his Nefesh and Rash just as these Nefesh and Rash cling to the body and the body loves them so must man love the Holy One blessed be he and cling to him as the love of the Nefesh and Rash this is in essence the verse with my soul have I desired you in the night meaning my very soul that is clad in my body YB1217 with my spirit within me I seek you meaning I will cling to you with much love at night man needs to rise every night out of love for the Holy One blessed be he to toil with his service until morning rises so there will be drawn upon. In the thread of grace we have learned that fortunate is the portion of man that loves the Holy One, blessed be he with this love the world survives thanks to these truly righteous ones who so love the Holy One, blessed be he and they have sway over all harmful edicts that appear above and below. 218 we have learned that the pious one whose rash and nefesh cling to the above to the Holy King with the proper love will rule upon the earth below and what he decrees for the world will come to. Pass how do we know this from Elijah as it is written as Hashem the Elohim of Israel lives before whom I stood there shall not be due or rain these years but according to my word I may lash him 171 219 come and see when the holy souls come from above downwards and the pious of the world draw them from the king and the queen namely from the union of male and female there are a few that merited that at the precise moment when they descend to earth they are standing and serving before the king. Who pleases to look at it afterwards it descends into the world when the Holy One blessed be he blew the breath into every single soul and into every angel in heaven all the hosts were created and stood complete as we have established this is what the verse says and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth Tehillim 336 among the souls there are those that remain standing before the Holy One blessed be he has mentioned until the Holy One blessed be he causes them to descend 220 we have learned that from the day the world was created the souls of the great pious ones have stood before the Holy One blessed be he held back in his presence the Holy One blessed be he watches them until the time arrives to send them below meaning to become clothed with the body and they rule above and below thus the verse as Hashem the Elohim of Israel lives before whom I stood it doesn't say I stand but I stood meaning before descending to this world afterwards he returned to his place in heaven and entered his chamber other souls do not ascend to their place until they die this is because they never stood earlier before the Holy One blessed be he on that level of the others namely Enoch and Elijah that merited to ascend to their place when still alive for this reason Elijah became a messenger and angel above and Enoch too and these were those that clung most to the king meaning more than an angel 221 I found in the book of Adam that all holy spirits above meaning angels do the mission of the Holy One blessed be he and all come from one place the souls of the righteous come from two levels joined into one therefore they ascend higher than angels and their levels are greater than angels this is so all those that were hidden there went down and up during their lifetime such as Enoch who did not die we have already established this matter regarding Enoch and Elijah 222 we have learned that 125,000 levels of the pious souls arose in the desire of the Holy One. Blessed be he before the world was created the Holy One blessed be he designated them for this world in every generation they ascend fly in the world and join in the bundle of life meaning Malchut in the future the Holy One blessed be he will renew the world with them about them it is written for as the new heavens and the new earth Yeshayah 6622 223 you shall afflict your souls Vayikra 1629 it says your souls in order that Israel be found meritorious before the Holy King and meet. With the good will of the Holy One blessed be he they must cling to him in order that all their sins may be forgiven therefore whoever eats and drinks on the ninth day and pleasures his soul with food and drink will find himself with the affliction on the tenth day doubled and it will be considered as if he fasted on the ninth and tenth your souls includes all body and soul to surrender on this day in order to have atonement for since 224 we have learned that for on that day will he Forgive you if it he asks it says on that day but it should read that day he answers on that day is precise as Atika Kadisha meaning Keter is revealed in it to forgive everyone since section 38 a little city Rabbi Abba talks about the verse there was a little city and few men within it saying that there are few who deserve to live there and that God comes to join with them and live there and protect it there is a wise man who lives there and he is wise. Because he studies the Torah and keeps its precepts but his wisdom is despised as people do not want to pay attention to the Torah 225 another explanation for you shall afflict your souls Vayikra 1629 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion saying there was a little city and few men within it Kahila 914 a little city has been explained yet the little city is as in we have a strong city he sets up salvation Yeshaya 261 and, and I will not come as an enemy also in a city Hashia 119 where City refers to Malchut, a little city is small because it is the last of all Sphira and the lowest of them all its walls are large strong and holy and it is called the holy city and few men within it few are those who merit to enter within and dwell there as the verse says who shall ascend into the mountain of Hashem or who shall stand in his holy place Tehillim 243 therefore and few men within it 226 and there came a great king against or to it Kahilat 914 this refers to the holy one blessed be he who comes to join with it and reside in it and besiege or circled it as the verse says for I says Hashem will be to her a wall of fire round about Zechariah 29 and build great siege works against it Kahilat 914 means that he builds its big strong fine beautiful and holy walls meaning the protection that external forces will not be nurtured from it it is called the holy city all the majesty of the king he brought within therefore it alone comprises all crowns of it. King being the Mokin of Zeir and according to the secret of the verse, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. Mishlei 124 Zeir and is not crowned with the illumination of Chakma save when he is united with Malchut, since Chakma is revealed in Malchut only, and all crowns of the king are decorated with it. For this reason, there are a few men within it, as not all people merit. It 227. Now there was found in it a poor head, Miskin wise man. Kahilat 915. This resembles what is written. He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Tehillim 
Meaning that no one remembered to perform the commandment of the Torah and to toil in the Torah as that poor man that joined to everything in order to merit it, then said, I wisdom is better than strength. Kahilat 916 meaning permission to enter that world is given only to truly righteous men to those who toil in Torah day and night as well as crown themselves with the commandments of the Torah in this world to arrive with them in the world to come. 229 Nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard, but as people do not wish to look at him, they do not want to be with him and pay attention to his words. We have learned that all who pay attention to the words of Torah are fortunate in this world. It is as if they have received the Torah from Sinai. One should even listen to words of the Torah from anyone one who lends an ear to him gives honor to the Holy King and glory to the Torah and about him is written this day you are become the people of Hashem. Your Elohim Devarim 279 section 39 just and victorious Rabbi Shimon says that the nations of the other side have taken the abundance that should have belonged to Israel but the righteous will eventually be victorious and the Queen Malchud will return to them we learned about the seven pillars that the world rests on and the one pillar the righteous or Yezid that they rest on lastly Rabbi Shimon talks about the everlasting statute that God has made for Israel. 230 we have learned that one day the friends were walking with Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Shimon said I see all nations are higher above and Israel are below all why it is because the king has dismissed the queen from him and invited a maid in her stead as the verse says for three things the earth is disquieted for a slave when he becomes king and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress Mishlei 3021 to 23 who is this handmaid she is the foreign kingdom of the other side whose firstborn Hashem smote in. Egypt as is written even to the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the mill Shemot 115 at first she used to sit behind the millstone but now she is a handmaid that is heir to her mistress instead of extending her abundance to holy Malchut this maid of the other side takes all the abundance and extends it to the nations that are from her side 231 Rabbi Shimon went and said a king without a queen is not considered a king so a king who clings to a maid who is a servant of the Queen where is his honor a voice will inform the queen saying rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold your king comes to you he is just and victorious Zechariah 99 the righteous Yezid is victorious because until now he rode in a place that is not his in a strange place namely the maid and nurtured it now the queen returns to him 232 about this it is written humble and riding upon an ass of it as he was poor at first and riding upon an ass as we have established it refers to the lower crowns of the idolatrous nations the firstborn of which Hashem killed in Egypt as they are considered an ass this is the meaning of and all the firstborn of cattle Shemot 115 we have established this matter so to speak with just and victorious meaning that he is more victorious than anyone until now the righteous namely Yezid resided without righteousness denoting Malchut now that the righteous and righteousness are joined he is just and victorious because he no longer dwells in the other side we have learned that the righteous perishes lit is lost and no man lays it to heart Yeshayah 571 this verse is complicated it reads lost when it should be written is lost so what is the meaning of lost he answers he really lost what did he lose the queen and he joined another place called made 233 rabbi Yitzhak said to rabbi Shimon if it pleases my master we have learned but the righteous is an everlasting foundation Mishlei 1025 some explain that the world rests upon seven pillars but some say the world rests on one pillar namely is it as the verse says but the righteous is an everlasting foundation how do we reconcile these words so that they don't conflict he answered they all pertain to the same idea there are seven the seven Sfirat Shisid Biru Tiferet Netzach Hal and Malchut and among them there is one pillar called righteous who is Yezid the seven rest upon it and the world is sustained upon it is it rest upon it it is as if it rests upon all the seven since it consists of seven Sfirat Shisid Biru Tiferet Netzach Hal and Malchut therefore it is written but the righteous is an everlasting foundation have Yezid and we have several times established these matters 234 we have learned that this maid would eventually rule the holy land below just as the queen ruled at first as it says righteousness lodged in it Yeshayah 121 referring to Malchut called righteousness but now a handmaid that is heir to her mistress in every respect both above and below however the Holy One blessed be he will in the future return the queen to her original position and then whose joy will it be one says the joy of the king and queen it is the joy of the king for returning to her and casting off the maid as we said it is the joy of the queen because she has returned to join the king this is the essence of rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion 235 come and see that it is written and this Hebzot shall be an everlasting statute to you Vayikra 1634 he questions it should read it shall be to you wherefore the words he answers the explanation of the verse is as we said it is an everlasting statute which is Malchut which is always referred to as an everlasting statute which means the decree of the king as he placed all his laws in this place Malchut and sealed them as one seals everything in a storehouse ITIS assuredly an everlasting statute in this side. Denoting Malchut he marks and engraves all his storehouses and hidden things section 40 you shall afflict your souls Rabbi Shimon tells us that one should eat and drink on the ninth of the month more than any other day on the tenth day the judgments cause wisdom to be revealed we read that the children of Israel were only exiled because they renounced God and he forgives them on the day of atonement 236 in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month. The Ikra 1629 tenth is exact as we have learned that tenth denotes Malchut you shall afflict your souls if it this is exact we have learned your souls Nefesh ought indeed as it all depends upon Nefesh as the light of Malchut is called Nefesh and Nefesh always denotes Malchut for this reason one should eat and drink from the ninth of the month denoting is it more than any other day even though we learned this in another manner it is all very well the amount to the same thing and each thing is in its own place this is how it should be 237 we have learned that on that day all joy and every light and every indulgence in the world namely forgiveness of sins all depend on supernal IMA all springs are drawn and flow from it meaning both the illumination of Chakma and the illumination of Chesedim and all these candles glow being the secret of the lights of the fire within Malchut and they glow with light and joy until everything becomes fragrant at that point all judgments are within the glow as those judgments drawn from the five afflictions cause Chakma to shine forth if not for them the Chakma would not become revealed as mentioned the judgment is not being carried out but is merely impending this is the meaning of you shall afflict your souls to enable the illumination of Chakma 238 Rabbi Abba said my master has told us from the text of the mission that Israel were only exiled from their land for renouncing the Holy One blessed be he as it is written. We have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Yeshai. 2 Samuel 201 David denotes Malchut, so they were saying we have no part in Malchut. I have found another verse on this. It is written, Now see to your own house, David. I may lodge him 1216. He questions, Does the house of David also denote Malchut? He replied, Certainly Malchut is referred to as the house of David, as it is written, O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of Hashem. Yeshai 25, the house of Jacob is similar to that which is written in, and I will glorify my house of glory. Tiferet Yeshai 607, since Jacob is Tiferet, and the house of Tiferet is Malchut in the same manner, the house of David points to Malchut. The explanation of the verse, O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of Hashem. It has the same meaning as in, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Bershi 210 river refers to Zeir and that waters the garden that is Malchut. He planted the garden to enjoy. Himself there with the pious ones who dwell within, therefore it is said, O house of Jacob, denoting Malchut, come and let us walk in the light of Hashem, which is Zeir and that waters Malchut 239. We have learned that it is written also lit, but on the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement, and you shall afflict your souls. Vayikra 2327. It is also written, and this shall be a statute forever to you that in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month you shall afflict your souls. Vayikra 1629. In the latter it does not say, but on the tenth what is meant by, but on the tenth that is written in this verse, he replied to him, it comes to exclude for wherever the word, but have a C H I S written its purpose is to exclude since it is written, and you shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month. Vayikra 2332. So it says later, but on the tenth day
The illumination of Chakma to water on this day all sides and to water and satiate everything this is the meaning of you namely for you in order to cleanse you this day as it says that you may be clean of all your sins before Hashem but harsh judgment will not affect you 242 Rabbi Yehuda said how lucky were Israel that the Holy One blessed be he craved them and wished to cleanse them so that no sin would be found with them in order that they could be members of his chamber and Dwell in his palace regarding the future it is written then will I sprinkle clean water upon you Yashiskel 3625 section 41 out of the depths I have cried to you Hashem Rabbi Yehuda says that when God wanted to create the world he consulted the Torah who said that if he did create man man would sin and make him angry the Torah warned God that if he reacted to man's sinful actions the world would not survive therefore God did not create the world until he created Repentance and repentance is always available for mankind so people can be cleansed from their sins 243 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying a song of ascent out of the depths I have cried to you Hashem Tehillim 1301 we have learned that when the Holy One blessed be he created the world he wanted to create man he took counsel in the Torah she said before him you wish to create this man he will sin before you he will anger you and if you react to him according to his deeds the world then will not survive before you certainly not man the Holy One blessed be he said to her am I for no reason called an El merciful and gracious long suffering Shema 346 244 before he created the world he created repentance the Holy One blessed be he said to repentance which is the secret of Bible called repentance I wish to create man in the world on the condition if they turn to you from their sins you will be ready to forgive their sins and render atonement at every hour repentance is available for mankind when mankind repents from their iniquities this repentance namely by returns to the Holy One blessed be he meaning extends mokin to zeir and pen and atones for all the judgments are all subdued and mitigated and man is purified of his sins 245 he questions when is he cleansed from his sin he answers when he properly enters repentance Rabbi Yitzhak said when he returns before the supernal king and prays from the depths of the heart as the verse states out of it depths I have cried to you Hashem 246 Rabbi Abba said out of the depths I have cried to you Hashem means there is a hidden spot above it is the depth of the well denoting bina from here flow streams and springs in every direction and the deepest part is called repentance one who wishes to return and cleanse oneself from sins in this depth needs to call upon the Holy One blessed be he as the verse says out of the depths I have cried to you Hashem 247 we have studied that when one since before his master mercy is awakened if he offers his sacrifice on the altar and the priest attains forgiveness for him and prays his prayer for him the judgments are mitigated and repentance namely by the pours out blessings in the springs that emerge and flow all candles are blessed together namely the sfirat of Malchut and one is cleansed from his sin section 42 10 types of chakma we read how God Einsoff produced 10 sfirat and we are told that he is a and there he like a flame attached to a burning coal we also read of the unholy chakma or wisdoms that are clipot these contain all types of sorcery like the kind that the Egyptians used and Israel learned these erroneous ways from the Egyptians we learn why Isaac blessed Jacob with both Shesedim and chakma 248 come and see the holy one blessed be he the secret of endless light produced 10 sfirat holy lofty crowns with which he is crowned and clothed he is the and they are he as a flame attached to a burning coal there is no separation between the endless light blessed be he and the sphirot that clothe him correspondingly there are ten sphirot that are not holy below held by the filth of the nails of one holy sphere called chakma denoting malchut called the lower chakma the illuminating lights at her back parts are called nails and within their refuse called the filth of the nails the clipot are attached therefore they are called chakma lit wisdom plural 249 we have learned that ten types of these chakma of clipot descended to the world and all were given to and became unclean in egypt except for one that spread throughout the world except egypt they consisted of all types of sorcery and from them the egyptians knew sorcery more than the rest of mankind when the egyptians wished to gather kinds of sorceries for their purposes they used to go out into the field to the high mountains and offer sacrifices they made diggings in the ground and Surrounded the diggings with blood while the rest of the blood gathered within the diggings they placed upon it flesh they offered the sacrifice to evil beings and these evil beings gathered and approached together and were appeased by them on that mountain 250 Israel who were subjugated by the Egyptians approached them learned from them followed their erroneous ways as the verse says after the doings of the land of Egypt in which you dwell shall you not do and after the doings of it. Land of Canaan Vayikra 183 it is also written and they shall no more offer their sacrifice to demons Vayikra 177 we have learned that when they were offering before them upon the field and preparing the blood and offering their sacrifices all these evil types assembled and they saw them as demons as they were full of hair and they told them what they wanted 251 come and see what is written concerning Isaac and Jacob went near to Isaac his father and he felt him Bereshit 2722 he said. He is lacking only the dew from heaven that flowed upon the earth, meaning that he lacks only the bounty of Zeir and been called heaven the light of Shesedim as he is a chariot for Zeir and but he does not need the illumination of Chakma. Rabbi Yossi spoke in the fatness of the earth of 28 is also written denoting the illumination of Chakma and he blessed him with everything both Hasidim and Chakma. Why did he bless him with the illumination of Chakma when he saw him with hair? Denoting judgments he said in order to remove this from him he needs the fatness of the earth denoting the illumination of Chakma but not the filth of the earth like the other side that feeds upon the filth of the nails this filth comes from the earth denoting Malchut when the dew of heaven and the fine fruit of the earth join denoting Zeir and Malchut that filth passes section 43 one who inquires of the dead the rabbis discuss the last of the lore. On holy Sfirot Malchut of the other side they say that the souls of evil doers who died are the demons of the world and while they are punished part of the time in Gehenna they also hover over the world and mislead wicked people the souls mourn for their bodies which are being eaten by worms and the sorcerers perform their witchcraft at the graves 252 Rabbi Shia said the last of these lower on holy Sfirot is that which is mentioned in the verse or one who inquires of the dead Devarim 1811. This is the tenth of all the Sfirot namely Malchut of other side there are ten types of sorcery in the verse corresponding to the tenth Sfirot of the other side according to what we have learned Rabbi Yitzhak said the souls of evil doers that died are the demons of the world and about them the verse describes who inquires of the dead 253 Rabbi Yossi said if so it is pleasing to the wicked to become harming forces in the world where is the punishment of Gehenna and where is the bad that Awaits them in that world Rabbi Shi replied we have learned and established that many prosecutors are ready to receive the souls of the wicked at the time they depart the world and deliver them to Gehenom they receive three punishments daily in Gehenom later demons join them and the souls go hover over the world and mislead the wicked people against whom repentance has been closed and they are returned to Gehenom to be punished there and this continues daily 254 after the demons go with them through the world they return them to their graves and they see body worms picking at their flesh the souls mourn for them for the bodies these sorcerers go to the cemeteries and perform their sorcery make an image of a human form and slaughter before it go later they bring that goat to that grave and that image they shatter to four directions and raise it to the four corners of the grave and they perform their sorcery all these groups assemble with evil kinds and bring the soul which enters the grave and speaks with them. Section 44 Nefesh Ruash Neshama We read about the three levels of soul of a righteous person. Nefesh Ruash and Neshama If he deserves the spiritual soul he is given the Ruash and then there is awakened in him higher desire to learn about God then he deserves the highest level. The Neshama we are told how the Nefesh out of the righteous who died are in this world to protect living people the deceased are aware of distress. In the world the Ruash of the righteous dead go to the earthly garden of Eden and the Neshama go to the supernal garden of Eden called the bond of life. We learn how the levels of soul communicate with one another to draw God's mercy to the world. 255 Rabbi Yitzhak said how fortunate are the pious in this world and the world to come as they are all holy their bodies are holy and their Nefesh is holy their Ruash is holy and their Neshama is the holy of holies. There are three levels. Nefesh. Ruash and Neshama, just like above reflecting Malchut Tiferet and Bina above as Rabbi Yehuda has taught it is written let the earth bring forth
42 If it is written so I praise the dead why continue that are already dead he answers this refers to those that already died in this world doing the service of their master they renounce the world that die for the service of their master as Torah is sustained only by those who give themselves up for IT 258 in the book of King Solomon it is written that the Holy One blessed be he made three dwellings for righteous people for their nefesh rash and neshama after their demise one is. For the nefesh I have plural of the righteous that did not depart this world and are still in this world as the nefesh of the deceased does not depart this world when the world needs mercy and living people are in distress the nefesh I pray for them they go and tell this to those who slumber in Hebron meaning the patriarchs who awaken and go to the earthly garden of Eden where the rash of the righteous are clothed with crowns of light take counsel with them and make a decree and the Holy One. Blessed be he fulfills their wish and shows mercy to the world 259 these nefesh out of the righteous are in this world to protect living people this is known as nefesh it does not depart this world and is present in this world to watch and know about and to protect the generation the friends say that the deceased are aware of distress in the world and the punishment of the wicked in the land is by that nefesh as it is written that nefesh shall be cut off from his people they I cross 720. 260 the second dwelling is the earthly garden of Eden in it the holy one blessed be he made upper precious dwellings that are similar to this world and similar to the supernal world meaning they are included with aspects of Malchut and aspects of Bina the garden is the secret of Malchut and Eden is the secret of Bina the chambers are also of two types like the dwelling without number and trees and grasses and fragrances rise daily in that place rests that which is called Ruash of these. Righteous this is the dwelling in which Ruash dwells each Ruash is clothed with precious garments of the likeness of this world and the supernal world 261 the third dwelling is the holy dwelling on high called the bundle of life meaning the garden of Eden on high there the highest holy level called Neshama has pleasure it clings to find pleasure in the most high Eden and it is written that you shall delight yourself in Hashem and I will cause you to ride Yeshayah 58 14 the garden of Eden. On high is called the high places of the earth 262 we have learned that when the world needs mercy then the nefesh of these meritorious righteous men which is in this world in order to defend the world rises flies across the world and alerts the rash the rash rises adorns itself and alerts the neshama the neshama alerts the holy one blessed be he and then he has mercy on the world and he descends from above downwards the neshama informs the rash and the rash informs the nefesh 263 every shabbat and new moon nefesh rash and neshama join and clothe themselves together until they are united to come forth and bow before the most high king afterwards they return to their positions this is the essence of the verse and it shall come to pass that every new moon and every shabbat shall all flesh come yeshayah 6623 264 when the world needs mercy the living go and inform the nefesh i have plural of the righteous and weep on their graves those who are worthy to inform the righteous men what is the reason they are worthy because they concentrate on clinging to nefesh with nefesh then the nefesh out of the righteous awaken assemble fly to the slumberers of Hebron inform them of the distress of the world and they all ascend to the door of the garden of Eden to inform the rash these rishat plural that are adorned in the garden of Eden with celestial angels going among them all inform the neshama the neshama informs the holy one blessed be he and all bid for mercy for the living and the holy one blessed be he shows mercy to the world on their behalf this is what Solomon meant in so I praise the dead that are already dead section 45 one who inquires of the dead part 2 rabbi Abba tells how people can take a scroll of Torah to the grave sites of righteous men which awakens their souls and the dead then realize that the world is in distress but there is no one who knows how to inform the dead about the problem they Rabbis talk about the importance of repentance and fasting and about how critical it is to never change a single letter of the Torah. They say that when there are no more righteous men in the world, the world will survive only by the merits of the deceased. We learn that when a righteous person leaves this world, he is then found in all three worlds, Briya, Yitzhara, and Asiya. He shields the world during his lifetime and even more after death. 265 Rabbi Shia said, I wonder if anyone knows how to notify the deceased besides us. Rabbi Abba replied, the pain that people suffer informs them. The Torah informs them at the time when no one has knowledge, namely how to alert the souls of the righteous men. They bring out a scroll of Torah near the graves and the souls are awakened, wondering as to what reason the Torah appears exiled at this place. Then the angel Duma informs them. 266 Rabbi Yossi said they realize that the world is in distress and the living people are neither worthy of nor no. How to inform them at that very time everyone wails the Torah, we have failed and the Torah has been exiled to this place if people return with repentance and cry with a complete heart they then return to the Holy One blessed be he all assemble and seek mercy and inform the slum bearers of Hebron and enter and inform the Rash in the Garden of Eden as we have mentioned 267 if they do not repent wholeheartedly and reading and crying for the distress of the world woe to them in that they assemble for nothing they say who caused the Holy Torah to be exiled because of them who failed to do repentance then they come to list their sins therefore none should go there without repenting or without fasting to seek requests Rabbi Abba said not without three fast Rabbi Yossi says even one fast suffices but it must be on that same day as long as the multitude sit in great distress then they would come together meaning Nefesh Rash and Neshama seeking mercy upon the world 268 we have learned that Rabbi Yehuda said one day Rabbi Shizkiah and Rabbi Yesa were going along the road and they encountered a place called Gush Kalab. It was in a state of destruction. They sat adjacent to the cemetery. Rabbi Yesa had in his possession one portion of a ripped scroll of Torah, meaning he had in his hand a portion of a ripped scroll of the Torah with a column within it. As they were sitting, one grave quivered before them and cried, Whoa, the world is in distress as the Torah has been exiled here, or maybe the living have come to mock and to shame us with their Torah. Rabbi Shizkiah and Rabbi Yesa quivered. 269 Rabbi Shizkiah said to the grave, Who are you? He answered, I am dead. I was just awakened for the sake of the Torah scroll. Once the world was in distress and the living came here with the Torah scroll to awaken us, my associates and I hurried to the slum at Hebron. And when they joined the spirits of the righteous in the garden of Eden, it was found that the Torah. Scroll brought before us by the living was unfit, they were false to the name of the king because an extra vav was found in the Torah in the verse whatever parts the hoof and his cloven footed Vayikra 113 which was spelled with a redundant vav they said that since they were false to the name of the king as the Torah is the name of the king they would not return to them to let them know if their prayer was accepted they then dismissed me and my associates from the yeshiva 270 until one. Elder man who was among them went and brought the Torah scroll of Rabham Nanisab the elder and the son of Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Lazar who was buried with us was awakened he went and prayed in the garden of Eden for them and the world was healed and they allowed us to return to the yeshiva from the time they took Rabbi Lazar from the cemetery in Gush and placed him near his father in Moron there is no one who will awaken to rise before the slum of Hebron for we are afraid to do. So since the day when they dismissed me and my friends from the yeshiva now you have come to us with your Torah scroll therefore I am shaken up as I say who will hasten to notify these genuine righteous men slumbering in Hebron Rabbi Yesus slipped away and went off with that remnant of the Torah scroll Rabbi Shizkiah said heaven forbid the world is not in distress and we did not come for this reason 271 Rabbi Shizkiah and Rabbi Yesus left they said surely when there are no righteous men in the world the world will survive only by the merits of the deceased Rabbi Yesus said when the world needs rain why do people go to the deceased to pray does it not say about one who inquires of the dead that it is prohibited he replied you have not perceived the wing of the bird in Eden referring to the secret of Bina meaning you have not attained the level of Bina since the verse one who inquires of the dead literally means the dead denoting the world's evil doers from the idolatrous. Nations that are always dead as the wicked even during their lifetime are called dead but about Israel who are truly righteous Solomon said so I praise the dead that are already dead Kahila 42 those that have already died at a different time meaning they gave themselves for the Torah but not this time they have already died and now they are alive 272 furthermore when other nations come before their deceased they come with sorcery to awaken kinds of evil beings when Israel come to their deceased they come in great repentance before the Holy One
Neshama of my master because Nefesh remains in this world and only Neshama rises to the bundle of life he answers as we said fortunate is the share of the righteous men that everything is tied one to another. Nefesh with Ruash Ruash with Neshama and Neshama with the Holy One blessed be he the result is that Nefesh is tied to the bond of life as it is connected to Neshama which is the bundle of life 275 Rabbi Lazar said regarding that which the friends have said it is forbidden to. Exile a Torah scroll even to be taken from one synagogue to another and certainly into the street. If so, why do we take it out into the street? Rabbi Yehuda replied, So it will awaken them to seek mercy for the world. Rabbi Abba said that when the Shechinah went into exile, it also moved from place to place until she said, Oh, that I were in the wilderness in a lodging place of wayfaring men. Yermeon 91 year 2. At first, the Torah is exiled from one synagogue to another and later into the street. Afterwards, it is in the wilderness in a lodging place of wayfaring men. Rabbi Yehuda said, The Babylonians are reverent and do not pass the Torah scroll even from synagogue to synagogue and certainly not there into the street. 276. We have learned that Rabbi Shimon said to the friends in my day, There will not be a need for mankind to do this to bring out a Torah scroll into the street. Rabbi Yossi said to him, The righteous shield the world during their lifetime and even more so after their. Death as it is written for I will defend the city to save it for my own sake and for the sake of David my servant Yeshua 3735 Yet during the lifetime of David it was not expressed Rabbi Yehuda said why is this verse different saying for my own sake and for the sake of David my servant giving the two equal importance he answers the reason is that David merited to be joined to the holy chariot of the patriarchs as he is forth to them the secret of Malchut for this reason everything is one. Blessed is he forever and ever section 46 Tama Rabbi Yitzhak says that the holy name is both concealed and revealed that the Torah is both concealed and revealed and that every verse and portion of the Torah is both concealed and revealed there is always both a literal explanation and its mystery the rabbis talk about Tamar and Rabbi Abba wonders about the entrance of eyes spoken of in scripture Rabbi Shimon explains that it has to do with the door or entrance by which one can see God he interprets the story of Tamar as told in Beersheet and it is obvious that there are both literal and esoteric explanations Rabbi Abba says that the concealed matters of the Torah are given to saintly people while the revealed or obvious matters are given to the rest of the people 277 after the doings of the land of Egypt in which you dwell shall you not do Vayikra 183 Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion saying that men may declare the name of Hashem in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem Tehillim 10222 from there we learned that the holy name is both concealed and revealed the concealed is Yudhi Hei and the revealed is Adonai the Torah which is the holy name on high of Zeir and is concealed and revealed every verse in the Torah every portion of Torah is concealed and revealed meaning there is a literal explanation and its mystery 278 we have learned that Rabbi Yehuda said from the boldness of one righteous woman many good things came to the World who is she it is Tamar as it is written and set by the entrance of a name Lidai's Beersheet 3814 Rabbi Abba said this portion proves to us the Torah is both concealed and revealed and it contains revealed matters and hidden I have looked through the entire Torah and I have not found anywhere a place called the entrance of eyes this is because it is all concealed mysteries among mysteries 279 we have learned what did this pious woman contemplate that she did such a thing he answered she understood from being in the house of her father-in-law the ways of the Holy One blessed be he namely how he conducts this world with its human beings because she knew this the Holy One blessed be he set up this matter to happen through her this matter goes along the same line as we have learned Bachel was designated for David from the six days of creation to be the mother of King Solomon here too Tamar was designated for this from the creation of the world 280 and set by the entrance of a name he questions what is the entrance of a name he answers it is as it says as he sat by the tent door Beersheet 181 Hashem will pass over the door Shema 1223 and open to me the gates of righteousness Tehillim 11,819 and name lit eyes the eyes of the whole world look to this door which is by the way to Tim the Beersheet 3814 what is Tim the verse reads and the similitude had to me of Hashem does he behold the Midbar 128 so we explained that Tamar carried this out below flowers appeared and branches sprouted in the secret of the faith 281 but Judah still rules with El and is faithful with holy ones Hashia 121 when Judah saw her he thought her to be a harlot Beersheet 3815 as the verse states likewise the way of an adulterous woman Mishlei 3020 because she had covered her face Beersheet 3815 we have learned that she had covered her face meaning similar to what you say she eats and wipes her mouth Mishlei 3020 she torched the world with her flames and says I have done nothing wrong of it what is the reason it is because she had covered her face and no one knows her ways in order to save themselves from her and he turned to her by the way Beersheet 3816 to the way literally to make white join with red and said I pray you let me come into you Ibid we established that let me always means invitation 282 for he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law had Kala Ibid meaning the destruction had Kila of the world as translated into Aramaic which means that he did not know she was destroying the world as Kala is derived from Kila why did he not know because she welcomed him so as to receive from him she came there to be alleviate and bestow mercy upon the world another explanation for she was his daughter-in-law is literally bride had Kala as is written by bride had Kala with me from Lebanon Sher Hasherim 48 283 and she said what will you give me that you may come into me Beersheet 3816 now the bride needs jewels and he said I will send you a kid from the flock of it 17 this is like a king who had a son born to him from a maidservant who used to walk about the palace the king wanted to marry a lady from high nobility and bring her to the palace so she said who allowed this one in the king's palace the king said from now on I will expel the son of the maidservant from my palace 284 also here I will send you a kid from the flock we established what is meant by a kid. In you shall not boil a kid Shema 3426 it refers to the other side that nurses from Malchut before she is purified and all these stem from the firstborn of cattle therefore it is not written I will give but I will send meaning I will expel and send it away so it shall not be in my palace 285 and she said will you give me a pledge till you send it Beersheet 3817 these are the marks of a queen blessed by the king during her nuptials and he said what pledge shall I give you and she said your signet and your court and your staff of it 18 these are the heavenly bonds the jewels of the bride who is blessed by these three namely Netzach and Yezid everything is contained within these three the bride is blessed from this immediately he gave it her and came into her and she conceived by him of 285b and it came to pass about three months after of 24 he questions what is meant by three months he answers after a triple month the three months are she said and Typhoret as we have established here it is written about three months meaning as the fourth month began denoting Malchut to stir up the judgments in the world due to the sins of mankind and to nurture from the other side then it was told Judah saying Tamar your daughter-in-law has played the harlot of it so the bride is found on the other side it is written bring her out of it as the verse says and cast down from heaven to earth the beauty of Israel Elijah 21 and let her be burnt. Bear she 3824 with a flaming fire in exile 285c it is written when she was brought forth to be drawn into the exile she sent to her father-in-law saying by the man whose these are I am with child David 25 it is not written from whom these are but whose these are which means these items are proof of him by whom I am with child these were bridal ornaments and they had already become hers as earlier mentioned but only he gave them immediately and Judah acknowledged them and said she has been more righteous had Zedekah than I, but 26 assuredly she is righteous for this was brought about by that name for so is Malchut called what brought upon her this name he continued that I also from me as it is written for Hashem is righteous he loves righteousness had Zedekah the upright shall behold his face tail in 117 this is because Zedekah is just as had Zedekah and hey and she received that name from me she inherited it from me and all this is come from me 286 Rabbi. Yussi said what is the reason that in one place it states her father-in-law and in another place it states in Judah he replied everything is intertwined her father-in-law refers to a subliminal meaning 287 Rabbi Lazar said we have established this portion in esoteric terms in several ways when we look into these words we hear
Matter of Torah in which the holy subliminal name is not impressed which is both concealed and revealed the concealed matters of Torah are bequeathed to the highly saintly ones and the revealed matters are revealed to the rest of the people in relation to this it is written that men may declare the name of Hashem in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem Tehillim 10222 in Zion refers to the temple where it is permitted to pronounce the holy name Yudhi Hei Vah in the proper fashion however Outside the temple only the appellation can be mentioned namely Adonai but not the way it is written everything is concealed and yet revealed as the name Yudhi Hei which one is forbidden to mention is concealed but the name Adonai which we mention is revealed all matters are in this way we have learned that anyone who deducts one letter from the Torah or adds one letter is like one who is false to the supernal holy name of the king section 47 the practices of Egypt Rabbi Yitzhak talks about the idolatry of the Egyptians and Rabbi Shia says that in the future God will cleanse his land from all the idolatrous nations 289 Rabbi Yitzhak said it was the practices of Egypt that they used to worship the maidservant meaning the clipper called maidservant as we have explained the practice of Canaan was to worship that place called the captive that was in the dungeon Shemot 1229 therefore it is written curse be Canaan a servant of servants shall he be to his brethren Beersheet 925 for this reason they all falsified in matters of holiness and everything practiced idolatry for this reason it is written after the doings of the land of Egypt in which you dwell Vayikra 183 Rabbi Yehuda said they created evil judgments that will rule over the land namely Malchut as the verse says that your land be not defiled Devarim 2123 and and the land is defiled Vayikra 1827 290 after the doings of the land of Egypt Rabbi Shia said that it might take hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it. 3813 we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he in the future will cleanse his land Malchut from all the defilement of the idolatrous nations that defiled it just as one takes hold of a garment and shakes out from it all the filth referring to all the wicked buried in the Holy Land so he will shake out the land in order to cast them out and in order to purify the Holy Land denoting Malchut from it. Other side it is as if it was sustaining the other ministers of the nations from whom it received defilement in order to guide them and he will cleanse it and remove the ministers of the nations to the outside section 48 but when you entered you defiled my land Rabbi Yehuda tells us how fortunate people are who live in the holy land and how they will deserve later to live in the higher holy land he speaks about the consequences of dying in the holy land and dying. Elsewhere 291 Rabbi Shimon was cleansing the marketplaces of Tiberias he dug out all the dead that were there and cleansed the land we have learned that it is written but when you entered you defiled my land Yermia 27 Rabbi Yehuda said fortunate is the portion of he who deserves during his lifetime to make his dwelling in the holy land all who merit it will cause the dew of the heaven above to continue to descend upon the earth so all who deserve the holy land in this lifetime will later. Deserve the higher holy land Malchut 292 about all those who did not merit during their lifetime to be in the holy land and are brought there later to be buried it is written and made my heritage an abomination but his spirit expired under another strange dominion and his body came under the dominion of the holy land so he made so to speak the sacred profane and the profane sacred those who deserve that their souls expire in the holy land will have their sins forgiven and will merit to be bound under the wings of the Shechina as it is written and will forgive his land Devarim 3243 moreover if he merits during his lifetime to be in the holy land he will merit to have drawn upon him consistently the holy spirit those who dwell under another dominion meaning outside the holy land will have drawn upon them a foreign spirit 293 we have learned that when Rav Hamanis the elder ascended there the holy land he had with him 12 members of his yeshiva students he said to them if I go this way it is not for my own sake that I do so but to return the pledge to its owner we have learned that all those who did not merit this to live in the holy land during their lifetime must return the master's pledge to another namely the soul that was given to them to the other side 294 Rabbi Yitzhak said because of this whoever brings into the land any of the evil beings or other domains defiles the land woe is to him woe to his soul as the holy land will not receive him. After that of him it is written the sinners will be consumed out of the earth Tehillim 10435 in this world and the world to come then the wicked will be no more of it during the resurrection of the dead then bless you Hashem my soul hail you Yahweh section 49 the holy one bless be he the Torah and Yisrael Rabbi Abba says that because of the holy covenant Yisrael are fortunate that God has given them truthful statutes and planted them with the tree of life and Place the Shechinah among them. Rabbi Shimon says there are three levels intertwined with each other, meaning God, the Torah, and Israel. Each of them has a hidden level and a revealed level. All who are circumcised are given the revealed words of the Torah and are given the strict commandments, and only those who are of higher levels are given the supernal meanings of the Torah. 295. You shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk in them. Vayikra 184. Rabbi Abba said, Fortunate is the lot of Israel that the Holy One, blessed be he, desires them above all the idolatrous nations as a result of his love for them. He gave them truthful statutes planted with them, the tree of life, Zeir and and caused the Shechinah to dwell in their midst. What is the reason? It is because Israel are marked with the holy impression in their flesh and so are recognized as his and members of his temple. 296. Because of this, all those that are not marked in their flesh with the holy impression meaning. They are not circumcised are not his people they are not of the Holy One blessed be he it is apparent that they stem from the direction of impurity and it is prohibited to fraternize with them and speak with them regarding matters of the Holy One blessed be he it is prohibited to relate words of Torah to them as the entire Torah is the name of the Holy One blessed be he every letter of the Torah is connected with the Holy Name therefore anyone whose flesh is not marked with the Holy Impression must not be informed of Torah words and one must not study with him 297 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying this is the ordinance of the Pesach no stranger shall eat of it Shemot 1243 it is also written but every man servant of it 44 and a foreign and hired servant shall not eat of it 45 if something like eating the Pascal lamb is forbidden to the uncircumcised just because it hints at a holy matter meaning because Hashem will pass over the door of it 23 then how much more should the Torah which is the Holy of Holies the sublime name of the Holy One blessed be he be forbidden to them 298 Rabbi Lazar asked of Rabbi Shimon his father we learn that it is prohibited to teach Torah to idolaters and very beautifully did the Babylonian scholars explain that which is written he has not dealt so with any other nation Tehillim 14720 but one could ask since it is written he declares his word to Jacob Ibn 19 so why write again his statutes and his judgments logistics to Israel it is a redundant expression he replied Lazar come and see how fortunate are Israel within whom the supernal portion was planted by the Holy One blessed be he as it is written for I give you a good doctrine Mishlei 42 to you and not to the idolatrous nations 299 because she is supernal precious and hidden his very name in the entire Torah is both concealed and revealed as it contains the esoteric and literal meaning in the secret of his name. Hence Israel find themselves on two levels meaning concealed and revealed as we learn there are three levels intertwined with each other meaning the Holy One blessed be he the Torah and Israel each of them has one level above another meaning hidden and revealed one as the Holy One blessed be he is a level upon level concealed and revealed the Torah is also concealed and revealing Israel too is a level upon a level this is what is written he declares his word to Jacob his statutes and his judgments logistics to Israel here are two levels Jacob and Israel one revealing the level of Jacob and one concealed the level of Israel 300 he questions what does the verse mean in the words his statutes and his judgments logistics to Israel he answered everyone who is circumcised and marked with the holy name is passed on with the revealed words of the Torah he is informed generally of basic matters in brief and has placed upon him the very strict care of it commandments of the Torah and not more until he is elevated to another level this is what the verse says he declares his word to Jacob but his statutes and his judgments logistics to Israel is a higher level as it is written your name shall not be called any more Jacob Beersheet 3510 thus Israel is more esteemed than Jacob therefore it is written his statutes and his judgments logistics to Israel these are the secrets of the Torah the statutes of the Torah and the hidden parts
The ordinances of heaven and earth here may 3325 302 come and see it is written and this is the Torah which Moses set before the children of Israel to 444 before the children of Israel he said it but not before the other nations so for this reason speak to the children of Israel you shall say to the children of Israel Vayikra 202 and it is so in all places only to Israel may the rest the fathers of the world Hillel and Shammai who spoke so to Ankalos but they did not reveal. Torah topics to him until he was circumcised 303 come and see the first subject of the Torah we give to children is the alphabet this is a matter that mankind cannot comprehend nor can it rise in their minds not to mention saying it with their mouths even supernal angels and the most sublime cannot comprehend it as these matters are the mysteries of the holy name there are 1405000 worlds dependent upon the stroke of the Allah meaning the stroke of the upper yud of the Allah and 72 holy names are engraved in the impressed letters in them the high and low beings heaven earth and the seat of glory of the king are hanging from one side to the other side meaning from the upper stroke to the lower stroke of the expansion of the Allah they sustain all the worlds and are the supports of the upper and lower beings within the secret of wisdom 304 concealed paths the secret of the 32 paths of Chakma and deep rivers the secret of the Sfirat of Bani, 10 sayings the secret of the Ten Sfirat of that that unifies Chakma and Bina denoting the secret of Chakma Bina and that of Zeir and Bina all come out and flow into the worlds from the lower tip underneath the Allah for the lower Yud of the Allah is the secret of male and female as mentioned whose lights flow through the lower tip of the Yud therefore it is collective as all are collected within the Allah from here on begin the lights of Allah to spread to the bed one cannot keep track of the wisdom that is engraved. Here 305 for this reason the Torah the secret of Zeir and Bina is the sustenance of everything and the faith of all to bind the bond of faith namely Malchut one with another properly he who is circumcised is bound with that bond of faith but he who is not circumcised is not bound with it as it is written no stranger shall eat of the holy thing Vayikra 2210 and for no uncircumcised man shall eat of it Shema 1248 the spirit of defilement is stirred up from him and it comes to intermingle. With holiness blessed is the merciful one who set apart his children Israel who are marked with the holy impression from them and their filth about them it is written and I had planted you a noble vine an entirely right seed your may 221 for this reason it is written you will show truth to Jacob Misha 720 and to no one else a true Torah to a true seed Rabbi Lazar approached and kissed him on his hands 306 Rabbi Shizkiah said it is written for Hashem will not abandon his people for his great name's sake I Samuel 1222 Hashem will not abandon his people for what reason for his great name's sake as everything is interconnected with what are Israel connected to the holy one blessed be he it is with that holy impression marked in their flesh for this reason Hashem will not abandon his people and why it is due to his great name marked on them 307 we have learned that the Torah is called covenant the holy one blessed be he is called covenant and this holy mark Meaning circumcision is called covenant so they are all intertwined and not apart one from another Rabbi Yesus said to him that Torah and Israel are called covenant and that is fine but how do we know that the Holy One blessed be he is called covenant he replied because it is written and he remembered for them his covenant Tehillim 10645 and it is well known that the secret of it is Yesus as we have learned 308 and keep my ordinances Vayikra 184 my ordinances are the customs of it. King namely Zeir and my judgments logistics as if it are the decrees of the Torah Rabbi Yehuda said all these customs stem from the place called righteousness denoting Malchut they are called my ordinances and are royal decrees wherever something is called justice it refers to royal laws of the Holy King the Holy One blessed be he the King to whom all peace is being the Holy King in a place where two portions are held one with another meaning judgment and mercy therefore it is written. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Tehillim 8915 and they are judgment and mercy for this reason they are ordinance and judgment of this it is written his statutes and his judgments logistics to Israel. Tehillim 14719 to Israel but not to any other nation. 309 it is later written he has not dealt so with any other nation. Ibn 20 we have learned that even though he was circumcised if he does not perform the commandments of the Torah he is to be considered. An idolater throughout it is thus forbidden to teach him the words of the Torah we have learned that you will make me an altar of stone. Shema 2022 the circumcision is considered literally an altar of stone meaning it softens his stone heart but for he who is circumcised yet does not observe the commandments of the Torah the hardness of his heart remains as is and the filth does not cease from him for this reason the circumcision did not succeed nor did it help him therefore it is written. For if you lift up your tool upon it you have defiled it, but this means that even though you raise your sword upon it, meaning if one is circumcised yet does not observe the commandments you have defiled it, the circumcision becomes defiled and is to no avail thus it is prohibited to teach him for a 310 for this reason he has not dealt so with any other nation nation is unspecified including also him that is circumcised yet does not perform the precepts and as for his ordinances. They have not known them forever and ever another interpretation meaning according to the literal meaning of the Torah and the precepts we do not hand to them and surely not the esoteric explanations of Torah and the ordinances of Torah it is written for Hashem's portion is his people Jacob is a lot of his inheritance Devarim 329 and happy is that people that is in such a case happy is that people whose Elohim is Hashem Tehillim 14415 section 51 for Kizwi. Learn what the Mishnah says about the ways of the lights and about the four keys of different colors that were made for the directions of the world. Many supernal secrets are spoken of with the number four being the link between them. We read of the sixty warriors who are led by a strong youth and of the swords they wield. 311 We have learned in the Mishnah about the ways of the lights. Four keys were made for the directions of the world and there is one key for the four directions in there. Corners there are four directions for each direction and they are engraved with one color in the color are mixed blue, purple, scarlet, white and red. One blends into the color of the other and its color meaning that of its neighbor is found in it. 312 Four heads rose together joined as one form. One head arose from the washing where it was washed. Two gazelles of equal size rose from that washing as it is written like a flock of shorn also measured ewes which came up from the washing shirt. Hashirim 42 within their hair is the appearance of a precious stone of four colors 313 four wings cover the body with small hands beneath their wings each engraved with five they fly high above the chamber that is beautiful in form and handsome in appearance 314 one strong youth came out with a sharp sword that turns into males and females who carry the measuring of an ephah between heaven and earth sometimes carrying it throughout the world all are measured by it as is written to just ephah vayikra 1936 315 there is a crystal mirror on one sword on the top of that sword glistens the color of red in the midst of the crystal from the two sides very deep impressions appear in that sword one strong warrior youth standing in 13 worlds is girded with that sword to do vengeance with him are 60 other mighty warriors girded with swords all trained to be victorious in war this is the meaning of the verse gird your sword upon your thigh almighty warrior your glory and your Majesty Tehillim 454 it is also written all girt with swords and expert in worship Hashirim 38 they turn forward in several ways and no one knows them except one worm that swims among the fish of the sea all rocks that pass over them break up 316 at that time the sound that is emitted from those girded with swords namely the 60 warriors breaks 18 large mountains no one lends his ear everyone is blind and has a closed heart there is no one to see that this construction is about to shatter when unseemly deeds are done and people turn away from the correct way the right is removed denoting the illumination of Shesedim and the left rules without the right then there is nakedness woe to the wicked who bring it upon the world as there is no blessing above before these evil doers are vanquished here below this is what the verse says and the wicked will be no more bless you Hashem oh my soul hail you Yah. Tehillim 10435 section 52 an apple tree and arose Rabbi Shia says that the congregation of Israel praises God with the image of an apple from Rabbi Shimon we learn that is because it includes color fragrance and taste and because the apple is a cure all he says that God praises the congregation of Israel with the image of a rose because of the fragrance of their good deeds 317 the nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover Vayikra 187 Rabbi
With color fragrance and with taste just as the apple is a cure all also the Holy One blessed be he is a cure for all just as apple appears in colors, as we established it has white red green, so does the Holy One blessed be he appear in supernal colors, namely Chisid, Bura and Typharet that are the secret of white red and green as the apple tree has a fine fragrance more than other trees so about the Holy One blessed be he it is written and his fragrance like the Lebanon Hashia 147 just. As the apple's taste is sweet so also is the Holy One's blessed be he as it is written his mouth is most sweet sure Hashirim 516 319 and the Holy One blessed be he praises the congregation of Israel like a rose and we have already explained why he praised her as a rose Rabbi Yehuda said when righteous men increase in the world the congregation of Israel denoting Malchud raises good fragrance being the secret of the illumination of Chakma that shines from below upward as fragrance and is blessed with Chesedim from the Holy King and her face shines but when the wicked increase in the world it is as if the congregation of Israel does not raise up the good fragrance and taste from the bitter feeding of the other side then it is written and cast down from heaven to earth each 21 meaning the coupling of Zeir and been called heaven and Malchud called earth has been disbanded and her face is dark 320 Rabbi Yossi said when righteous men multiply in the world it is written. His left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me. Sure, Hashirim 26, meaning the right and the left join in unity one with another. When the wicked multiply in the world, it is written, He has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. Egypt 23, and the left rules without the right, and all judgments are poured down from IT. Rabbi Shizkiah said, We understand it from here where it is written, and a whisperer separates close friends. Mishlei 1628, meaning that the king separates from the queen because of the evil man called whisperer. This is the meaning of the verse, The nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover, meaning you should not cause the uncovering of judgments above to the nurturing of the other side through which a split in the holy union will occur. Section 53 that his mother taught him. Rabbi Shimon tells his son that as long as the children of Israel obey the will of God, he stays with them. But when they disobey him, he leaves them. Yet still, the Shechinah stays with them, and thus she is separated from God because she produced Solomon, her wise son. There was great rejoicing when Solomon attained wisdom and recited Shir Hashirim. Then God made his residence with her. At that time, all the children of Israel merited the higher levels, and there was joy above and below. 321 Rabbi Lazar was sitting before his father. He said to him, If there is an advocate in the world, he goes to the queen. If there is an accuser, he goes to the queen, but not higher than Malchud. He asks why I asked this. So he replied, It is similar to a king who had a son with the queen. As long as the son carries through the wishes of the king, the king will maintain his residence with the queen. If the son does not obey the king, the king removes his residence from the queen. 322 It is so with the Holy One, blessed be he, and the congregation of Israel. As long as Israel obey the will of the Holy One, blessed be he. Installs his residence with the congregation of Israel when Israel disobeys his will, the Holy One blessed be he no longer places his residence with the congregation of Israel. Why it is because Israel are firstborn of the Holy One blessed be he as it is written, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Shema 422 The congregation of Israel is the mother of Israel as it is written, and do not forsake the Torah of your mother. Mishlei 18 323 Come and see as long as Israel are distant from the king's palace, so to speak, the queen distances herself with them from the king. What is the reason? It is because the queen did not whip that son before, so he should walk in the right path, for the king never strikes his son but leaves it to the hand of the queen. She should manage the palace, punish her son, and guide him in the truthful way before the king. 324 The secret of the matter it is written, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Mishlei 311 His mother is. Batshuva namely the secret of Malchud called Batshuva the daughter of seven we have learned that it is written the Proverbs of Solomon a wise son makes a glad father but a foolish son is the grief of his mother Mishlei 101 assuredly he is the grief of his mother see what is written a wise son makes a glad father meaning so long as the son walks in a straight path and he is wise he makes a glad father this refers to the holy king above meaning Zeir and as it is written makes a glad father without specifying which points to the father above and if the son is on a stumbling matter it is written but a foolish son is the grief of his mother for sure it is the grief of his mother referring to the congregation of Israel denoting Malchud the secret of the matter is the words and for your transgressions was your mother put away Shea 501 who is Malchud 325 come and see there was not such joy before the holy one blessed be he is on the day that Solomon attained Wisdom and recited Shir Hashirim then the face of the queen shown the king placed his residence with her as it is written and Solomon's wisdom excelled I Melashim 510 what is meant by excelled it means that the beauty of the queen increased and her levels grew above all other levels she had ever had because the king put his residence with her and why is all that because she produced this wise son 326 when she produced Solomon meaning she inspired him with her wisdom she produced all Israel all merited the high levels as Solomon as the holy one blessed be he rejoiced with them and they with him on the day that Solomon constructed the temple below the queen prepared the house for the king they placed their residence together her face glowed with total joy then there was joy for all above and below why so because it is written that his mother taught him as she guided according to the king's wishes 327 when the son as I said does not conduct himself to the Satisfaction of the king then there is nakedness everywhere causing the revelation of judgments in Malchut the secret of the uncovering of nakedness nakedness on all sides both right and left for the king now moves apart from the queen the queen is distanced from his palace so there is nakedness everywhere is this not nakedness if the king is not with the queen and the queen without the king therefore it is written the nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover she is your mother Vayikra 187 surely denoting Malchut and she dwells with you therefore you shall not uncover her nakedness section 54 he shall mightily roar because of his habitation Rabbi Shimon reveals the secret that when the lower hay is withheld from receiving blessings the upper hay withholds blessings from every level this happens when Zer and Ben and Mukba are separated and the source of the spring of blessings stops therefore from the day that the temple was destroyed there has not been a day without curses or a day when blessings are found in the world when people do not repent the day eventually comes that the rulers of other nations are given permission to rule over Israel and the upper hay powers its blessings to the other side 328 Rabbi Shimon clasped his hands and wept he cried woe if I do speak and reveal the secret woe if I do not and the friends lose this matter Ahashim Elohim will you make a full end of the remnant of Israel Yashiskel 1113 what is meant by Ah and what is meant by will you make a full end he answers the secret of the matter is that when the lower hay of Yud Hay Bav which is Malchut is expelled from the chamber of the king the other upper hay of Yud Hay Bav denoting Bina withholds the blessings for its sake then is written Ah hey, hey, will you make a full end because the impairment reaches both Heis of Yud Hay Bav and Malchut because when the lower hay is Withheld from receiving blessings, the other upper hay withholds blessings from all not spreading even to Zeir and What is the reason? It is because blessings are to be found only where there are male and a female, and since Malchut is expelled from Zeir and there are no blessings in Zeir and because of his being without the female 329, so it is written Hashem shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation, he shall mightily roar because of his habitation, your 2530 because of his actual habitation, namely the queen who is gone, it is surely so that he roars. What does he say thus? Woe that I have demolished my house, my house means the union with the queen. This is surely the meaning of the nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother. Shall you not uncover from all directions? There is nakedness, namely blemish, for when Malchut your mother parted due to the sin of the lower beings, then the lights departed from Zeir and as well as Zeir. And then your father was damaged then I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering Yeshua 503 meaning Zeir and referred to as heaven as the place of the reception of blessings of the spring sources which are in Bino which were flowing and watering Zeir and properly withdrew and stopped 330 we have learned that when the king parted from the queen and there were no blessings Zeir and is called Wo Vav meaning woe is to me why is it called Wo Iti? I
Hoya not by what is their explanation 332 he said to him when things depend upon repentance and people do not repent the sublime hey of yud hey bav hey being bina takes and attracts the bav and the yud to itself as they are not repenting it then becomes a combination of hey bav yud called hoy meaning hoy when the king zeir and departs higher and higher to bina people cry but no one pays attention sometimes that supernal concealed name hiya denoting kita raises the bav zeir and the yud being the head of yud to itself because once prayer is not accepted and it becomes the combination hoy alat bav yud then it is called hoy as the alat that is hiya brings up to it the bav and the yud then repentance is not available so the hey departs from these letters as it is no longer dependent on repentance which is the secret of bina called hey 333 surely this is when sins in the world multiply excessively at first repentance was available but they did not. Want to repent and the hay takes off being bina the secret of repentance and the alat being kita raises the bavya to it so it is now called oi when the temple was destroyed and repentance was gone then they cried and said woe to us for the day declines your maya 64 what is meant by for the day declines it refers to the supernal day meaning bina called repentance which departed and is not available this is that specific day that extends its right hand to welcome evil doers it has departed from all and is not available therefore they say oi instead of oi for the shadows of the evening are lengthened but meaning permission has been granted to the rulers over other nations to rule over Israel 334 we have learned that the bav denoting zeir and been ascended high up to kita being the secret of alat as mentioned the sanctuary was consumed the people exiled the queen expelled and the temple was in ruins later as the bav returned to its position it took notice of it. Temple and found it in ruins. It saw the queen, but she moved far away. It saw its sanctuary, but it was consumed by fire. And it looked for the people, but they were exiled. It saw the blessings of the deep streams from Bina that were flowing, but now ceased. Then it is written, and on that day did Adonai Elohim say, "It called to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth." Yeshayahu 2212. Then I clothe the heavens, Zeir and Pen, with blackness. 335. Then the Bab and Yud draw one towards the other. The Yud being the head of Yud is drawn to the Bab, Zeir and Pen, and separates from Malchut. The upper hay of Yud hay Bab hay being Bina pours its sources to the other side, and no blessings abound because no male and female are present. Zeir and Pen and Malchut, and they do not dwell together. Then he shall mightily roar because of his habitation. Yermayah 2530. Malchut. Rabbi Shimon what and Rabbi Lazer what Rabbi Lazer said. There is a lament placed in my heart on one side. And a joy in my heart on the other, as I have heard words that I never heard until now. How blessed is my lot. Section 55. The nakedness of your father's wife shall you not uncover. Rabbi Shimon says that there is concealed knowledge in the words of the title verse. He says that your father's wife is the wife of Zerenpin, who is in exile with Israel and who is far from him. When she is called your mother, she is with the king, and the command is to be careful not to separate them through sinning. Even when she is in exile, a man must be careful not to alienate her so that she will not cease to stand guard over him. 336. The nakedness of your father's wife shall you not uncover. Vayikra 188. He questions who is your father's wife. Rabbi Shimon said, We learned that all the words of the Torah are concealed yet revealed, just as the holy name is concealed yet revealed. It is written, Yud Hey and Red Adonai, the Torah, which is the holy name, is also concealed. And revealed here in this verse all is openly manifest meaning according to the literal meaning the verse is speaking about the wife of the father but there is an IT concealed knowledge as we have established 337 this verse is such your father's wife we have learned as long as the queen is with the king and she nurtures you from her abundance she is called your mother now in exile she has been exiled with you and is far from the king so she is called your father's wife she is the wife of the holy king Zeir and as she was never set free with the divorce she is surely his wife as it is written thus says Hashem where is the bill of your mother's divorcement with which I have put her away Yeshayah 501 surely she is the wife of the king even though she was exiled 338 therefore he commanded about her twice once when she sits united with the king and is called your mother as written the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover meaning do not cause them to separate from each other or her to be sent away because of your sin as it is written and for your transgressions was your mother put away but the other was when she is in exile with you exiled from the palace of the king called then wife of the king even though she was distanced from the king do not cause her to turn away from you and thus your enemies will gain control over you and she will not guard you in exile this is what is written the nakedness of your father's wife shall you not uncover what is the reason because she is your father's nakedness although she was distanced from the king the king's supervision is still upon her constantly so one needs to watch himself more carefully in relation to her so as not to sin against her section 56 that he see no unclean thing in you rabbi shimon begins speaking about the shechina and how she protects israel especially when they are in exile from the other nations only when they sin is her power to Protect them weakened we learned that the children of Israel are detained in exile for three reasons because they treated the Shechina with contempt because they turned their faces away from her and because they defiled themselves 339 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying for Hashem your Elohim walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you Debarim 2315 for Hashem your Elohim refers to the Shechina prevailing in Israel all the more so in exile to shield them always from all sides and from all other nations so that they cannot destroy Israel 340 we have learned that the foes of Israel are not capable of harming them until Israel weakened the power of the Shechina before the appointed ministers of other nations only then can the enemies of Israel overcome them rule them and decree many harsh decrees regarding them when Israel return towards her with repentance the Shechina smashes the power and strength of these appointed chiefs breaks the power and strength of the enemies of Israel and takes revenge against them all 341 therefore shall your camp be holy but one must see that he does not become defiled through his sins and through transgressing the words of Torah if he does so they defile him as it is written that you should be defiled had Benet Medim by them Vayikra 1143 the word Benet Medim is written without Allah pointing to an extra measure of defilement we have learned that there are 248 limbs in the body and all become defiled when one becomes defiled meaning as soon as he wants to become defiled it immediately acquires defilement therefore shall your camp be holy what is meant by your camp this refers to the limbs of the body that he see no unclean lit nakedness of thing in you Devarim 2315 what is a nakedness of thing this is an illusion that you must not bring a strange nakedness to come to this thing for it is strange to melt you call thing as we have established if you do so he will surely turn away from you, but therefore your father's wife shall you not uncover Vayikra 188. What is the reason it is because it is written it is your father's nakedness of it as we have established 342. We have learned that Israel are detained in exile for three things for treating the Shechina with contempt in exile for turning away their face from the Shechina as it is written for they have turned their back to me and not their face. Yermaya 227 finally for defiling themselves before the Shechina without considering that the Shechina is with them in exile. We explained them all in our mission. Section 57 A man who had a mark on his face. The rabbis encounter a man with a mark on his face and they deduce that he has transgressed the Torah through some kind of incest. The man confesses that he did lay with his sister after which he intervened in an argument and was struck on the forehead. A doctor saved him by giving him spiritual healing and the doctor was Rabbi Samlai because the man repents Rabbi Abba cures his mark on the spot the man promises to toil day and night in the Torah from now on another time we hear that same man lecturing on the Torah saying that evil people are rewarded in this world but that God will obliterate them in the world to come where they will be dust under the feet of the righteous anyone who transgresses the Torah is marked by the Torah so that the eyes of Hashem recognize him and warn others to stay away from him. 343 Rabbi Abba was going to Cappadocia with Rabbi Yussi as they were going they saw a man approaching there who had a mark on his face Rabbi Abba said let us leave this road as this man's face testifies that he transgressed the rules of incest in the Torah therefore his face is marked Rabbi Yussi replied if he had this mark since childhood what incest would be then with him he replied I see his face testifying that he transgressed on a sexual misconduct mentioned in the Torah 344 Rabbi Abba. Called him, he said to him, Tell me this, what is this mark on your face? He replied
have removed the impression on your face but I will announce upon you and your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Yeshayah 67 he told him to repeat this three times he said it three times and the mark disappeared. 346 Rabbi Abba said surely your master wished to remove the mark from you as you were in a state of repentance. He said to him I vow from this day onward to toil and tour day and night. He said to him what is your name? He replied Elazar he responded Elazar lit God. Help surely the name has some bearing as your Elohim helped you and was with you. Rabbi Abba sent him off and blessed him. 347 another time Rabbi Abba went to Rabbi Shimon he entered his city and found that very same person who previously had the mark sitting and lecturing a brutish man does not know nor does a fool understand this. Tehillim 927 a brutish man does not know look how foolish people are for they do not pay attention no nor examine in order to know the ways of the Holy One. Blessed be he for what purpose they are in the world what blocks them from perceiving their own stupidity it must be due to their not toiling in the Torah for if these people would toil in Torah they would comprehend the ways of the Holy One blessed be he 348 nor does a fool understand this hebzot meaning they do not look into nor know the practices of zot meaning malchut refer to as zot in the world even though the Holy One blessed be he judges the world with his judgments and people see the judgments of zot they come upon the righteous people and do not affect the guilty evildoers who transgress the words of Torah as it is written when the wicked spring like grass if it ate they inherit this world in all aspects and harsh penalties do not affect them yet people do not know why unless King David revealed this at the end of the verse they would not know as it is said that they shall be destroyed forever but he pays them reward for their good deeds in this world in order to obliterate them from the world to come they will be their dust under the feet of the righteous as it is written and you shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet Malachi 321 349 furthermore he began to say and my leanness rising up against me bears witness to my face of 168 he questions what is the verse speaking about he answers fortunate is a man who toils in Torah in order to recognize the ways of the Holy One blessed be he for whoever toils in the Torah it is as if he deals in his actual name just as the name of the Holy One blessed be he creates laws in the world so does the Torah come and see one who infringes with matters of Torah the Torah rises and then descends to make impressions on the face of that person in order that those on high and those below see him all send their curses upon his head and this is the essence of the verse and my leanness rising up against me bears witness to my face meaning the marks the Torah made in his face 350 we have learned that all these eyes of Hashem the angels of providence go and roam throughout the world to learn of the actions of men they raise their eyes and all look at the face of that person see him and open their mouths woe 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 to him in this world and woe to him in the world to come remove yourselves from around him as his face testifies that the spirit of defilement rests upon him this is the essence of the verse bears witness to my face as the leanness testifies to his face all these days that mark testifies on his face if he begets a son he draws upon him the spirit of defilement such are the evil doers of the world insolent people whose master allows them to stay in this world in order to vanquish them in the world to come 351 we have learned that the righteous who toils in Torah day and night the holy one blessed be he draws upon him a thread of grace which is marked on his face from that mark both those on high and those Below have fear likewise whoever violates the words of Torah a spirit of defilement is drawn upon him which is marked on his face and causes those high and low to flee from before him they all proclaim leave the vicinity of he who violated the Torah and the commandments of his master woe to him and to his soul and this person draws the spirit of defilement that is with him and transmits it to his son in such a man the Holy One blessed be he has no part and he spares him in order to destroy him. In the world to come 352 Rabbi Abba said to him you have spoken well where did you acquire this he replied I studied this I also learned that this evil inheritance of the spirit of defilement is acquired by all his children if they do not turn to penance as nothing can stand in the way before repentance so have I learned this cure namely repentance was given me once upon a time when my face was marked one day I was walking and met one meritorious person and through him was the mark removed. From my face he asked me my name I replied Elazar he announced me to be a different Elazar Rabbi Abba said to him blessed is the merciful one that I have met you and deserve to see you accomplishing this blessed is your share in this world and the world to come it was I who met you section 58 Betcheba the formerly marked man Elazar tells Rabbi Abba of a time when a passerby told him that his red cow is called Bathsheba mother of Solomon as long as he merits forgiveness Rabbi Abba explains to him that it was because everything referring to the cow is in sevens and all pertain to sacrifice and cleansing 353 this man Elazar prostrated himself before him he brought him home prepared three measures of bread and a three-year-old calf after eating the man said to him Rabbi tell me one thing I had a red cow the mother of this calf whose flesh we are eating one day before she became pregnant and gave birth I followed her to her pasture in the desert as I let her a man came by and asked me for the name of the cow I replied that from the day she was born I never called her by name he said to me Bethsheba mother of Solomon is she called if you merit forgiveness for your sins when I turned around I saw him no more I laughed at this thing 354 now that I have merited Torah I have been rushed up again about that matter from the day Rabbi Samlai departed from here there was no one who could shed light on Torah as he I fear to state words of Torah that I have not learned the thing that man told me I have realized it to be a matter of wisdom but I do not understand it he replied it surely is a matter of wisdom being a supernal hint above and below 355 come and see she the red cow is actually called Bethsheba according to the secret of wisdom denoting Malchut named cow from her left aspect as a male is called an ox and the female a cow she is red due to Gura that is why everything referring to her is in sevens for in the chapter. There is mention of cow seven times also seven burning seven sprinkle seven washing seven unclean seven clean and seven priests with Moses and Aaron included in the count of seven they are also called priests as it is written in the chapter and Hashem spoke to Moses and Aaron Bimidbar 192 that man that spoke of Bechabalit daughter of seven spoke very well all this pertains to the secret of wisdom 356 he said to him blessed is the merciful one that I was able to hear this thing. Blessed is he who offered me first the greeting of peace in order to merit this as it is written peace peace both for far and near says Hashem Yeshayah 5719 when I was far off the Holy One blessed be he greeted me first in peace meaning he invited me to be near Rabbi Abba announced about him peace be both to you and peace to your house and peace to all that you have Ashmuel 256 section 59 two female spirits we learned that after Cain killed Abel Adam lived apart. From his wife for 130 years not wanting to produce more children that would be destroyed female spirits used to couple with him at that time and they produced demons or plagues Cain had been born from the filth of the serpent and from that line all the evil doers of the world have come for this reason all spirits and demons in the world are partly of people below and partly of angels 357 you shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister Vayikra 1812 Rabbi she opened it. Discussion saying and if a man shall take his sister his father's daughter or his mother's daughter and see her nakedness Vayikra 2017 we have learned that Adam lived apart from his wife for 130 years and did not beget children since Adam did not want to copulate with his wife after Cain slew Abel Rabbi you see taught that from the time death was decreed for him and all mankind he has said why should I beget children that will be destroyed he immediately separated from his wife 358 to Female spirits used to come and couple with him and they gave birth they gave birth to demons called the plagues of mankind they would fly to people and rest at their doors wells and restrooms therefore all demons flee and distance themselves from people who have on their doorposts the holy name Shaday of the supernal Sphiroth this is the essence of the verse nor shall any plague come near your dwelling Tehillim 9110 what is meant by nor shall any plague come near it is a mentioned plagues. Of people 359 we have learned that when Adam descended with the supernal image of holy form and those on high and below saw him they approached him and crowned him ruler over this world later when the serpent came upon Eve it injected its filth in her following this she gave birth to Cain she delivered Cain from the filth of the serpent from that genealogy where the subsequent generations of the world's evil doers and the habitations of demons and spirits come from there and decide for this. Reason all spirits and demons in the world are partly of people below and partly of the angels on high as
Those below therefore it is written the sons of Elohim saw that the daughters of men were fair. Beersheet 62 All were going astray after them. There was one male who was born to the spirit from the aspect of Cain and he was named Tubal Cain. A female was born with him. People were going astray after her and she was called Nama from her came other spirits and demons. They were hovering in the air revealing matters to the others who were below in the world. 361 This Tubal Cain introduced weaponry to the world as he sharpened all earthenware copper and iron while attached to her aspect this Nama used to be in a state of great commotion she still lives dwelling among the roars of the great sea she comes out sports with people warms herself by them in a man's dream by his lust and attaches herself to him she takes from him that passion but not more from that lust she becomes pregnant and produces many species of demon in the world 362 these children namely demons and spirits that she bore to humans are seen in dreams to human females who conceive from them and bear spirits they go to the primordial lilith and she rears them she goes out into the world seeks children sees human children and attaches herself to them in order to kill them and she joins with the spirits of the children and goes with that spirit three holy spirits come they fly before her take from her that spirit place it before the holy one blessed be he there they study before him 363 for this reason the Torah warns people you shall therefore sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy. Vayikra 1144 Surely if a man is holy he need not fear Lilith and the Holy One blessed be he designates these three holy angels which we spoke about and they guard that child so she cannot harm him. This is the meaning of the verse. No evil shall befall you nor shall any come near your dwelling. Tehillim 9110 For what reason is it that no evil shall befall you for he shall give his angels charge over you with 11 and because he has set his delight upon me therefore will I deliver him with 14364 if a person is not holy but draws a spirit from the side of defilement then Lilith comes and plays with the child if she kills him she clings to the spirit of the child and never lets go if you ask what about the others that did not draw spirit from defilement she kills them and there appear before her these three holy spirits who take away his spirit behold these people were never in the sight of defilement so why does she have the ability to kill them he answers this is so when they are not sanctified therefore she can kill them they never had any intention to become unclean and they did not become unclean therefore she only has control over his body to kill him but not the spirit as the spirit is brought before the holy one blessed be he 365 sometimes it happens that Nama goes out into the world to heat herself against people and a man would find himself bound to her with desire he awakens from his sleep joins and lies with his wife but his thoughts are still with the desire he had in his dream and the child born stems from Nama because all this happened while he had a desire for her when Lilith comes out and sees the child she understands the situation that he stems from Nama she clings to him and raises him like the other children of Nama also she stays with him a long time but does not kill him as he pertains to her side 366 such a Man with every new moon becomes defective and she never gives up with him with the renewal of the moon namely the start of the new month Lilith goes out visits all the children in her care and jests with them that person is then defective at that time fortunate are the just who sanctify themselves with the sanctity of the king about them it is written and it shall come to pass that every new moon and every Shabbat Yeshayah 6623 367 King Solomon revealed these things in his book about Asmodeus king of the demons I found in it 1405 kinds of impurity that people contract this was revealed by Asmodeus to Solomon the king 368 woe to those people who are all obtuse and blind and neither know listen nor pay attention to the reason they are in the world advice and cure are before them but they do not see for people cannot be saved except with the guidance of Torah as it is written if there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness that chances by night. Devarim 2311 that is not clean is precise meaning that his birth was come through the spirit of defilement as mentioned uncleanness that chances by night exactly meaning at sleep when dreaming we have already established these matters with the counsel of the holy Torah as it is written in the Torah you shall therefore sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy for I am Hashem your Elohim Vayikra 207 and no evil will befall you section 61 Seth the section tells us that all the righteous in the world come from the lineage of Seth who was born after Cain and Abel died God increased Jesus in the world and with each male a female was born to populate the world 369 we have learned that after the passing of Cain and Abel Adam returned to his wife a different spirit enveloped him and he begot Seth from this lineage the righteous trace their line in the world the holy one blessed be he increased Jesus in the world and with each was also born a female too. Populate the world just as above as Zeir and Pen and Malchud were brother and sister the friends have established in the general mission that it is written about them and if a man shall take his sister his father's daughter or his mother's daughter and see her nakedness it is a disgraceful have Chesed it is confusing but the word Chesed can mean disgraceful or kindness deed Vayikra 2017 assuredly it is Chesed for after Chesed rests offspring and roots come out underneath upwards and branches spread meaning Zeir and Pen and Malchud what was near moved away then the branches grew Zeir and Pen and Malchud and came to join into one in a tree this was in the beginning in the concealed state of the world it is written for I have said the world is built by love Chesed Tehillim 893 therefore from now on people in this situation that marry their sister shall be cut off in the sight of their people Vayikra 2017 370 we have learned that the nakedness of your father's sister is to be Explained as revealing in that which is hidden it is written for the ways of Hashem are right and the just do walk in them. Hashia 1410 How blessed is a lot of the just that know the ways of the Holy One. Blessed be he and walk in them they are made known to them. Blessed is their share. Section 62 Jesus came and separated them. We read about the movement of the letters Yad Hey in the Holy Name and how Jesus causes the mating of Malchud with Zer and We learn also that Chakma and Bina are never parted for their union does not depend on Jesus. 371 We have learned that the upper Hey Bina became pregnant lovingly and fondly for the Yad Chakma never parts from it or she conceived and delivered Bob being Zeir and which is the secret of Bob in the Hey afterwards it stands before her meaning the Bob that is after the Yud Hey in the name of Yud Hey Bob Hey and she nurses it this Bob when departing from Bina's fear Malchud comes out with. It Jesus rouses itself towards him Zeir and Pen separates them one from the other and stems shoot forth from bottom to top the branches spread Zeir and Pen and Malchut and grow the lower haze formed its branches grow higher and higher until Malchut pairs with the supernal tree being Zeir and Pen and Bob and joins being Zeir and Pen with the hay denoting Malchut as said earlier who brought this about it is a disgraceful have Jesus deed Jesus certainly joins them together 372 the joining of Yud with supernal hay Chakma with Bina is not dependent on Jesus as are Zeir and Pen and Malchut but their joining and attachment and dependent on Mazel being a beard of Eric and Pen who joins Chakma with Bina for they never separate the Yud is tied with the hay and the hay is tied to the Bob the Bob is tied to the last hay and the hay is tied to all while Yud hay Bob all is considered one not and one thing they never separates from each other so to speak if one causes division it is Considered as if he is destroying the world this is referred to as the nakedness of all section 63 Hashem shall be one and his name one we are told that Hashem is not one now because Zer Enpen and Malchut are parted and at present the flow from Bada does not sustain Zer Enpen in the future however God will return the Sheshanah to her position and everything will find itself in one unity before that final unity the kingdom of Esau will be judged 373 in the future the Holy One blessed be he will return the Sheshanah to her position as everything will find itself in one unity as it is written on that day Hashem shall be one and his name one Zechariah 149 if you ask so now he is not one no as now the evildoers cause Zer Enpen and Malchut not to be as one as the queen distances herself from the king and they do not find themselves joined supernal I am a being Bada distances herself from the king and does not nourish him 374 Bada does not Sustains Zeir and Pen because the king without the queen is not crowned with the crowns of Ima as he used to be in the beginning when he was joined with the queen when Ima used to adorn him with several crowns numerous lights with supernal holy crowns as it is written go forth daughters of Zion and behold king Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him sure Hashirim 311 when he joined with the queen supernal Ima crowned him
What is meant by kingdom? It refers to the queen. This is the meaning of and the kingdom shall be Hashem's after they rejoin it is written and Hashem shall be the king over all the earth on that day. Hashem shall be one and his name one. Section 64. Super Naliyame is a friend. Lor Iyame, a bride. Rabbi Yehuda interprets. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother, your mother's sister, to mean that through the sins of Israel, Jerusalem below is destroyed. Malchut is from Abba and Iyame together from Shachma and Bina together. 377. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother. Vayikra 1814. Rabbi Yehuda said that this verse speaks of Israel below as Israel are the brothers of Zeir and Ben, who is your father, your mother's sister. Abba 13 is Jerusalem on earth, the sister of Malchut above your mother through these sins. I has uncovered the nakedness of Israel, meaning Israel will be in exile among the nations. The nakedness of Jerusalem. Is uncovered, meaning Jerusalem below will be destroyed. About this, we learned of the love of the Holy One. Blessed be He, and that He called Israel brothers, as it is written. For my brethren and friends' sake, I will now say, Tehillim 1228. Therefore, the verse says about them the nakedness of your father's brother. 378. Rabbi Yehuda said, If it says brethren, why I written friends, and if friends, why right brethren? He answers, We have learned that something that is never interrupted is called a friend, as it is said. Do not forsake your own friend and your father's friend. Mishlei 2710. This is the secret of what Rabbi Shimon said. Super Naliyame, namely, Bina is called friend because the love of Abba never ceases from her. The Iyame below, meaning Malchut, is called bride and is called sister, as we have explained the verse. We have a little sister, Sher Hashri 88, denoting Malchut 379. This is like the mission that is unspecific, meaning that with what was mentioned that Abba and I am a are never separated. The general words of the Mishnah will be understood. It is written here: the nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father, or daughter of your mother. Vayikra 189. Since it is said, the daughter of your father, what is, or daughter of your mother, he answers: if she is from the side of Abba, meaning the side of Abba is dominant in her Malchut is named Chakma. If she is from the side of I am a, meaning that the side of I am a is dominant in her, she is called Bina at any rate. Whether from here or there, she is from Abba and I am a together for the Yad, which is Abba never parts from the Hay, namely I am a. This is a secret in the verse: whether she is born at home, Ibid, when she is from the side of Abba, and or born abroad, Ibid, when she is from the side of I am a, as I am a is the external part of Abba. The end of the verse explains its beginning. 380. Rabbi Abba said, through wisdom, a house is built. Mishle 243. What is a house built with Chakma? Some say it is the river flowing. From Eden, meaning Bina, for this reason it is written born at home, meaning Malchut born from Bina, considered a house for Chakma, or born abroad, meaning when Malchut comes out of the Vav, being Zeir Anpin, as it is written when Adam Zeir Anpin said about Eve, Malchut, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, Ere she 223, it is also written, and he took one of his sides of it, 21, so Malchut is coming out from Zeir Anpin, this is born abroad from the place where Zer Anpin is, which is considered on the outside of IMA, as we have learned, section 65, Israel are brothers to the Holy One, blessed be he, Rabbi Yehuda says that the children of Israel are brothers to God because his love for them has never been interrupted, Rabbi Yitzhak talks about the tribes of Yah and the twelve boundaries that spread from Zer Anpin, the tree, Rabbi Shishkiah concludes that all their discussion shows that anyone who causes a defect below causes one above, although the Explanation given to most people of the scripture you shall not uncover the nakedness is the obvious one that one should not lay with those who are related to them because of the sin the Shechina leaves them 381 Rabbi Yehuda continued Israel are called brothers to the Holy One blessed be he as his love for them has never been interrupted Jerusalem below is called your mother sister Vayikra 1813 as it is written Jerusalem built as a city that is compact together Tehillim 1223 meaning that Jerusalem below is like the city that is compact together Malchud what is meant by compact together it means that the king joined in the six and Zeir and with all aspects of the king with the great of the righteous Yezid in which all Sfirat of the king are included this is the meaning of that is compact together meaning together with all Sfirat of Zeir and 382 Rabbi Yitzhak said there the tribes used to go the tribes of Yah before who are the tribes he answers these are the twelve boundaries that spread from that large and strong tree being Zeir Anpin being the secret of Forsfirat, Chesed, Buratifra and Malchut each has three columns which are twelve boundaries from Zeir Anpin they are drawn to Malchut where they are called by the name of twelve tribes that he inherited from Abba and Iyame this is what is written the tribes of Yah meaning from the good testimony that the Holy Son gives as it is written the tribes of Yah in appointed practice. The testimony for Israel as the twelve boundaries are the secret of the testimony meaning the illumination of Eden Chakma these are the deep rivers flowing from Yah Yadhe which are Abba and Iyame it is all for the purpose to give thanks to the name of Hashem before therefore for there are set thrones of judgment the thrones of the house of David Ibn 5 in order to bequeath the holy kingdom to him and his sons for generations this is a poem recited by David concerning the holy. Supernal Kingdom 383 Rabbi Shishkiah said all is according to the supernal secret to show that one who causes a defect below causes a defect above you shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law Vayikra 1815 we have learned that the marital visits of the scholars are on Shabbat as they know the secret of the matter they will meditate with their hearts with a complete wish and the offspring they produce are called children of the king if these cause a flaw down below it is as if they cause harm to the bride on high namely Malchut then we find written you shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law had Kala also bride this explanation is for those who comprehend Torah ways for the rest of the people the explanation is the revealed one meaning literally your actual daughter-in-law the wife of his son because of the sin the Shechina departs from them namely he also hints that the bride on high departs because of this defect below. Section 66 The holy name is engraved in certain ways we learn how the holy name is engraved with the 22 letters and what this has to do with the flow from above the section talks about the secret of 70 and 72 and about how the letters of the name I and ascended in ways known only to truly righteous men whoever wishes to know and understand the permutations of the holy names needs to know the letters marked in every individual sphere and then he will know and have power in everything Moses was able to stand among the holy angels because he knew the holy names that the angels did not 384 we have learned that the holy name is engraved in certain ways with the letters of the 22 letters imprinted yad in aleph aleph in yad in bet in yad in dalat dalat in yad in hey yad in gimel hey in yad gimel in yad vav in yad so they are all engraved in the yad the yad lifts them as it lifts all 22 letters 385 the hey of the name yud hey vav hey being bina. Is included in the Yad of Yudhe Bab Hay, it emerges from it as Bina emanates from Chakma, then Chakma and Bina, which are Yudhe of Yudhe Bab Hay, crown the patriarchs, meaning Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet of Zeir, and been called Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Hay is opened with its strings, meaning with the fifty gates of Bina in IT, and crowns the head of the Bab, meaning it supplies the first three Sfirat to Zeir, and then the secret of Bab of Yudhe Bab Hay, where the patriarchs dwell. This means that the patriarchs Chesed, Supernal, Bura, and Tiferet rise and become head, meaning Chakma, Bina, and Dad, through the illumination of the fifty gates of Bina. 386, he says, Bab consists of six letters, meaning it is made up of six letters from Allah to Bab that precede IT. The Yad includes them all as the Yud contains all nine letters that precede it, among which is the Bab, and the six letters included therein. This is the Yud that is above the Bab is mentioned. This Yad is engraved with. Marks meaning with the inclusion of the nine letters that precede it and ascends to the Yud of Yud Hey Bab Hey that includes all 22 letters to be crowned with the 12 other letters from Yud to top and it is also part of the 22 letters like the Yud of Yud Hey Bab Hey then 10 engraved sayings meaning 10 Sfirat come out of it and all of the paths of the supernal most precious way than the other Hey of Yud Hey Bab Hey Malchut contains them all meaning it receives from
7 complete Svarot and 70 imprinted letters of the name Ayin Bet rise from her we have learned that the letters of the name Ayin Bet ascended through certain marks and hidden ways known only to truly righteous men pillars of the world 389 Rabbi Shimon said to Rabbi Lazer come and see that these 22 letters engraved in the Torah are all explained in the 10 sayings the 10 Svarot, Keter Shachma Bani Chisit Bura Tiferet Net Sach Hadyazit and Malchut each and every saying of these ten of Svarot of the king are engraved by certain letters in as much as the letters are the secret of the vessels of the Svarot and each sphere has its own special vessels for this reason the holy name Yudhe Bab Hay is enveloped with other letters meaning with Adonai as the vessels of Zeir and the secret of Yudhe Bab Hay are clothed and enveloped with the vessels of Malchut the secret of Adonai each saying lends letters to the saying above it as one is included in the other. Therefore we pronounce the holy name Yudhe Bab Hay with the other letters of Adonai as they are covered and dressed one with the other until they are connected together 390 he who wishes to know and to understand the permutations of the holy names needs to know these letters marked in every individual sphere then he will know and have power in everything we copy them with the letters written in and specific to every sphere from the supernal book of Solomon we succeeded in this and it. Friends wrote them it is well that they wrote them as every sphere lends letters which are necessary to know and remember to its neighbor as we established in the adjacent paragraph sometimes it is only necessary to know those letters listed in the sphere itself but not the letters lent to it the friends know this and we have established this 391 happy are the righteous in both this world and the world to come as the holy one blessed be he desires to honor them and reveals to them esoteric matters concerning his holy name that he did not even reveal to holy supernal angels therefore Moses was able to be adorned even among the holy angels and they were unable to approach him as if he were a burning fire and flaming hot coals the reason was that he mentioned the holy names that the angels did not know were it not for that what did Moses have that he would be able to stand among them blessed was Moses lot that when the holy one blessed be he began to speak with him he wanted to Know his holy name both the concealed and revealed each one properly then he united and knew more than all mankind 392 come and see at the time Moses ascended the cloud and entered among the holy angels one angel by the name Kemuel came to him in a flame of fire with burning eyes and flaming wings and wanted to swallow him and Moses mentioned one holy name which was engraven with twelve letters he trembled and shook and Moses was thus able to ascend among them so happened with each one. Blessed is his lot we discussed this earlier section 67 the nakedness of a woman and her daughter we are reminded of the laws against incest Rabbi Yossi says that repentance brings good results as long as the one who repents also stops sinning he says that David did not sin in his relationship with Bathsheba because she was destined for him from the day of creation but he did sin by causing Uriah's death 393 you shall not uncover the nakedness of mother and Daughter Vayikra 1817 We have learned that these kinds of incest are among the laws of the queen even though they are both revealed and hidden there are listed her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter of it for the world needs them to populate the world as we have learned one who reveals one nakedness of these woe to him and woe to his soul as because of this he will uncover other nakednesses 394 We have learned the last statement of the Ten Commandments of the Torah reads you shall not covet your neighbor's wife Shema 2014 as this generally represents the whole of them he who covets another woman is considered transgressing the entire Torah however nothing stands before repentance all the more so if he is willing to accept upon himself his penalty like King David Rabbi Yossi said we have learned that repentance does much good to whoever has sinned and then parted from the sin if he does not part from it repentance does not help and is to no avail he questions how was it that David did not part from Bathsheba afterwards? He replied, Bathsheba was his. He took what was his as her husband had died. 395. We have learned that Bathsheba was chosen for David from the day of creation. What had delayed his taking her was because he took the daughter of King Saul that day. Uriah took her mercifully, even though she was not to be his. Later, David came and took what was his. Since David forced time before the Holy One, blessed be he to kill Uriah and behave in this way. He sinned before him, so he punished David because the Holy One, blessed be he, wanted to return Bathsheba to David in order to sustain for his sake the Holy Supernal Kingdom as Bathsheba was the chariot of Malchut. So what he yearned for was really his. 396. We have learned that Rabbi Yossi said it is written, I am Hashem. Vayikra 1830, meaning I am Hashem who will give good reward for the righteous in the world to come. I am Hashem who will take revenge upon the wicked in the world to come. Meaning. Upon those about whom it is written that have rebelled against me, Yeshayah 6624, he questions it is written, I am Hashem, which points to the quality of mercy, and it is written, I kill and I make alive, Devarim 3239, which points to the quality of judgment, he answers, even though I have the quality of mercy, the evildoers convert me to the quality of judgment, we have learned that Yudhei Bavhei Elohim is a full name, Yudhei Bavhei stands for mercy and Elohim for judgment, meaning if they merit it, then it is Yudhei Bavhei, if they do not merit it is Elohim, Rabbi Shimon said the evildoers cause a defect above what is the defect it is, as we established a real defect as explained earlier, section 68, a woman in the impurity of her menstrual flow, Rabbi Yehuda taught that because Rabbi Shimon's generation were righteous, it was all right for secrets to be revealed, but in other generations they will be hidden, 397, we have learned it is written, also you shall. Not approach to a woman in the impurity of her menstrual flow to uncover her nakedness. Vayikra 1819 Rabbi Yehuda taught the generation in which Rabbi Shimon Bar-Yakai dwells are all meritorious, all pious, all sin-fearing the Sheshanah dwelling in their midst. Not so in other generations for this reason these things are expounded and not concealed in his generation. In other generations it is not so and supernal secrets cannot be revealed and those who do know them are afraid to reveal when. Rabbi Shimon would relate the secret of this verse among all the friends their eyes would flow with tears all the words he said were being revealed before their very eyes as the verse says with him I speak mouth to mouth manifestly and not in dark speeches Bimidbar 128 section 69 a true egg the rabbis consider the secrets of the higher levels and wonder how it is possible to reveal them because they seem so mysterious they are told not to try to reveal them for it. Is not time to bring the higher wisdom down to the lower levels. 398. One day Rabbi Yes asked about the following. He said, A true egg that laid the bird who dwells in fire breaks up into four sides to rise from them. One is lowered and one squats by the great sea. Rabbi Abba said, Are you making before Rabbi Shimon the holy into profane about whom it is written with him? I speak mouth to mouth. Demon bar 128. Rabbi Shimon said to him, Before the time of the egg to split, you will depart from this world. This happened in the gathering of Rabbi Shimon. 399. We have learned that during the days of Rabbi Shimon, a person would say to his friend, Open your mouth and let your words shine forth. After the demise of Rabbi Shimon, they would say, Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Kahila 55, meaning, Do not reveal secrets. Section 70. A woman in the impurity of her menstrual flow. Part 2. Rabbi Shimon taught that if people would read the Torah, they would not. Make God angry we learned that as a result of people since the serpent above was awakened and injected his poison in the female therefore the male left her since she was unclean the world will be in woe if he joins with her when she is unclean 400 we have learned Rabbi Shimon said that if people would look at what is written in the Torah they would not come to anger their master we have learned when harsh judgments are stirred to descend to the world ITIS then written to a woman in the impurity of her menstrual flow Vayikra 1819 about this it is written the secret of Hashem is with them that fear him Tehillim 2514 we have learned this in the holy gathering and here I wish to reveal the secret here it is proper to do meaning here is the place to reveal IT 401 we have learned that when the strong serpent from above was awakened as a result of earth since he dwelt and joined the female and injected his poison in her then the male departed from her because she was Unclean and she was called unclean then it would not be proper for the male to approach her woe to the world if he would become unclean with her when she was unclean section 71 kinds of impurity we learn of the many kinds of impurity that descended with the serpent and how some of them clung to the female when she is defiled harsh judgments circulate in the world when a woman wants to be purified she must cut her hair and her nails 402 
Nails grow and judgments are awakened in the world we have learned and when a woman wishes to purify she needs to cut the amount of hair that grew from the time she became unclean and needs to cut her nails and all the filth within them. Section 72 The filth of the nails we are told that one who eradicates his nails entirely has awakened kindness in the world because many bad spirits are aroused by the filth in the nail sorcerers can perform witchcraft with them. And a person can be harmed if someone steps on their nails. 404 We have learned that in the secrets of defilement the filth of the nails stir other filth meaning the filth of the serpent for this reason it is necessary to hide them. One who eradicates them entirely by burning them is considered as having awakened cheese in the world we have learned that man does not need to leave a memorial for those evil kinds as we have learned 1405 bad types are caught up in the filth that the mighty Serpents views all aroused by that filth in the nails 405 anyone who wants to can perform witchcraft with them on people due to these demons that derive from them he who eradicates them meaning burns them is considered as if he multiplies kindness in the world so that evil judgments are not present and that filth will be annulled and its nails that are marked by it by that filth we have learned that one who steps by foot or shoes on the nails might be harmed if it is so with the remnants of what was left of the refuse above and how it more so the woman that welcomes and joins with the serpent in whom he injected his refuse woe to the world who will receive from her at this time since it receives from that refuse also you shall not approach to a woman in the impurity of her menstrual flow they 1819 meaning not to receive from malchute at the time the serpent joins her because of the sin of lower beings and injects filth into her section 73 bring before me atonement Rabbi Shimon says that God said bring before me atonement on the new moon and he describes what this means he says that God asks this in order that Malchud will become fragrant and the serpent will pass away from her 406 Rabbi Shimon said the holy one blessed be he said bring atonement before me on the new moon because I have reduced the moon Malchud before me surely means on my behalf in order to remove the serpent from nursing from Malchud and to perfume the one who needs to namely Malchud before lit upon me to be explained as Seraphim stood above him Yeshua 62 which does not mean over him heaven forbid but for his sake and for his glory here too upon me I ask to be explained as for my sake therefore it is written regarding Korah who are gathered together are against lit upon Hashem Bimidbar 1611 which also means for Hashem meaning for them because of the sin of Korah and his congregation someone was awakened from their side meaning that other side to blemish Hashem also here bring before me your atonement upon me literally meaning for my sake and for me in order that Malchud will have fragrance and the serpent will pass from her and not be found where it dwelt meaning in a place of lack due to the diminished moon what is all this for because I reduce the moon namely Malchud and he who should not have sway over her hands also you shall not approach to a woman in the impurity of her menstrual flow Vayikra 1819 as in it. Adjacent paragraph 407 happy is the generation that Rabbi Shimon dwells therein happy is his lot among the higher and lower beings regarding him it is written happy are you a land when your king is free Kahila 1017 what is meant by free his head stands straight and he states matters without fear as one who is free he says what he wants and fears not who is your king this refers to Rabbi Shimon Bar master of Torah master of wisdom when Rabbi Abba and the sages would see Rabbi. Shimon they would run after him saying they shall walk after Hashem who shall roar like a lion Hashia 1110 section 74 and it shall come to pass that every new moon Rabbi Shimon talks about every new moon and every Shabbat saying that they all pertain to one level there is universal joy when Atika Kaddish Akita is revealed to them he talks about the festival of the new moon and how the sun glows with the joy of the light of Atika above 408 Rabbi Shimon said it is written and it shall come to pass that every new moon and every Shabbat Yeshua 6623 questions why are they compared meaning why are both considered together in the verse he answers all pertain to one level and the one is united with the other Shabbat beings Eir and is united with the new moon denoting Malchut there is no joy of one and the other when they are not united only when Atika Kaddish Akita is revealed to them is their universal joy we have learned that it is written a Psalm poem for the Shabbat day Tehillim 921 it is expressly for the Shabbat day Zeirn and the secret of the Shabbat day denoting the praise which the Holy One blessed be he recites and is found joy and additional soul due to the fact that Atika was revealed and the union of Zeirn and Malchut is occurring 409 it is the same with the renewal of the moon meaning at the new moon the sun denoting Zeirn and shines on it with the joy of the light of Atika above for this reason it sacrifice of the new moon is above in order to bring fragrance to all and joy should be prevalent in the world therefore bring atonement before me this wording is literal in order to awaken the union 410 we have learned that it is written this is the burnt offering of every Shabbat beside lit over the continual burnt offering Bimidbar 2810 meaning one needs to aim his heart much higher this day than other days therefore over the continual burnt offering is to be understood. Literally as over is to be explained above the continual offering we have learned that it is written concerning Hadah and pray to lit over Hashem Ishmuel 110 over literally meaning above Hashem Zeir and as children are dependent on the holy mazel the beard of Eric and we have established this to be higher than Zeir and not a single thing in the Torah or small letter in the Torah does not hint at the supernal wisdom mounts and mounts have of supernal wisdom depend upon it. This is the meaning of his locks have talt alimar wavy sure Hasherim 511 as we have already learned section 75 cast your burden upon Hashem we learned that the title verse means above Hashem namely mazel for this is a prayer for sustenance the righteous are fortunate in this world and in the world to come because they are able to draw that sustenance from a high place 411 Rabbi Yossi found Rabbi Abba sitting and reading this verse cast your burden upon Hashem. Tehillim 5523 upon his precise meaning above Hashem Zeir and sustenance is dependent on Mazel the beard of Eric and Rabbi Yehuda used to read for lit upon this Hebzot Fem shall everyone that is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found Tehillim 326 upon Zot surely meaning above Malchut called Zot being Tiferet that is above Malchut in a time found we established that it refers to a woman yet in a time found is like the word seek Hashem while he may be found call upon him while he is near Yeshayah 556 referring to the ten days of repentance another explanation for in a time found meaning when the rivers the lights of Bina flow and are drawn continuously the patriarchs being Chesed Bure Tiferet receive and all are blessed for every pious man should pray for this what is meant by the flood of great waters Tehillim 326 he answers it is the depth of the springs and rivers being Atika Kadisha from which are drawn the lights and springs to Bina for. Who will merit it and who will merit to come near and ascend there? This is what is meant by the verse. The flood of great waters shall not come near him. It is because they are not worthy and not capable of receiving from Atika 412. Rabbi Yitzhak said, It is written, One thing have I desired of Hashem that I will seek after to behold the beauty of Hashem. Tehillim 274. Blessed are the pious that numerous supernal treasures await them in that world, denoting Bina as the Holy One. Blessed be he. Delights in them in these worlds as we have explained for their sake. He asked to behold the beauty of Hashem. We have already learned that it is the glow of Atika that is drawn in Bina. Rabbi Yitzhak disputes with Rabbi Yehuda who said that the flood of great waters shall not come near him refers to the lights of Atika that cannot be conceived. However, there are some righteous who merit this too. Rabbi Shizkiah says from here, it seems that there are pious who do merit the light of Atika as written neither has the eye seen that an Elohim beside you should do such a thing for him that waits for him Yeshayah 643 he asks he should do it should have said you should do since it writes beside you a term of second person he replies rather he should do is precise because it refers to Atika therefore he speaks in terms of third person similarly behold I let he will add to your days 15 years Yeshayah 385 it should have said I will add since it precedes it with behold let your I am it is only because it alludes to Atika who is not conceived to be here therefore he says in third person he will add it is because life is drawn from Mazel meaning from the beard of Atika similarly cast your burden upon Hashem means above Hashem namely Mazel for this is a prayer for sustenance it is also written and pray to lit over Hashem also referring to Mazel that is higher above of Hashem as this prayer was for children yet all is one